Investment Authority is a government agency whose role is to promote, attract, and facilitate foreign and domestic investment in Uganda. The agency advises government on investment policy and advocates for a competitive business environment. Uganda Investment Authority operates a one-stop center, which is the first point of contact for potential investors. It was established to facilitate the setup of investment in Uganda. Through the one-stop center, investors have access to all services required to set up a business and acquire an investment license in less than 24 hours. With your investment license, you will have access to Uganda's attractive tax and non-tax incentives. Here are the available investment opportunities in Uganda.
Good morning. I think one of the one of the most redundant things is to ask whether anyone had a good morning when they are in Kisoro. If you sleep here and you wake up without a good morning, then you need to see either a psychiatrist or psychologist. You have problems. I came with mine, and as we started winding through those tons and breathing in fine air and going through the forest, I noticed I, become, I began to be a lot happier. And you know I'm happy from my tweets because there's a bunch of them. So it's a very, very nice place to be. And I've asked a few people, I do, and I, I, I tweeted and said, I do not know if there is an industrial park as beautiful as this one. Then I was corrected that there is actually none as beautiful as this, including the road here. Because that moving up and down reminds me of um, Zumba classes. So it's a good feeling too. I hope the government preserves it that way for very good reasons. <laughs> the investors who have things and equipment to bring here will have another take of it. So it's a different mindset. But uh, by and large, thank you so much for being here. And in a special way, thank you so much for believing in Project Uganda. I'm a very deliberately positive-minded person, and the reason is simple. I have looked at negative people and, and analyzed their lives and concluded they don't have anything that I want to have. So I've decided that I'll be very positive. And when you think that way, even in the most adverse of, of, of circumstances, you see the positive side of it. So choose to be positive-minded. The moment you do that, you'll experience a much, much better life. I'd like to thank our partners who have invested in this and who see what we see. Uh, Logan Management, thank you so much for believing in this. Of course, as we get better, a lot of people will jump onto, onto the train. Some people don't want to get on the train from the original station. They want to join as it gets uh, towards, uh, I think, what was that? Sunningdale and then Bracknell before it goes to Reading and finishes whatever it does. But some of us want to get to the train when it is at Victoria <laughs> and then go off with the train. The very jovial uh, minister in charge of investment, uh, the wonderful, smart Evelyn Anite, is within our midst. And uh, the tallest of all persons doing a similar job, uh, the DG for the Investment Authority, very not just humble man in terms of height, is here. I never take pictures close to the DG. Uh, it, it hurts my ego, and, and that is okay. <laughs> uh, but DG, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, the chairman of uh, uh, the group of positive ones is also here, dressed in a very positive sense. Uh, for us, we wear suits uh, because it is part of our job description. So I will be here. Uh, with my senior colleague, a man, um, his understudy, Mr. Morris Muksha, uh, who is going to come and walk through the program. Mine will be a role of assistance. So thank you so much and good morning. And uh, when I come back, we will be good to go. I would like to tell you to feel at home, but that's not what I want to say because there are very few homes that feel like Kisoro. So feel at peace 
for now. Good morning, and I don't mean that as a, a greeting, I mean it as a wish. And the kind ones will say good morning. Yeah, there are four here, so that's okay.
Hello. Thank you very much for coming to Kisoro. Ngakoze kuza Kisoro, turabachiriye. Honorable Minister Evelyn Anite, you're most welcome to Kisoro. And this is your second time in Kibaya. Um, Nshuti nabavandime, bafumbira fumbira kazi, abanya chijezi. Ngese turabachiriye, muri Kisoro, mubjuba yorobjanyu. Turenda kutanjira mukanya karikuza. Kandi batubjie yuko. Imikoro yachu iliku UBC TV na NBS Television. Kandi mukanya gatoku chane, tulibu uze gutanjira. Kigezi Investment Summit. This is about to... Kukotuwa etukwa wibabgiye. For me, I will use the reformbira for the interest of our people here in Kisoro and the entire Kigezi. Tulibu uze gukomeza motu wibabgiira. Abatari baza, imikoro yose mulibu uze kujirebira kuma TV yombi. Kandi hari ya hanza hali ho imurika nigurisha. Tuaturu gusaba abobose bajeze hano. Shaka waja hali ya hanze ukareba ibili kugurish kwa ho. Aba ntu wa fitibi ntu vitandu kanya ibili kugurish kwa. So chilikuli wawe kuja hali ya hanze ukareba itu shaka kugura. Na anga wawe ufitichi ntu choku murika ukachizana ukachimurika hano. Kukomu kanya gato chane imikoro ilenda kutanjira. Tulimuli chibaya. Ahanga hani mo gombora dia nyarubuye na tauni kanso ya rukundo ni muri kisoro district kandi nitwebwe twicaje uyu mukoro wa Kigezi Investment Summit turi gukubiriza abo bose bafite ibyo amashora ishora mari ritandukanye kuza ni mikoro yanyu na anga si bikorwa byanyu remezo mukabimurika nuko igikorwa cyo gutangira kuba ka hano industrial park Chiga tanji la mumistari ya kule. Tulakomeza muku bachira. Abavu ye hanze ya kisoro. Na chane the greater kigezi. Ikozgo na district si itaanda tu. Tulakomeza muku bachira muli kisoro. Nuku babjira ngo michare mugweneza. Imikoro ili nagutanji la mkanya gato chane. Thank you very much. I think I will come back here for the interest of our people who will not be understanding English. I thank you very much.
we want to welcome the Honorable Sara Mateche, uh, Urakaza Honorable. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we're glad uh, to have you in your own home. Um, and thank you so much for coming. Um, myself and uh, Samson will guide you through what today's program will be. Very, very shortly, we should be able to start. This will be broadcast live. Um, the entire summit will be broadcast live on UBC and NBS. The uh, partners and stakeholders who couldn't be here should be able to follow this conversation. Uh, but this conversation around our industrial and business park um, will be uh, the lead conversation across the country today. And, and this for us uh, is the second in a uh, session uh, just as we concluded the West Nile uh, investment park opening and now we are here in Kisoro um, officially opening the industrial uh, and business park and also uh, as part of this the free zones um, conversation around the summit today. Sas Samson? Th this is the reason we waited for small things like Nyege Nyege to pass. Yes. Then so the big things like this can happen. the big things happen I agree. a week after. I agree. Yes. Uh, I, 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 I like that you're, you're saying that. So now I thought we would uh, you know, recognize a couple of people. Absolutely. Uh, our key partners for this conversation, uh, Lagan. Uh, and I'm happy people. Lagan is well represented here. Uh, we thank you so much for supporting the summit and being part of this conversation. And they are enjoying the weather. You can tell they've ditched their jackets. Tony, you want to say something? I, I thought you'd just introduce yourself and your colleague yeah. to the team. Uh, my, my colleague from Kisora, I hope she can summarize what they'll have said in uh, Rufumbira. My Rufumbira is horrible. Mm. Mine yeah. is worse. Well, yours is worse. Yeah, so, so if that's any consolation. <laughs> uh, let's try. I'm a Kuruya we Mutware, Samson Kasumba. Nimeza Mutware. Ah, Wakoze Chan. Nakubona Warumenya Mutware. Namu Murakoze. Ah, Uraruzi Mutware. Uraruzi Mutware. Buhoro Buhoro. Let's check how good Tony's uh, Rufumbira is. Uh? Yes, yes. Tony, please say hello, greet us, and tell us uh, something about Lagan, please. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invite to the summit. Um, Lagan management are very, very pleased to be involved in the project and the exciting opportunity of, we call it, um, Jigezi, Jigezi Industrial Estate. Um, we have our partners here, Abu Bakr, who are just behind us, um, who will be also helping us with the project, hopefully. Yeah. But thank you very much again. Now, Maurice. All right. The only reason why Tony sounds like Pri Prince Charles is uh -huh. because he is from the same place. It's not Prince Charles Prince anymore. The third. The third. King, King Charles, Charles the, third. the third. Yes. Yeah. We, we it will take get some to that. getting used to it. Yes. yes, we need to get used to that. <laughs> King Charles the third. The third yes. He sounds like King Charles because? They, they come from the same place. Ah, fantastic. Yes, yes. Uh, it's very nice English. It's very polished. It's more of proper English than nice English. Oh, okay. My apologies, <laughs> sir. You know, that, let's turn to my brother who probably... Uh, has better English than mine. Absolutely. Uh, but we will test it. So yeah. let's go to Rao, okay. uh, who, who represents uh, a big association, yeah. uh, the head of our India Association in and Uganda. I, and I will note he is very humorous. Yes, and I want to see that. Yeah. Uh, please introduce yourself and, and your colleague, sir. My name is Mohan Rao. I'm the chairman of Indian Association and uh, Honorary Council of Columbia to Uganda also. My colleague is Mr. Mohan Reddy. Let me introduce himself. Uh, my name is Mohan Reddy. I'm a Secretary General of Indian Business Forum, uh, who is representing the Indian business sources in uh, Uganda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so the, the, uh, you can see the, the real uh, uh, friends of uh, investment in Uganda yes. here. When people speak English like that, uh -huh. it says two things. Uh -huh. One. They have a lot of money, uh -huh. and two, they like to make it. And they found the right place to make it. They are always in Uganda. They, they can smell money. Yes. So if you see Mohan here, clearly he has <laughs> smelt money <laughs> in Kisoro. Um, we, but it's not just Kisoro, because today we really are talking about the greater Kigesi. Yes. When I was younger, yes. I was told that if you want to do a business, check which ones have Indians. That's how I was dissuaded from going into Matatus. They are not there. So you didn't do matato business? There are no Indians there. Because they're not there. There's no money. <laughs> so they know where the good money is. You follow Indians, you know where money is. That's very good. Um, I want to recognize the different authorities that are here. Uh, 
I, I, I want a gentleman to introduce himself. I know he might speak a, a little later today. Yes. Mutuare uh, Batuma. You know, when you say Mutuare Batuma in, uh, in Chitoro, it means uh, the great one. Sir. Mm -hmm. So please stand, uh, Mr. Batuma, and uh, introduce yourself and, and, and that group you represent, the larger group. Yes. Thank you very much. We are humbled to be invited, uh, all protocol observed. Uh, we thank the Kisoro uh, team for uh, organizing this great occasion. My name is Norman Batuma, and uh, I'm representing Batuma Holdings uh, with my team here. Uh, it is a great pleasure, and thank you very much for the great occasion. I, I, I want to tell you something, if you don't know. Uh, the Batuma family smelt money a very long time ago in Kigezi. Mm. Mm. They are in every sort of business. Uh, he is also in the telecom business, for those of you who don't know. Okay. Uh, I think most of this area. Is, is it this area or it's another area where you have this? Uh, it's in the Kigezi, the Kabale, where he, he uh, has the dealership hmm. for one of the telecoms. I'm not, they are not sponsors, so I won't mention them here. Yeah. But he's a, <laughs> uh, he's a dealer for one of the telecoms, among the many others. Their, bus their family does um, hotel business in, in the services sector. Uh, they do have some work they're doing in media. Voice of Kigezi, you know? Yes. Voice of Kigezi? Yes. Uh -huh. there. Generally so, speaking... So you see money is in Kigezi. He, yes. He's the testimony of the money in Kigezi. Generally speaking, with uh, Mr. Sudil Rupareria being the exception, how one dresses gives away a lot about how much they make. I like that you gave him as an exception because he's <laughs> never won. I rarely see him. I've never seen him. Yes. So charcoal gray and blue shirts uh, usually give away quite a bit uh, in terms of bank balances. So when you took the mic to him, I looked at his suit and tie. I could <laughs> tell there was something. There was a reason. Was a I, reason. I see. Yes. Um, and again, I really went in a very special way uh, to recognize our grandpa here, uh, the Honorable Philemon Mateche. Yes. Yes. I you know, Amashi Menshi, you mutware Philemon Mateche. Honorable, um, it's a pleasure pleasure to be uh, in your company today. Of course, the Honorable uh, Buturo is here with us. Yes. Uh, he is ethics in flesh and blood. Yes. Uh, and when you spoke about Nyege Nyege, I was worried. Uh, yes. He was about to summon us for a conversation <laughs> uh, on Nyege Nyege. You, you, you get very close to the line, but you don't go for it. Yes, you yes. can't. You can't do that. But Samson, you have been posting pictures ever since you arrived in Kisoro yes. Yes. Uh, about the beauty of Kisoro. And I hope when we go live, when we go live on TV, uh, we can speak to how beautiful this place is. I mean, if when you look at the surrounding, and, and, and we are surrounded by about nine mountains in the background, I have never seen a better setting. I, when, I, when we were in West Nile, um, I thought we had the best setting in the industrial park in West Nile. Yes. This one, look what is in front of us. It, it's, it's, it, it's that place where you you can't put to words. You, you have to have somebody to come back here and to see, see what this looks like. If I had come here before I got married, I won't conclude the rest. <laughs> no, but it's really Because it's, it's very unlikely that people who live in this place are not going to be very beautiful. That, that's, that's true. That's very unlikely. That's true. That's and you've unlikely. seen the sample, right? Yeah, people already think I come from here. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's the gray. <laughs> I, I think it's the gray. I, I get the point where you're going. It's the gray. Um, but w you're welcome. You're really very welcome. Uh, and we want to thank everyone who is here. The stakeholders, the different agencies that are represented yes. here. Uh, we have, of course, the Export Promotions Board. And I saw my brother, Mr. Kecho, is here from the Export Promotions Board. Um, Yes, uh, I'm trying to see that you have a better eyesight. I have four. Yes. The gentleman has a very nice uh, uh, shirt there. I was trying to find out which agency it is. But I know we have Uganda it's Revenue the Authority in the room. National yeah. Agricultural Research ah, Organization, NARO. Perfect. Uh, thank yes. you, NARO. Yeah, you're very important. I know that we have persons from the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. Standards yes. And I think I've also seen persons from, uh, is it immigration or immigration? Depends on which school you went to. Especially at kindergarten. Yes. Whether you did kindergarten if you or went, nursery school. If you went to the Mutorere Nasare Mutorere Nasare School. If you went to Mutorere Nasare School, yes. you'd probably say immigration. Or Chamate for that matter. Or Chamate primary. Yes, depending. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, we have immigration. Uh, yes. Nira uh, here. I did see National Water and yes. Tourist Corporation yes. uh, in this room. There's also something very significant about this place. Yes is that it is the closest you can ever be to three countries because we are 300, I think 500 meters from Congo, 
I've been shown places I can see in Rwanda and we're in Uganda. That, that's, that's unique in and of itself. I, I thought there's only three other places. Uh, and one, you may not be able to, to do something like this because th that one is on Lake Victoria when you have Kenya and Tanzania and Uganda yes. right at the tip uh, on the uh, western side, on the eastern side. The other is Karamoja and West Nile. Yes. Uh, where I've, I've been the to, 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 to Nebi past that uh, yes. Panyamul fishing village. Uh -huh. and, and they tell you that's Congo. Yes. And then South Sudan is also not too, uh, too, too distant. And then the other would be Karamoja. And so now I guess we are doing the circuit. So the Honorable is taking us to Karamoja next. So you see we've done West Nile, we've yeah. done Kisoro. The farthest tip. Yes. Yes. And yeah. the farthest uh, northeast. Uh, you've been told the history, and I'm hoping you can say this during uh, the live broadcast, uh, Sabino, and why it's very critical to this conversation, that Mount Sabino, because that's literally the start point of yes. our map. Uh, yes. The Ugandan when map, you the southest the, point. The, 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 do they call it the Markstone? Yes. It's at that point. Uganda's Markstone. Yeah, that tip. When you're drawing the map, that tip that looks like a W. A, w. What? Is it w? W, w? W or you know w? some of us went to Chamate, yes. When you say W, you, lo you lose it's, a lot of it's, us. It's w. Is it oh. W or W? If if you went to Rao Mohan, you would say probably V. Yeah. 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 V. I know W, but V. I don't yeah. know. But why uh, don't you leave uh, Rohan alone? <laughs> All right, um, so I was being given instructions. So we that need to let the broadcasters know we need to start. Okay. Yeah, that uh, we are set. Yeah. Okay. So uh, two things will happen. Um, our chief guest, when our chief guest arrives, this is again, the broadcasters, you have two minutes to let us know that you're ready. Um, uh, I, I was seeing Sophia and, and our friend, uh, I keep forgetting his name, uh, our gentleman. Yeah. Alex? Alex, yeah. Alex and Sophia, stand you, by. You two let minutes. us, you let right. us know when, when we're going live. All right. Um, so we have, um, I was just about to tell you about. The Honorable Minister is where we stop. You were saying the, when the Honorable Minister arrives? Oh, yes. When the Honorable Minister arrives, the Chief Guest, we will then have the formal uh, opening, which has the national anthems. I'm looking forward to that because you have a key role to play yeah. on the anthems, uh, both the Ugandan anthem and the East African anthem. And I also wanted to mention that among our guests invited is our neighboring countries. We yes. have partners from the DRC mm. and Rwanda invited yes. uh, for our meeting. Yes. And we should have them during the conversation uh, later uh, this morning. Yeah. Uh, but we want to start and uh, we are just now officially standing by uh, to officially begin this Kigezi Investment and Free Zone Summit. In the Kigezi Industrial and Business Park. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for joining us here this morning. We're going to begin, and as is our national motto, we're a nation that is for God and our country, and we have since seen no reason to apologize about it. And so we start our national functions with prayer. Somebody has said that a few things don't go right even when we pray, and my response always is, that if we didn't, it would be worse. So there's still a very good reason to pray. If you trust your neighbor, close your eyes as we pray. If you don't, keep them open and hold on to your gadgets. <laughs> Shall we pray? Dear God, in the various versions in which we understand you, we thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to be alive and to contribute to the things that our children will come and find and tell their children and those their children 
that when our great forefathers were here, they came to Chisoro and they started the process of changing the direction of this beautiful place. They will tell their children's children that that factory, you see, my great-grandfather was the MC as uh, the function of uh, putting the Maxstone happened. Then another will say, no, not just your grandfather. My grandmother was around and she was the MP when that hotel was being started. So we are part of history and we remind ourselves as we begin this that nothing huge on this earth has happened and has begun by the majority. It is always the few that begin the business of flying. It is always the few that begin the business of discovering nations. And yes, we may be few, but because we are few beginning, it means that we are on to something big. We thank you for everybody that has believed in us. We thank you for Logan that has put money in this and for their kind hearts we reward them 10,000 fold. And all the investors that are here, those that see things that vision sees and eyesight doesn't, bless them abundantly so that they have a return on their investment. We thank you for the weather and we pray that the rain comes down as we leave. In your name we pray and they said, Amen. I skipped from preaching, and you can tell. <laughs> we'll begin off with um, comments from the LC1 chair. And in our conversations with him, he insisted he's going to be brief. If he gets excited and changes his mind, we will forgive him. Uh, uh, Nijijero Gidioni, Erosi Wanu Chiapasoni, Uyu Mwanya Turimo, Nyaru Wande Village, South and the Old, Rukundo Town Council. Turavishi Mie Chane Chane, Kubona, Mazahano, Murikibaya, Kifuza Kujango, Tuhuake, Turavishi Mie Chane. Kwe ngawa andu watura niye iki chibaya Tukara chirinze chane Tura chirinda imyaka mnji Nganje chia mani eru siwanu Aha musaidi ya kongo bawabare nzimbago Baka menyesha nkaja yo Na ajarayo ka menyesha eru situ Eru situ ka menyesha eru sisiri Na gombura chifu tukaja yo zambago tukazigira neza Muyindi nyanyi fata kubahinzi Na menyahara ahare njerewe, nicho chimwe tukajayo, hose tukakori mbago na wahinzi, mchijende rewa, aruku jilango iki chiwa ya chachu, chizatu velicha kamaro. Nwendu kushimira movement ya achu, nguki turinze nziza, nguko ituyoboye, kani kukichi wa chachu tuwachi linze, akawajia kufuwamo, awawajira neza, awawashora mari, akawajia kutuwa chira, Tukabona majambere, tukabona mwini mdegu kore la vjinchi. Turaneze lewe, mudu kore li mihare, imihari wanere, mutu kwa kireza afiki tori, ziwanere, awana wachu, awachire watuwa wanimi, mutu kwa nungu tushaje, jose tukabishi mye kuza kwa anyu, kandi, jose kukumani ya biteguye, ibi dusha woze, kani namu ibi washa woze, tubikore, ichi watu kwa tuwala chirinze, tuchirinda, Haringi chiza tujirira kamaro, tuchiri inda, haringi chiza tufasha, nune, ibijie kwa mwani bujinchi chiza tujirira kamaro, ibijie kwa mwani bujinchi chiza tukorela, ibijia kamaro bujinchi, tunashimira mufu mendi, yachu iduha ya mahoro, kandi kawa iduha ino kubaka, iduha ya nubu nzibu kome, yes, ya tuli tinziza, yotu gomba, kukorela mo, tukita kaduwe tunu maguka chuku mahoro, ngakoze, turawa chiri, ya tawutu kwa fuka bujinchi, Tuishimi ibyo muzadukorera kandi natwe ubwacu twishimiye kuza kwanyu uyu ni umwanya mwiza ni umwanya guboneye ari ha amazi hano hepfo ho muva ngo nikibaya nkanka gurezingeri iri hano amazi gagaburira bufumbira yose gari hano hafi mbese iki ni kibaya gifite umutungo mwiza kandi kirimo byinshi none kubakira kwanje nuko turacaganira byinshi Kadu tejeleze ya wakuru wa vya hirja, ngese, nguko, mkoro kujie kutangira, ngese, turawachirie, 
mwakoze cyane cyane amashi katubakiza amashi yagifumbira mwese tumuhamashi mwakoze cyane sawa na urakuze he thanked uh, our movement he insisted we thank our movement for leading us very well and he said we are happy we are happy to receive you here and uh, there he spoke about the hope that our children that don't have jobs will get jobs he spoke about this being a very beautiful place and he says we've been waiting for you those of you who are investing here for a very long time and uh, the gladness in his heart is certainly something you can you can catch i like to hear the languages the language of my forefathers are being spoken quite well now we do have the chief administrative officer the cow not the animal it's chief administrative officer so let me ask the cow uh, to come and speak <laughs> i hope that makes sense for those of you watching on uh, ubc and uh, following on our various audio platforms. When I say the cow will speak, I mean a human being, chief administrative officer, not the ones that graze. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, State Minister for Investment, Minister of Finance, State Minister for Youth and Children Affairs, all the members of parliament here, the RDC, the chairperson of C5, and the members of the district council, dignitaries from uh, all corners of Uganda, our visitors from outside Uganda, ladies and gentlemen, all in your respective capacities. I'm called Rukundo Manase, and uh, I'm standing in for the chief administrative officer, so the district the local government. Uh, I first of all take this royal opportunity to welcome you to Xoro in a very special way as we, we discuss issues related with the, this big investment. Uh, first of all, on behalf of Xoro District Local Government, we are very happy have this opportunity coming to our side. Uh, as Kisoro District Local Government, we received this idea with the both hands and we request that as we try to push it ahead, we don't look backwards. Kisoro District Local Government has tried to cooperate in offering land where we are going to have this uh, very huge investment and uh, where possible we shall keep on working hand in hand with all stakeholders in this activity so that we, th we see its positive fruits at the end of the day. And we are very optimistic that with all of us working as a team at the end of the day we shall see positive results coming. With those few remarks I wish you a nice stay here, and I wish you good time as we try to uh, put in place this investment activity of ours. Thank you so much. His English teacher, Masters, must have emphasized the lesson on summary, and uh, the student also got that lesson very well. So he set the marker for the resident district commissioner, the RDC, who is going to come and speak um, as brief as uh, um, uh, he did. Um, he's literally His Excellency in this area. And you can tell from the swagger. <laughs> he might need to add a heart to that swagger. <laughs> uh, thank you, MC. The Honorable Minister of State for Finance in charge of investments. The Honorable Minister of State for Youth and Children Affairs. Uh, Honorable Dr. Mateke, Honorable Members of Parliament, uh, the ED, Uganda Investment Authority, this chairperson, members of the council, the investors who have invited here, the business community, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hachafik Sekandi. Sengoba, the RDC for Oxo, 
I am here to also welcome you to Kisoro District. We want to thank the ministry for bringing this uh, summit to our district. And uh, as a security committee, we want to let you know that the area is peaceful. We are at the border itself with the DRC, just a few meters from here. We want to thank the ministry for choosing Kisoro to host this uh, industrial park. Allow me, before I go very far, to introduce two key people who make sure that this place is peaceful. I have Lieutenant Colonel Kafureka, he's the CO, 35 Battalion, at the back there. That is the guy who's guaranteeing that there is no mistake made here as far as the defense is concerned. Then I also have the man heading the law and order, and that is the DPC. Uh, SP MCC, and also we have uh, Kano Kaita, OWC, he's a Kano, he's also with us here. Uh, Honorable Minister, we want to appreciate the decision that was taken by government to bring this uh, industrial park to this place. There's a lot of business potential across here, but Congo has been disturbed. Honorable Minister, what you are seeing here is not what is across here in the neighbors. And uh, we are praying hard that the East African standby force can also come in and pacify Congo, North Kivu. Once North Kivu is pacified and the people go back home and they engage in two production, this industrial park will get a lot of market. Because now, uh, by second of this month, this area had been occupied by 26,000 refugees by 2nd of this month. But as a security committee, we took a decision and took them to the refugee camp, but others also gone back home. There is a lot of uh, cross-border trade here and cross-border interaction. Even when there is instability across, Honorable Minister, as I speak now, many people are there digging from here. Many of from here, they are there now digging. They have gardens there. But also there are many daughters of Congolese who got married here, and they are with us here. So there's a lot of interaction, social, cultural, political, economical. You cannot separate Eastern Congo from Western Uganda. So this decision taken here is a decision in the right direction. As I conclude, Honorable Minister, I want also to report that Kisoro is a tourism district. We are at the point where three countries meet Rwanda is just behind the, those mountains, and also Congo is just behind here. So many tourists want to come here and see the beauty of this country. You can even feel the climate. You can feel the fresh air. We are only disturbed by the roads, <laughs> they are, but we don't have traffic jam the way you have the, it in Kampala. So, Honorable Minister, dot service is just here at Wanagana here. It is three kilometers to this place. And those services has been contracted to Tamaka the road from Bonagana to Goma. And the Goma city is just near here. So if Uganda Investment Authority can make the road from Bonagana where Tamaka stops through those services and they come here, this area and the investors, they will not be inconvenienced. I want to report that in the last two months, we have received over 10,000 tourists just in this corridor of Chisoro, 10,000. And they come with the money, and they want to purchase, they want to enjoy. So I want to thank you, and I, I wish you a good stay here. God bless you all. Thank you. Every community has a child that left, went to Kampala, and got spoiled, and forgot the language. Now, Kisoro has me. I know what to say, but I can't put it properly. But such communities also have children that are not spoiled, who remained local and mastered the language. So our community has Imelda. Imelda, come and, uh, and save my day <laughs> before my ancestors shake in their graves. <laughs> But because I, I know what should be said, if you use the wrong wor language, I will, wrong word, I will say, no, that's not the one. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much, Samson. Mwakoza chane, tukonje kubachira ubudira kabiri. Um, kawa wachu, nenda ku summarizing ibyo kawa ya vuze, nibyo ala DC ya vuze, kukibja achia manel si wanu kwa abdumvi ishije. Izi ku summarizing a kifumbira. Kufuna gula. Eko. <laughs> So, um, RDC atubye yuko umutekano ubeze neza cyane hano ariko atubyira yuko mu misi ishize ahangaha hari hafite impunzi zigera ku mitware byiri n'ibihumbi bitatu ariko baherutse kubajana mu kambi hari ya nyakabande kandi ashimiye abashinzwe iby'umutekano hano a CEO na DPC bakoze cyane kurinda umutekano wa Kisoro na Uganda uh, avuze yuko nibura hubatse umuhanda wa wa connect wagera hano ibintu byaba byiza cyane kubera hano henda gukorerwa ibikorwa byiza byaza niterambere mu district yacu avuze yuko mu mezi abiri ashize yonyine twabonye abakera rugendo barenga umutwaro kandi baba bazanya mashiringi mu gihugu cyacu cya Uganda so ari gusaba minister nabandi bo bireba unyabuneka umutwobakire um, imihanda kugira ngo iterambere rikomeze kwiyongera kawo yari yavuze yuko iki gikorwa cyakiriwe n'amaboko yombi hano mu district ya Kisoro kandi ko barakora ibishoboka byose kureba ngo bakomeje mu gushyigikira iterambere rirenda kubera hano mu kibaya mwakoze cyane iyo ni Samare Mr. Kasumba very good um, it's important that the persons who are with us from this place understand what we are saying. Now I'd like to invite the LC5 chairperson, a very important person in this area, um, to come and give his remarks. He, unlike others, can use both languages. When the LC5 chair is walking to the podium, you'll see how people who win elections walk. <laughs> it's very different from somebody like myself who has never been even on a ballot and fears to be. Morris is sanitizing because he has heard of Ebola. So remember to sanitize. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together to our to an election winner from the recent past. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, the MC. Uh, our dear ministers present, and particularly Honorable Anite, and I want you to give you another name today and take it with good faith, and you are being given this name by the governor of the district. Aniti Mama Chibaya. This land is called Chibaya, so you take it. Then, my dear other guests, according to the protocol, which I want to observe briefly, Honorable Sarah Mirabashitsi, a minister in charge of children and other people in that category. Dr. Firmon Mateke, the grandfather of the district, and Trace Buchanayandi, if he's present, former Minister of Agriculture and our senior elder here. Um, honorable members of parliament present, the members from the ministries, departments, and agencies of government, the RDC, COW, and security in this place, the investors and potential investors in this house, the Kigezi fraternity who have come to share this important occasion with us, my friend, the business community of Kisoro. I can see Bwana Clement, I can see uh, the deputy mayor and other people who we want to be the vanguards the first members, the first beneficiaries of this industrial park. Where this 
the effusion of the innovation shall be cultured. You are welcome to Kisoro Industrial and Business Park called Ichibaya. I save this for Muchiza, Robert, a man who has demonstrated uh, that Uganda has leaders. And when they lead, things happen. Bwana Muchiza, Robert, thank you very much for what you've done to us. And by the way, it is not nepotism or any sort. He is our blood. He is Mungura, and I belong to the Mungura clan also, so he's my brother. From Musasa, where his father, uh, uh, former head of uh, special branch, Munyanganiz, originates, though he went down to Matinza and finally they found their way in Rwanda. But uh, Brad is thicker, he's finding his roots and I'm not surprised that he, he has made this happen because we have had situations and opportunities, but it only needed Mchiza Robert to be in government and in investment authority and the Chibaya comes. Of course, you couldn't do it better without Anite Mama Chibaya. Thank you very much. So my speech could be as long as I don't know, but uh, I'll try to tell you that Kisoro is the best place in the world. Only for those who have phobias of heights, who have challenges with greeneries, or those who fear uh, to stay with wild animals like uh, mountain gorillas. I was in China one day, and I had a t-shirt which was written on, I am Abel Bismana, a cousin of mountain gorillas. Then the Chinese, some of them came to see whether I'm a little gorilla or not, but I'm saying we have our cousins who have greater visitors than anybody else. Nobody has ever visited you in your home, but the visit visitors that have visited the family of mountain gorillas are too many. And in this fact, Kisoro has the largest families of the gorillas in the country and the region. So Kisoro, again, when you read the first schedule of the constitution, is point number one, where Uganda starts. And you will see all of these names of Chibaya in the constitution, if you read it correctly. And then you move around the whole world and then come back here. So Uganda starts and ends in Kisoro. I'm proud to be a leader where Uganda begins and where Uganda ends. And it is an stored story. I don't know whether it's out of jealousy or some people don't like us. When Winston Churchill, the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, accompanied by Andrew Cohen, the then governor, when they reached at Kanawa, near where that bamboo forest enters into the district, I think that time much of the place was like Chibaya, so virgin, few people, many wild animals, and so green and great. And he pronounced this, Uganda is a part of Africa. So we owe that name to Uganda, and please Uganda, recognize us that you were named that because Kisoro existed. Uganda is part of Africa, and Kisoro is part of Uganda. Friends, when the world wars were being fought, the German East Africa, we were part of it under Rwanda, Urundi, and this was part of Rwanda kingdom, and the king had so many places here. But that is not even important. The wars, the trenches in the Murora Hill is fundamentally a turning point where some of these settlements of international wars were settled. And where? In Kigezi. Kigezi name is in Nyakawande. So when you talk of you coming to Kisoro with the Kigezi Investment Summit, you have come home where the name Kigezi comes from. So you are not making any mistake. Friends, I want to invite you to, again, another fundamental historical grounds where the mummies were mummified, the then great Bahinza. When you go to Lake Mutanda, you will find tombs of so many million years ago, and the mummies, the, the, those people who were embalmed and took, taken there are still, the remains are still as fresh as yesterday. So what means that we are a center of civilization where people could do great things? Friends, 
Kisoro has wonders. You can go to Kisoro and get any natural resource that you think about, be it a lake, be it a swamp, be it a river, be it a mountain, be it a valley, be a cave. So God must have been here before materials got finished of creating this world. And that's why we have a variety of what to see. When I go to the world of Anitimana, <laughs> my sister, the place is so flat that perhaps materials were few. But again, someone says, no, God was grading the whole world to be flat, and he was dropping all the scrap into Kisoro. So Kisoro is a scrapyard of all the materials that were not finished. And when it was the evening and he wanted to go home, it was already Saturday. So he stopped and Kisoro had all those rough things. But those rough things define the beauty of Kisoro. Kisoro now is an opportunity for business, as I want to conclude. Um, we are the heart of Great Lakes region. When you are in Kisoro, you can easily, easily dart into Goma, Bukavu, Lubumbashi, under the same plane. You can dash through Kigari, Burundi, and Tanganyika. And indeed, Kisoro is on Mombasa, Goma Highway. So we are strategically positioned, not only for business, but also industry. So this highway has been well, well prepared by God that when one time we start industrial park, there will be no problem. Other industries, they will want fast to circumnavigate, move around, but for us, raw materials coming outside the country will straight come from Mombasa directly here because we have a, an established highway already for us. So those who have some feeling that we should have taken this somewhere, th no, this is strategic. Muchiza is an educated, intelligent man. He couldn't do it better. This is going to be the best industrial park outside Kampala. This is going to be the best. And I wish that all investors who are here, hey, my road mayor, now this place is going to rival you in your small township called Kisoro Municipality. We are going to have a bigger municipality here because everything that's going to be done here is automatically changing this place into an urban center. It is now plain, but come after two years, human activity will be a beehive here, and I'm waiting to see that. So, friends, when you come to Kisoro, come with a great heart of sacrifice, because again, we have a stony environment. But these stones are not a curse. They are opportunities because they are materials to construct, to mold, to make raw materials. And we are the highly mineralized district in Uganda. I want this one also to be recognized. But the investment in the mineral extraction is not yet done well. Kisoro has the best coffee in the country, has the best tea in the country, the best beans are from Kisoro. The katunda, the passion fruit that is most tasty, comes from Kisoro. So from the grass, from the soil, to the products of the soil, everything is best, best, best. We are incomparable. And I'm not bragging. I'm a scientist, a PhD student in public health. So I'm using facts because UBOS is doing it well. And we have UBOS here already, and they are preparing us a census next year. Friends, I would have said more, but perhaps when the chief guest comes, I would wish to greet him and perhaps he drop some few things in his ears when he comes so that he tastes the passion and the feelings of the governor of the district. Thank you very much. Just before you leave, just before you leave, uh, the chief guest is watching live television on his way here. Uh, so you are, you are definitely with him. Mm. A lot of investors are watching uh, this international and within the region. Mm. And uh, a rumor has been going around that some of the best coffee is from Chisoro. Is that a rumor or is there any proof to that end? Um, incidentally, the former Uganda Coffee Authority, who later became the Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Trace Wichanayandi, may be in the house or is on his way. 
he will attest to this. Because coffee testers use natural tests. Yes. They don't use uh, these equipments. You use your tongue. And they have attested to that. And the tea produced here in Mombasa, it is only rivaled, rivaled by uh, Rwandan tea, briefly. Otherwise, we have the best tea and the best aroma of the tea. And uh, it is not a fallacy. It is a fact. Okay. So I also took interest when you spoke about um, Mutanda Hills and the mummies there. Mm. Um, would, is that you suggesting that somebody deliberately interested in investing in tourism has very good business to be here? Wow. There are people who are close to nature. People, everyone actually, including you and me, we were destined to be forest people. But now it happened that civilization made us cut trees and become uh, semi-arid. But the first thing you have to look at is cultural tourism. We have a community called Batwa. The Pijmis, which that name is really derogatory, but the real name is Batwa who have relationship with the bamboo tea of Congo, the Mamende of western uh, side of Congo. These people still hold the original civilization of Africa. They still have original cultures where we can trace ourselves. They, they are the real conservationists who never killed the forests. Number two, the, the people itself, people of Kisoro, so wonderful. When you interact with them, the stories they tell you. Imagine if you are with me and I'm telling you the story, you are taking a cup of coffee. I'm a good storyteller. Okay. You will not wish to go away. Now, from there, the panoramic view of Kisoro. It is only here, you are talking about industrial parks, but it's only in Ichibaya where you can be now and view beautiful mountains the other side and just as get a small hillock you see a fantastic uh, lava dam lake of Mutanda, and the other side there is Murehe. When you go this side, there is Chibumbu, Chahaf and Kayumbu, very beautiful lakes. And actually, you need to fly and see how Kisoro is made. Tourism is the hub. And we can say, whoever is here, please start with tourism. It makes more sense. And we are here as local government to support you to settle. I, I heard you uh, speak about being um, an academic and uh, involved in public health. Yes. Um, can you speak uh, to those watching us who understand or are tired of consuming the fumes, uh, polluted air of the city, and why it makes sense for somebody to build a holiday home in Kisoro, which they probably use once a and when they're not using it, they can go Airbnb and uh, let it out to somebody involved in, in tourism. Uh, the first wiser people and the strategic people have already grabbed the opportunity. You know, Honorable Katesh has a... And, uh, talk, talk in terms of proximity between where we are, Rwanda and Congo. What does the market look like for somebody who's, who decides to set up here? Because I know some are making that decision and they want you to speak to market. Market. I love my president when he talks about market. When you have your bushera from your sogam or from millet, when you have your Irish potatoes, we are a market ourselves because one Two pieces of Irish potatoes can make a socket of crisps. But the same amount of money, 3,000 that buys a packet of crisps, can buy a whole basket of, of okay. Irish potatoes. So we have a, a lolly of one basket of ice, uh, Irish potatoes in two crisps. So the, the value added to our crops, our products, can we first of all be consumed by us in our schools, in our markets. And again, we have Goma. Goma is the center of almost the eastern Congo. Bukavu, I have ever heard about it, but it's not as popular as Goma. Then let's come to Chigari. By the way, Chigari is only three hours from here, four. But actually, many, many, many people prefer flying to Chigari when they are coming for tourism. And that's why Chigo, uh, Chisoro district is the number two entry 
of foreigners coming to a district who fly. So after Entebbe, Kisoro is number two. So that opportunity alone shows that we have the market. The market for the gorillas and the other wilds. We have a golden monkey. Have you had a golden monkey? Yeah. When you look at it, really, you feel like you want to see it again. So we are a market of the world communi outside the community because every day, if you go to Windy, you'll find that the community is there. There are more whites than blacks because of the population of tourists. We are a market. Then we go to Goma, we go to Bukavu, we go to Chigari, we go to Bujumbura, we go to Western Tanganyika, and all those places. And we are talking about more than 200 million people. Okay. And um, many watching would want to know that if they invest here and they have to move either equipment or raw materials from the East African coast because it is Africa, they might be worried about the nature of the road. Do we have a paved road from Kampala uh, to Chisoro? Is the road good? Speak to that. Is so, the road good? That is what His Excellency, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, Ruhembo Gwenjura, Savarwanyi, Tibuhaburwa, because he is a Kuhaburwa already, by God, has done that. We have a road, and most of you have used it, that goes straight to the end points of our, our borders, to Vunagana, to Chanika, and now we have opened a new border post in, uh, in Busanza, where URA is already taking the taxes from people who are trading. Okay. Then you, you spoke about people flying to Chigali as opposed to flying here. Mm. Talk to us about the cost of flying here. What's the cost of the, um, a ticket f if you landed in Entebbe and you decided you didn't want to do the road and you wanted to fly here? Is it that expensive? It might actually not be very expensive. Um, I don't fly as a businessman. Yes. I've ever offered a flight by uh, my, my brother and my senior, His Excellency King Caesar Murenga, he has sponsored me flights a number of days yes. going to Kampala, but I've never paid. But I will, if, <laughs> I will ask those who pay how much, yes. but I have people who are doing But what I want to say... I, I, I know somebody who flies, I will ask Morris. Okay. Yes. Oh. <laughs> what I want to say is yes. that we need to expand our airfield here in Kisoro because there are administrative and overhead costs that we incur when people fly, stop Chigari, and then use the road. They would rather have flown directly to our airstrip and reduce the costs. Okay. So I encourage the first investment Mochiza should see and others is expanding our airstrip. Because when you talk of, of oil, there is an airstrip in the, the other side of Bunyoro. And here we are talking about uh, tourism and industry. So, and I want to encourage you, tourism alone can turn this place into a money bag for Uganda. It's a hanging fruit. It is ready, ready made tourism alone. Now we are adding industrial industries. So to me, now we are double-edged. Oh, okay. Morris has told me that it's just a paltry $300, not a lot of money. Okay. And if I'm going to invest here, mm -hmm. I need to know, is there local labor? And are the locals here, people willing to work, are they trainable? <laughs> is there a local labor force? Yeah. Kisoro is one of the most fertile places. Oh, eh? Our ladies are the most fertile women I, in When the you country. said most fertile, I thought you, meant, Mandel, the, you uh, meant the ground. No. <laughs> we are most fertile on the ground and in motherhood. Because on average, a mother will produce 8.5 children. The last time I did uh, the study. Meaning that we have a number of people here. The place is really having labor. That's why we export the labor to Mubende. You hear Mufumbira. Everywhere in Uganda, go even to Kenya, Kericho, Nakuru, you will find the Mufumbira there. And, and, so, I'll, and I'll speak something to that, that wherever you find somebody who needs somebody strong, doing hey, work, Kenyama. yeah, they will say, hey, ito Mufumbira. Yes. Yes, Mufumbira, and they are very faithful. So on the labor, don't worry. On hospitality of the people, don't worry. Uh, and again, uh, people are already oriented in business. For us, we don't have other cash crops, biz, big cash crops, because are, our land holding is very precarious. We have very small plots divided in very many, many families. So we only invest in knowledge. Okay. Speaking uh, to the knowledge, we educate our children seriously as if we're investing in the coffee and the cotton. Number two, we make sure people are faithful. We have a strong culture. So 
we are educated, we have hospitable people, they will not steal your materials. And actually, they will guard your materials. Okay. And they are so religious. Isoro is heavily Christian and therefore has high moral values. So I'll give you a few, uh, maybe two more minutes to make your final pitch in, in the camera to persons watching. But from the feedback I'm getting, um, they are saying the LC5 chair has pitched well for Chisoro. Thank you very much. Your final humbled. pitch. My final pitch is please, potential investors, come to Kisoro. And please, Mr. Mochiza, Toja Ngoko, be more serious. Your spirits are around and they're watching you. Your great grandfathers, they will curse you if this industrial park does not work. <laughs> we have heard the one, Madame Aniti. People start and don't finish. I mean finishing in terms of, uh, not the other thing, the thing of finishing. <laughs> we are in sort of right? We don't like people who start and don't finish. So we want Muchiza to start and do what? And finish. Now, appeal number two. Those people on the other side, my brother Clementi, Mirembo, Hardware, I can see other people on the other side whom I can't see. Those are the first beneficiaries. If you don't, Square upon the living God that those people are going to be the first owners of the first plots that are marketed, then I may wish to withdraw my offer because those are my voters. And indeed, the policy of investment says domestic investment promotion. So we are going by your word. Another thing is that the community, respect the community, respect our girls, our women, our men, no exploitation. I will be there to see. Though I intend to go to Parliament, but I'm still here as a, re a resident. We shall not allow people who exploit the people to the se for the sake of getting profits. Um, I'm not a Marxist, but again also I'm not a, a functionalist. I believe in symbolic interactionism. So I would wish to speak in my language briefly yes. because I don't need an interpreter in this. Mm -hmm. Because I'm the one who has made this speech. Bavandi Mwe Mwara Yuko, Mr. Speaker of the par of the my parliament, the district council. Where are you, Amos? Aha. Uh, he's done with a t-shirt of mm -hmm. MK. You know, yeah, we, have, yeah, yeah. we have a special project in Kisoro. Mm -hmm. For us, we, we know what to do. <laughs> when it comes to Yero, we follow it to the roots. Um, I want to congratulate the council of Kisoro for not this time having bickerings, but unified with the members of parliament in one accord to make sure that we agree that we have an industrious uh, and uh, business uh, Park. Other people, when you talk about this, we have had mortalities or projects, I have to confess, and I'm not saying them now. But this one succeeded, where all of us agreed. Bavandimwe, ni bajiwe mvuga uruzungu, kanina na avuze ngonera kufuku rufumbira. Ndabashimi, nyo mamutukware, mbareba, no bakansarazi, abatukware, ba district, mwese, mwakoze kuza, kanina wame nyeshango, ichicho tukwa tanjiye, tugomba kukirangiza kandi mutwizere kuko ibyo ndimo ntibipfaga gupfa ah uh, mesdames et messieurs notre voisin eh, novaza qui vaut de congo je voudrais vous souhaiter le ah uh, dire quoi vous êtes les bienvenus je vous devais vous dire que ici en kisoro nous aimons les unes les autres nous voulons faire la commerce transfrontalier en paix and we hope the peace of the rest of Congo will be made by our president so that we will be with the trade commerce that is here. Thank you very much. Finish off with Swahili. Finish off with Swahili. Let, let's show off. Let's show off. Finish off with some Swahili. <laughs> uh, what do we want to talk Congo? Nadhani wengine wanawezi kutoka Chigari Rwanda. Tunashukuru kuwaona. 
tunaanza kuwasema kuambia hii kitu hapa tunafanya ta industrial park tunataka kikuwe tamtam kwa watu wa kisoro na watu wone, wote wa business people wanataka kufanya business hapa biashara tunashukuru sana kukuwa na nyinyi yote asante sana mheshimiwa piga makofi those of you watching us live both on UBC and on NBS, if you are coming to Chisoro, it is now breaking news that when you start here, you must finish. And because that's the case, I'm not going to start because I can't finish. Uh, Morris can start and finish. Morris, come and start, so you finish. <laughs> get the, get the Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for the LC5 chairman and Samson Kasumba. Thank you, Samson. Um, you did a fantastic job. We can get you a bottle of water uh, for now. Um, so, uh, the, a couple of things. Um, I had uh, the pleasure, again, thanks to the Uganda Investment Authority, uh, of flying all the way uh, to Kisoro Airport. And uh, I, I initially had my fears with the, the flight. And I can tell you I had the best flight ever. Uh, and so I won't mention the airline because they are not sponsors of the investment summit. But we had quite a great experience um, with the many other passengers on board uh, the airline. And uh, because we were paying a one-way ticket, you can actually pay a one-way ticket for $150. And it's only one hour from Entebbe to Kisoro Airport. The other advantage I had is that we had a stopover in Mbarara. So we went to Nyachara. I think that is how they call the airfield. Uh, Nyachara in uh, Mbarara, the airport in Mbarara and dropped off a couple of passengers and then set off for Kisoro Airport. Quite the experience, and I've been marketing um, now the domestic flights because it's a new way of getting uh, around the country in just one hour. So you can fly from Entebbe to Kisoro in one hour for just $300. That is if you're going two way, and it's one way, it's exactly $150. Uh, I'll think, uh, I'll let the chairman later explain the, the dollars in, in, in uh, Kiswahili uh, for our DRC friends who like to fly. Uh, but quite the experience, you get to see um, a lot of the terrain, especially in Kigezi. Beautiful, beautiful terrain. Now, as uh, of course Samson and uh, the LC5 chairman were talking, we received the Minister of State for General Duties in the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, the Honorable Henry Musasizi. Thank you so much. And also member of parliament, Rwanda East. Uh, so that's why you see we are calling it the Chigezi uh, Investment Summit. And uh, he's here uh, with us. We want to thank you. Uh, please note that this is also uh, the Investment and Free Zone Summit. And also, uh, those of you watching at home and you're wondering where we are, we are actually in the Industrial and Business Park in Chibaya. We had the LC5, LC1 chairman speaking here. He, he welcomed us to Chibaya. Uh, the location is literally prime. In our background is all the nine mountains um, that make up the entire caldera here in the Chigezi region. Uh, it's really beautiful uh, because we are getting to learn the history of this area. But I thought before we dig in and look, listen to some of the testimonies from our businessmen here in this room, uh, I want to make a special, special, special uh, appreciation for our partners and key stakeholders today who are our sponsors um, today. I want to welcome them, Tony and the team from Lagan Management. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Lagan Management. And I want to thank, of course, our media partners, UBC and NBS, who are broadcasting to the entire country this summit. Uh, Ibiri hano muri Chibaya, biri live kuri televizyo, muri Uganda yose. Na abgari hano hoa njine kusa muri Uganda yose. So abanu wose muri Uganda, bari mokure ibiri hano muri Chibaya. So none chairman wa RC1 uraza kudushima nawe, kuko Chibaya tuikoze popular. Tuikoze popular, abanu wose muri Uganda, aho honore banita va, uh, arua, bari mokutuba ze iyo Chibaya iri hehe, ko hasa neza chani. Honore, uh, I was saying Chibaya is beautiful. I know you were wondering what I was saying. All right, um... May I request our team, our uh, video team, we want to run a very short video on UIA, uh, the services UIA offers, uh, before I invite our testimonies. Let's turn to the screens. Uganda 
Regulatory Investment Authority is a government agency whose role is to promote, attract and facilitate foreign and domestic investment in Uganda. The agency advises government on investment policy and advocates for a competitive business environment. Uganda Investment Authority operates a one-stop center, which is the first point of contact for potential investors. It was established to facilitate the setup of investment in Uganda. Through the one-stop center, investors have access to all services required to set up a business and acquire an investment license in less than 24 hours. With your investment license, you will have access to Uganda's attractive tax and non-tax incentives. Here are the available investment opportunities in Uganda.
Ladies and gentlemen, we can continue and continue telling you about the investment opportunities. Another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Uganda Investment Authority um, that is putting this together. Um, please note, if you can, and if you don't have, before you leave, uh, let us know. Um, we have done the homework for all of you, and, and, and before I introduce some people. So these are the bankable projects in Kigezi. And uh, some of the projects, like the LC5 chairman was talking about, the honey, uh, is already done here for you. What's the investment capital you may need? The uh, period within which to get back your money? And of course, um, highlighting some of the areas where your market is. And so we've done the homework for you. And what the industrial uh, and business park will do is offer you the platform, the space, uh, to be with the others as you develop these products. And so if you're one of those who was wondering where is the money, why are we here? In, 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 uh, in, in a few words and pictures and letters, we have done the homework for you. So the rest is the conversation and the testimonies we will be sharing about those who have already started making money, those who have smelt the money. As I say that, allow me to recognize, uh, we have uh, Dr. Nicholas Kamara, Honorable Dr. Nicholas Kamara, I think Kabali Municipality, is that the constituency? Honorable, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it is nice to, uh, to see you here. Uh, I've been told the Kanungu LC5 chairman is here. Kanungu LC5 chairman, please stand for recognition. Yes, there you go. Um, I have seen our friend Professor uh, Charles Kwesiga, Uganda Industrial Research Institute. Professor, please stand for recognition. There you go. Uh, Professor, I think later will be sharing with us uh, some of these conversations. We will recognize uh, most of our guests very shortly, and, and some of them will be recognized by the other people. Allow me quickly invite um, Mr. Ngabirano Dennis. Uh, a lot of us know Mr. Ngabirano Dennis from Sam's Food Industries. Round of applause, please come. Uh, uh, he's going to tell us his story in very few minutes. Uh, please clap for him. He's a, he's a, he's a local investor. And we want him to tell us his story, so take a seat. I also want to invite uh, Mr. Roland Kanya, Mutware Roland Kanya, and where we need to put our money. We need to bring local people to also tell you that uh, there is money in our region. Uh, Mr. Nicholas Biengoma, uh, Nikontra Limited. Nicholas Biengoma, where are you? Another round of applause. Ah, there you go. The stairs are on this side, so that... Uh, uh, we don't have to jump. The stairs are on the other side. Um, we also have um, Sabimana area. Mutwari and Sabimana, uh, is he here? I know he, he hadn't registered on our part. Uh, we have Mr. Norman Batuma. Mutwari Norman Batuma. Neweija Otugambire. How making money is very easy in Chikezi. Uh -huh. And finally, our very own Mr. Mohan, Your Excellency. Uh, oh, it is him? Perfect. Please come. Uh, he'll speak on behalf of uh, the Indian community that uh, has, of course, invested in this country. And a free city. Feel free. Um, okay. I was waiting for Kanya. Now that Kanya, it is going to be a full house. But Sam's, by the way, I, and I know the, the VIPs. Sam's, I'm do, I don't know why you didn't bring a container. Everyone wanted to test these things. I know that uh, the VIPs are already testing some of your products. Um, Yes. Oh, this is mine. I also hadn't gotten mine. Now I have. Now, now I can start with you since we have. Uh, uh, I have been offered mine. So let's begin with you. Um, your story. We don't have a lot of time, as you can see. So, if you want to tell us your story and inspire, there's a button somewhere there, and inspire the people in this room um, that it is actually possible to invest uh, and be a local investor in the region and make money. Thank you so much, uh, Maurice. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Mazina Ganje Ninye Denis Singabirano. I'm from Kabale, but uh, I'm working from Kampala. I'm a teacher by profession, and I'm a manufacturer. I'm the CEO and the founder of Sam's Food Industries Limited. We are the manufacturers of your favorite family snacks. For those of you who have had an opportunity to test our crisps, that is one of our products. 
And for those who have not had an opportunity, uh, apologies from me, because I came by a fr flight and I was limited on the number of kilograms to carry on the flight. So it wasn't intended, but it was uh, by the way I traveled. But the next time I come, we'll have to make special arrangements. So we manufacture crisps, and we are the leading crisps manufacturers in Uganda. Having started with a very humble budget of 43,000 Ugandan shillings as a coursework fulfillment at the university, I have, over the last 10 years, uh, 12 years, grown the industry from an initial 11 US dollars investment capital up to over a million dollars at present. We are apparently setting up the second largest crisps fa facility or factory in Nkowe, that is Hoima Road uh, in Wachiso district. And I want to tell you that all 80% uh, of the potatoes that we are processing in our industry originate from Chisolo. We are using uh, Rangumi and Chiniji. But we realize that the cost of transporting the potatoes from Chisolo to Kampala is very, very high. So the launch of this industrial park is a great opportunity to us because we've been planning to expand our investment to tap into other products like uh, frozen chips. We have market for that. We have tried to test the product on the market by doing dealership from uh, another manufacturer and we have found it viable. So if all goes well, we'd love to invest here to set up maybe a French fries a facility and that will increase on the revenues our farmers are getting as well as most especially to those who have already organized, been organized into uh, unions and cooperatives. Uh, two, three months ago, we signed an MOU with the Kisolo Co uh, District Potato Growers Cooperative Union under the leadership of Mr. Fidel Kamali. And we hope in the next one month they will start supplying. We have uh, an opportunity, given them an opportunity to supply up to uh, 40 metric tons of wear potatoes per month. But considering the fact that most of the farmers have been really doing um, uh, uh, their smallholder farmers, we have, we have also tried to introduce a high-yielding variety, which is called Taulas. Taulas is high-yielding. Taulas, uh, the return on investment is quite high. When you look at even the cost of uh, one kilogram of wear potatoes is much higher. But at the same time, we have found constraints in the trade. One of the challenges, uh, save for the longer distance that we uh, we have to, uh, to, to, to transport the potatoes up to Kampala. The other challenge is that most of the farmers who have not invested in the smart farming initiatives, they cannot supply us year round. So at times we fetch all the potatoes from Chisolo and then two, three, four down, uh, months down the road, the fields dry up and we don't have uh, consistency in the supply chain. So we are calling up the district uh, 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 leadership to try to lobby, uh, now that you have uh, government in your amidst, uh, try to lobby for, uh, in, uh, for, for smart, invest, uh, smart uh, farming uh, initiatives, such as irrigation, so that we can have the supply of potatoes year in, year out. Um, we have also tried to prove to the other markets where we are selling the potatoes that Chisolo has the most tasty wear potatoes in Africa. So when you look at the chiniji, the taste of chiniji which you have tasted, you cannot compare it with the imported brands such as Lay's and the other competitors of ours from Kenya. We have that natural taste that brings out the true taste of African potatoes. And we want to encourage you 
to continue growing potatoes, but you need to be very organized because you're not going to come and purchase from individual farmers. But now that there are uh, indiv uh, government initiatives such as EMIOGA, we want to make, to make sure that we purchase directly from farmers or from cooperatives because we are not buying on a cash basis. And once the money has come in, we'll have to deposit it on the, uh, on the what? On the, on, the, on the account. So the moment we get to have farmers that are organized, believe me, we are going to expand our purchases. And now that we are setting up a much bigger facility, we need a lot of potatoes. The coming on board of DRC into the East African integration is another opportunity for us to sell much more than we have been selling at pre we are selling at present. So, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are engaged in agribusiness, yes. try to make sure that you double your efforts, work with us. We have also deployed two agronomists at our company costs. They are within, they are moving in the fields to make sure that the farming practices are improved. Thank you. We thank you so much and ladies we look and forward to Round of applause for Dennis. Dennis, thank you so much. Dennis, I honestly really wanted to have more time. I, w I have many questions for you. Uh, but also your testimony, because there, we, there is locals watching and also in this room, I thought Imelda would come. I, I have one minute, Imelda, for you to talk about Chiniji yeah? and, and why farmers need to be organized yeah? and why uh, the quality uh, of the potatoes is very critical and how we can use the potato, you know, the, the Irish potato can become uh, Uganda's, uh, you know, bread and butter for this area. Um, right. Melda, one minute. Thank you very much, Molis. Ansabieko vuga kubiri umutwara vuzeho na chane kubiri mandi ba beretse hari yakobali gukora ebe mandi ba gakora mo chips ba kabizi parkinga. Avuze yuko batangira nya imitwaro enye n'ibihumbi bitatu byonyine ariko bafite za miliyoni za madorari avuze ko kibayice bakorera muri Kampala ariko bashaka kubera ko uru ruganda rugiye gutangira hano bagiye kuza muri Kisoro none ari gusaba abafumbira nafumbira kazi atubye yuko bakoze inyandiko n'igitongore cha Kisoro Irish Growers Association gikuriwe na mutware Kamari so ari gusaba abafumbira nafumbira kazi ngo muhinga ibimondi mu bwinshi kandi ibimondi bakoresha ziriya kuri sipsi zo batweretse bazigurira hano muri kisoro rwangume na kinigi so ari kubasaba abafumbira nafumbira kazi na cyane abo bahuriye hamwe kuko umuntu umwe ashobora kutabahaza ibyo bakeneye none ni cyingenzi kugira ngo mwifatanyirize hamwe kabafumbira nafumbira kazi kuko batubye yuko muri kwisi hose ikimondi kiva hano muri bufumbira nico kimondi kiryoshe kuruta ibindi byose so baradusabye ngo twebwe nk'abafumbira turere ngo duhinze imondi kandi mu bwinshi ko mudakomye mu mashi abafumbira aha wakoze Imelda wakoze cyane thank you Imelda um, so let me turn to Mr Batuma Norman Batuma um, who among many other businesses is going to testify about why investing in Kigezi would be the right thing. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, MC. Uh, all protocol observed. I'll uh, first mention uh, that uh, today I've been very much humbled to see Honorable Mateke, uh, who was a great friend of my late father and, and still strong. Uh, I've seen the daughter, has, she has just stepped out I want her to pass on the message of uh, the humility I've got today to see him strong and still able to walk and uh, uh, serving the people of Kisoro. I remember in those days when, uh, not, in the recent, not in the recent past, but uh, a little before, he used to drive his car every weekend, every other weekend from Kampala to Kisoro, and he would stop at my father's hotel in Kavari Highland Hotel. Every other weekend. Remember those days, the roads were not good at all, but you could not miss a single weekend without uh, coming to, to Kisoro. 
and he was a great disciplinarian. I remember, and I need to mention it also, that at one time, there was uh, one uh, government police officer who was uh, dressed shabbily, and he slapped him publicly, that you can't be a government officer and dressed shabbily like this. So back to uh, our point today for investing in Kisoro and in Kigezi in particular, uh, I want to give the credit where it belongs to. I was brought up in a business family and uh, my father, the late Canon Batuma, taught us all about business. I'm currently a, a distributor with MTN also have uh, in the oil and gas uh, industry, as well as Batuma Holding uh, business. I employ, give Ugandans livelihood to 400 people currently, that uh, out of those businesses, they are benefiting every month. Uh, we are two products of uh, Amzei's efforts here. Next to me is my dear uncle, uh, who also is, uh, was taught and raised by the late uh, uh, Canon Batuma. Uh, opportunities uh, for both young and old are always uh, available. You all know the owner of KFC. He started his business when he was 65 years old. He was contemplating to commit suicide after everything else had failed. That was after he was given a check of $100 as his benefits after he had retired and was co contemplating to commit suicide. When he remembered that there is one thing that I, can, I know that I'm able to do, and that was uh, uh, preparing chicken from his, uh, from his, his uh, being a chef. And that is why KFC is what it is today. So for young and old, the opportunities are always there. And this is the right time and the right place. Do not uh, give up or feel that I'm already too old or I'm too young to take up this opportunity. Uh, Kigezi region, we are, we are blessed, as other speakers have, have said, being near two uh, great countries that have got a big market for all products that one can make. And in order to be able to benefit maximally, we must remember, as my colleague has just said, the one who makes crisps, there must be money exchange. You must produce a product. You do research on the marketability of that product. You work out the costs of uh, making that product. You make it available. Then they'll buy it. You'll make some uh, uh, living. Oh, uh, and I cannot say a particular product. All products are necessary. When you visit our current supermarkets, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, products available on the market. Most of them are coming from our neighbors, Kenya, because their market matured, and uh, those factories are giving employment, they are giving revenues to the government. So this is the right opportunity uh, for, for us to, to use uh, in uh, taking this opportunity that uh, has been presented to us by Uganda Investment Authority and uh, Kisoro uh, for this uh, great noble cause of, uh, of what we are here to do today. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Batuma. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, want, I want to turn uh, to Mr. And, and I'm glad uh, Mr. Batuma introduced you, sir. So I think we will quickly uh, turn to you, Mr. Viengoma. Um, you know, you want to share with us your testimony in uh, uh, three, four minutes? 
It's on. Uh, is it on now? Yes. yes. I didn't know you can be so mean four minutes. <laughs> to a man who is now 78 years old, you are not fair. You got another extra 30 seconds. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when I looked in the front row here, I think I was the oldest. Even I could do. Uh, the only uh, Sababuturo seems to be in your league. No, he's yeah. younger. Oh, okay. I think he's younger because, because only, the, uh, the honorable Matecha, I think. <laughs> yeah, only, yeah, thank you, Filippo. Filimon, yeah. So, uh, my journey uh, is quite a long one. As I said, I'm now 78 years old, and I've been in business or uh, being in a, growing in a family which had, a, we are growing in a cash economy from all the way in the 40s. Because when I was uh, born and raised, by the time I was six year, seven years old, I had 200 trees of coffee. And I was wearing a leather shoe because I was making money when I was in primary four. So this uh, will lead you when I tell you about my journey in business uh, how I was raised. I started when I was very small. I used to look after pigs. Some people in Bufumbira here will laugh. I say, how can this man say that he, he was making money looking after pigs? And from there, I graduated to look after my daddy's cows. And uh, when he, he passed on, then that's when we moved to Nyachenyi, a place called Numba, and uh, where we have been growing coffee, matoke, we had a very big orchard, and we were all over in the markets at that time, in the 50s, when I was in primary. And uh, when I finished my college, I joined the, my brother-in-law at Kanon Batuma. And uh, I remember when I was leaving the college, they were, could take us on the podium and ask you, what are you going to do? And I told them I was going to join a company called Kigeza African Wholesale. And uh, they were all laughing in the hall. They say, how can you join an African uh, enterprise? At that time, 1968. But I can assure you, the journey that uh, Kanon Ibatuma took us through is unbelievable and it made a huge huge change in my life and many lives in people in Kabale because it was the only wholesale company dealing with all sorts of merchandise and uh, it was huge and uh, Karen Watma had of course married my late sister the mother of this young man and when he came to Nyacheni, Numba, he added 400 coffee trees on my late daddy's uh, uh, coffee farm. And uh, so we had now about 800 coffee trees. And this one will draw me to tell the chairman here, who says that it is the best, Chisora has the best coffee. No, it is Numba in Nyacheni. It has been tested in Canada and in Switzerland, and we still are at the top. And when you come to Kabale Numba Coffee Cafe, opposite police, that's where you'll have the best coffee, which we are growing in Nyacheni, Numba. We are roasting, we are grinding, and we are serving it on the table today. So we are picking more than $15 per kilo in a cup of coffee in Kabale. And that one also brings me to tell you that we have invested in lodges, one in Lake Mburu, 11 rooms, and another 25 in Lake Bunyonyi, where when you are lying on your bed or in a shower, you are overlooking 29 islands. You will never see it anywhere in the world. And recently, now we are moving to Kisoro in the uh, Mukos here. But we have had one unfortunate uh, 
part, but interesting for Uganda. Uh, UNRWA has taken almost three quarters of our land to take the road going to uh, Nkuringo and, uh, and Rushaga. But uh, to continue about my journey, uh, it's a painful story in that uh, uh, I find that most Ugandans don't have financial literacy. So all the things they do, they don't first look at the finances that are involved. So there is a need. I don't know, Mr. S uh, whether I should wait for the minister where it's coming. I can see there is a bit of... Uh, I, I want, I'm buying you time because I notice he may have to take a photo and uh, the Director General, I think, will have to take a photo with him on the other side. Yes, yeah, so I, 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 I bet that's his fire. Thank yeah. you. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I thank you. I, I will request that, uh, gentlemen, we take our seats. We'll come back um, at some point. So please do Why don't seat. you remain here? There is another ceremony going to happen. That is why I want oh, us okay. to... Yes, but we'll come back. Don't worry, Mr. Thank Bengoma. You. Uh, please take your seats. Uh, Bavandimwe Amashi Yaba Bavuze Mukanya. We will definitely continue. Uh, and I want to hear from uh, the other businessmen, including, of course, uh, Mr. Kanya from the Kisoro Land Board, um, who will share with us more. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Dennis, also. Yeah. Ah, please, please. Um, we are shortly going to receive our chief guest, the Minister of Finance. Uh, please note that there will be some protocols to that, which include that we'll stand and have the anthems, and then we'll have uh, another prayer. We will continue to dedicate this industrial and uh, business park uh, to God. I also want to remind you again that the homework for you for the viable investment opportunities in Uganda uh, has been done. Uh, this book is available. Uh, please, and, and I wanted uh, the chairman, I'm hoping... UIA leaves as many copies for the chairman so that he can distribute also to the district leadership. Um, and we will ensure that everyone gets a copy of the bankable projects. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, over to Samson Kasumba to receive our chief guest. The chief guest is walking in. And from as far as I can see, he looks in a flamboyant mood. And, and very jovial, uh, very like of uh, uh, the Honorable Matia Kasaija. Uh, when he does speak, you will tell that he's a man committed to the cause. Uh, Honorable Matia Kasaija, you're very welcome. Uh, very soon you'll get a hand clap that you deserve. That will come soon. I want to be walking like that in my 70s for sure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's stand up for the anthems.
uishi kwa amani tutimize na malengo yetu tumulia yetu sote tulilinde tuajibike tuimarike umoja wetu ni muzo yetu idu mujumulia yetu I'd like to call Reverend Father Safari Manuel, uh, the parish priest of uh, Gatete Parish and treasurer of Uganda Cooperative Alliance uh, to come and uh, speak to God in a very brief way. My brother here is representing the bishop of Anglican Church in uh, Bufumbira, Wabura Diocese, by the names Reverend Stephen Mzaza. Reverend Stephen Mzaza. So together we are going to pray and uh, so representative of the Islamic community may come here and together we pray to God to ask him to shower his blessings upon us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm by names of Sheikh Shafi Bakore Kaguba, the county Sheikh Kisoro Muslim Community, Uganda Muslim Security Council. Thank you. Lord our Father, we want to bless your name. We thank you for our country, Uganda, and you loved and the purpose that you give us such a beautiful country. We want to give you glory and honor for today, and we want to commit into your hands all that will take place today, that dear Lord in each and everything shall experience your presence and your leading. We thank you Lord for the leadership of this country, our beloved president. We want to pray that dear Lord you continue to lead them, to be with them. We pray dear Lord that you continue to be with all the arms of the government, that dear Lord as they lead this country, we shall continue to develop and to grow and to experience the potentials that, dear Lord, as a country, you want us to experience. We want to commit once again, dear Lord, today in your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. All praise and thanks are God's, the Lord of mankind and all that exists. The most gracious and the most merciful, you alone we worship and you alone we ask you for help for each and everything. Guide us to the straight way, the way of those on whom you have bestowed your grace, not the way of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. Almighty God, you are peace, and from you is all peace. We pray to you to bless our beloved country, Uganda, the power of Africa. We dedicate this industrial park to your hands, God. God, we thank you for our guest of honor. We thank you for the members of, the, of parliament who are around. We thank you for the ministers and investors who are around. Lord, as we are here, we pray to you to give us your blessings. Almighty God, in your glorious and mighty name, we pray. Nagasani mana nyirubu zima tugushimi gizu duha tugushimi yumusi. Uyunguyu wo isi yose ilebaha ngaha. E stakeholder nangwa tuwese isi yose ileba mchiba ya ngaha kujira ngo. Kuko watule mye mshusho liyawe. Tujire ubwenge kugira ngo duhindure isi waduhaye ibe nziza tugushimiye Afrika yacu na Uganda kandi na gisoro 
ari wo mutima wa Afrika nisi yose mana turagusaba ngo abo bose wabahaye ubwenge kugira ngo baze mu bimwanya bawihindure kandi abantu tuve mu bukene butu tumye tutaba abantu kuko waturemye mana duhereza ubwenge mana duhereze ibitekerezo dugushimira na president wacu wa Uganda na government ya movement yo turimo tugushimiye ibyiza ubuzima waduhaye nubwenge tukagushimira amahoro dufite kandi mana turagusaba ngo na Kongo iri bugufangaha ushiremo umutekano kandi turagusaba mana abagiye kutwigisha uyu munsi ibyo batwigisha byose tubishire mu nkora kandi waduhaye ubwenge ukaduhereza n'imbaraga byose tubone uko twava mu bukene tubone uko twafatanye isi yose abashoboye abakene nabatishoboye bose bagira isente kandi twese tubone kuba mu shusho rya nku waturemye kubwa Yesu Kristo umwami wacu izina ry'Imana data na mwana na roho mutagatifu amen Somewhere it has been said that imana dukore ibikomeye na tutuishime Morris uri he Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I thought we'd put our hands together for Samson Kasumba. Great, great work with the anthems. Thank you so much, uh, Samson. Our chief guest, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, the Honorable Matia Kaseja, the Honorable Minister of State for Investment, uh, the Honorable Evelyn Anite. Uh, our chief guest, uh, since I'm you know, recognizing the ministers, uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, the Honorable Evelyn Anite has been also uh, named uh, Honorable uh, Evelyn Anite, Mama Chibaya, because Chibaya is where we are right now. So she's Mama Chibaya, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the Honorable um, Sarah Mateche and the Honorable Henry Musasizi, uh, members of parliament in this room and uh, Honorable Minister, we have several members of parliament, including the area member of parliament that will be recognized a little later. The district leadership that is represented here by the LC5 chair, uh, uh, Mutware, Governor, Bizimana, uh, and your team. The members of the, or the other representatives of the MDAs, the Ministry of Trade is represented here, and several other ministries and agencies that are represented here, Honorable Minister, all the relevant MDAs, agencies um, are represented in this room and some are part of the exhibition that is ongoing. Members of the private sector who are here in this room, the um, media and the uh, uh, key partners uh, for this uh, particular summit. I want to begin by recognizing Lagan Management, our key sponsors uh, for this summit, and we want to thank you for partnering with us. Honorable Minister, I also want to mention that the key partners for the summit and of Uganda Investment Authority are the media houses UBC and NBS, and we are broadcasting this summit live to the whole country so everyone can participate in what we are doing here today, the official uh, commissioning of this industry and business park, but also be part of the Kigezi Investment Free Zone Summit. And in a very special way, Honorable Minister, I want to thank the team at Uganda Investment Authority, led by the Chair Morrison Rakakamba and his board, and the Director General, Mr. Robert Muchiza. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Uganda Investment Authority, who have brought us here and convened us in this room. Our chief guest, when we were broadcasting a lot of these images starting yesterday and today, uh, everyone wondered whether we were in some hotel, some five-star hotel in Kisoro, and we said, no, we are actually in the investment, industrial, and business park here in Chibaya, Rukundo Town Council, Chisoro District. And everyone was amazed. But we also told them that one of the best highlights about being here is that the background of the industrial park is the nine mountains that make up the entire uh, caldera of this area. And of course, uh, the significance of where we are in Kisoro with the Sabino, the mountain, that is literally the start point at the beginning point of Uganda, the most southernest post, uh, point of this country, and also the fact that we share, for example, um, uh, Gahinga, the mountain, uh, with uh, our brothers and sisters from Rwanda, with our Gahinga National Park, where the famous gorilla is. And the story, of course, has always been that uh, 
some gorillas do stray to Rwanda and they are owned by the other side, but they actually stay home, which is Uganda, but they can go and feed on the other side sometimes. And, but that's a story for, for others to discuss. Um, we have representation, um, Honorable Minister, from our neighboring countries, the DRC and Rwanda in this room, and we also know they are keenly following this conversation because this park will be significant for the economic development, not just of Uganda, but of the East African region, since the three countries literally meet here in Kisoro. Our chief guest, um, and I continue to share this with the Honorable uh, Sababuturo, who was telling me that there's several highlights about uh, Chigezi and, of course, Kisoro, where we are. Uh, one being that uh, this is one of the four areas in the country where you literally have a meeting point of three East African states. The other being, of course, West Nile, uh, where uh, the other boy Evelyn Anita comes from, and Karamoja, and Lake Victoria. So you cannot host a summit on Lake Victoria. That one we are still working with our Indian brothers to see how we can do. But you can hold a summit in Arua, which we did with the opening of the West Nile Park, uh, Industrial Park, and we are now in Kisoro, and I told the Honorable Anita that I think now the circuit must be completed. So we must go to Karamoja and have the launch of the investment park in uh, Karamoja. So we do the entire circuit of the East African countries. And I thanked her, Mama Chivaya, for accepting uh, to complete uh, this circuit. So without taking more time, allow me to invite the LC5 chair, Governor Mutware. You have one minute to come and receive our chief guest. Then I will continue with my speeches. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for the governor, Mr. Aber. So I, I thought I would go with the Christian one. <laughs> uh, dear Chief Guest, away to my name is Abel Bizmana Apuri. We are the Kuija. And Park when you are very Aboki, Akiki. We are the Akiki. So many we mono Kurora. Makama yebare kuisha hano ni manya rugire haramuno. Dear other friends, ministers present, I mean Mama Chivaya, officially launched today with the park. Minister Henry Musasizi, uh, Minister Sarah Matiche. I don't I don't know whether I have left any other minister, but uh, allow me also recognize the board lead. Uh, person Bwana Morris Wakakamba. I'm sorry, let me recognize you completely and fully. I'm speaking a means language completely. Because I have not recognized you before, allow me to tell you that we are grateful to you, Bwana Morris Wakakamba, because you make things happen. Thank you very much. To the Director General Muchiza, Robert, thank you for arranging friends in your respective uh, protocols for the interest of time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to again echo Mr. Guest of Honor that we are graced to have you here because this is the first industrial park in Kisoro under the leadership of His Excellency Uwe Kaguta Mseveni we feel now we are coming closer to money than before. We have been voting 100%, and nothing so big as this has ever happened in the 35 years as this industrial park. This is the first time we're going to have investors. We are going to turn this place like Namamve, which is only in Kampara maybe and Kapeka, somewhere in Ruero. As a leader, I've been traversing the country. I've flown out of the country so many times. This is the first time I feel I'm part of the money economy. I want to give you a brief history, guest of honor, that it started with a visionary leadership of me, present, Viziman Abe, the chairman of Kisoro District, where we found that the wave of industrial parks was catching up with everyone in the country, led by your arm of government called Investment Authority. I sold it to the council, and the council, led by Amos Hachizmana, our speaker, embraced it with the councillors, and we said this public land should be offered in its totality 
to do an industrial park. Thanks to the Council of Kisoro District, Mbokomirumashi. The next activity was exploration and offer of the land to Mama Chivaya Anite, who came with a very strong entourage, which we embraced together and signed so many signatures on a piece of paper, I wish it was part of the commemoration here, that almost everyone signed that this place becomes an industrial park. It was followed that later, we didn't even have a land board, but I want to report to you that my government has established a land board that is going to complete the acquisition, and that is no problem at all. And that land board is led by none other than uh, the man who was going to present um, Mutuare, forgetting his name, Lorand Kanya. Lorand Kanya is the chairperson land board of Kisoro District Local Government. Um, we want from now going forward, uh, our chief guest, that since you are in charge of the money in Uganda, just close your eyes. I know there are so many difficulties after COVID and other challenges. Just throw money here and let we start infrastructure development. And then we pave way for our investors to start coming because the spirits of the Lord and gods of this place are observing and we don't want to annoy them. Let us start this industrial park. Um, I want to encourage you that we investors who are coming in here, we should act smart. And the smartest way is climate smart. We want to restore and maintain the in a greenery of this place. We want at least, if we can cut these trees and these bushes, we should replace them somehow. So, Mr. Mchiza, I want your people to first count every tree and replace the equal amount of trees, number of trees that will have been cut. Because I'm passionate, and together with my president, about the world we live in and the future we want to see, which is always green for us and our children. Our chief guest, we are blessed that we are going to have employment, which we have been yearning to see. Our school systems have produced so many graduates, but the graduates have, the graduation has not earned the money. They are sharing with us Waraji somewhere. But with industry, people will earn money whether they went to school or not. Manyiga Chifuba, Abadia Kumanyi, Abasoma, all of us are going here. And we are going to have a second uh, urban center after Kisoro district in this place. Uh, we want you kindly to help us in pacifying the region. We know His Excellency, I was listening and watching uh, Brother Ruto from Kenya. He named our president the grandfather of the presidents and leadership of the region. We want to send you that uh, we are a market, but this market needs peace and stability. We have had a good share with our brothers from Rwanda which I want to report to you that it is improving, but the, the small and medium uh, income earners are not yet well established in Rwanda, though for us we have done it. And again, the Congo crisis. Congo is the largest market you will ever see in this region, and it's coming to East African communities are bracing, but we cannot do it when we have guns around us. You have passed somewhere where you saw a very big group of people called refugees, asylum seekers. And those are the people who are supposed to be in the shops, in the communities, creating opportunities for the products we get from here as our market. So I encourage IGAD, Comesa, East African community, to not sleep on job. Because in my community, when two men quarrel, another man, a third party, will not sleep until these two men agree to live together. So. These organizations, if they cannot pacify the brothers and sisters in Congo, they are also part of the neocolonialism we have seen. They are not serving us anything, and we are very angry with them because they have not touched where we want them to touch to help us be in peace. I want to end our chief guest by telling you the beauty of Kisoro. We are on Goma, uh, Mombasa Goma Highway. And therefore, doing business is two times. One, 
taking finished goods because the roads have been made by His Excellency Yuri Kagutam Seven to the end points of the uh, borders. So we wanted the extension of the road from here to Goma, where we shall just be shooting into a very bigger market again. But the conflicts the other side uh, really disturbing us. Dot services had started, and we had assigned them land on this very land to hold their ma machinery there for a while as they push inside the Congo. So Kisoro is ready for investment, and please help us this road going to Goma work. I heard some of your people in parliament who are making noise, blah, 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 see uh, why are they making road, uh, roads in Congo. Uh, you know, my president is wise. You take, uh, you take a, a road where there is a market. So you want us to say na uh, nothing to nothing, uh, by nothing, through nothing. So we want these roads to go where the market is. And we shall support you, even if it means coming and camping in the, in the parliament. We shall do it. This road must be done if this industrial park must survive and if a bigger market of Congo must come. Leave around other things. Goma Road is necessary. Uh, lastly, I want to tell you we have history. The whole World War was fought and settled here. We were colonized by three countries. Initially, it was German, under German East Africa. Then it, they gave us a mother called Belgium who did nothing to us, and finally we were co-opted by the British protectorate. So this place has never had a permanent colonial master. That's why there, are, there is limited infrastructure except one church called Mutorede, where they established where to pray as they dig down our minerals underground. The rest will depend on His Excellency Yori Kagutam Seven to start serious development in Kisoro. Our colonialists never built us mango, never built us Zambia. For us, we depend on His Excellency Yori Kagutam Seven to start from zero. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we can do better than that. Another round of applause for the LC5 chairman, Mr. Aber Bizimana. Um, our chief guest, uh, uh, Chairman Aber Bizimana told us, the governor, that uh, in Kisoro you don't start and will not finish. You know, he was referring to also to something else which I will not go into here. But uh, when you start here, you must finish. And so he has delegated Mr. Robert Muchiza to ensure that this project is finished. And uh, so they... The good thing and the most fortunate thing is that he comes from here. So they will deal with him at, a, at another level. Um, our chief guest, I want to recognize the different districts represented here. Uh, we have representation uh, from um, uh, Rukunjiri. The Rukunjiri team, if you can stand for recognition, one of the businessmen here, Ambrose Chibuka and Medad Sonko are also here, the Rukunjiri team. We want to thank you for joining us. Uh, our chief guest, we also have Kanungu. The Kanungu LC5 chairman is here. And uh, the, the team from Kanungu is also here with us. Thank you very much. The team from Kabare, and I also know Honorable, Nicholas Kamara, Do, Honorable Dr. Nicholas Kamara, and the Kabare team, uh, Mr. Batuma, he is here, and uh, the team from Kabare, we want to thank you so much uh, for coming. Of course, Kisoro's team is, is much bigger, uh, and I wanted to request uh, the team, the RDC, the, LC, the, the CAO, the district speaker, please stand. The mayor, Kisoro Municipality, Please stand, uh, the, the Xoro team. Let us stand and show that uh, we are very excited to receive uh, the chief guest today here in the industrial and business park. Um, Honorable uh, Minister, uh, we have several members of parliament as I had introduced some, but I want in a very special way to recognize the Honorable uh, Dr. Sababuturo. Please stand for recognition, Honorable Sababuturo. We thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the Honorable Kamara Nizeimana, uh, who is the area member of parliament. We want to thank you so much for joining us. And of course, our very own, the Honorable Sarah Mateche, who is a member of parliament here. Please stand for recognition so your people can receive the Honorable Minister. We also have, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the Honorable uh, Dr. Nicholas Kamara from Kabare and the Honorable uh, Henry Musasizi from Rwanda East. Please stand also for recognition as members of parliament and your other various capacities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we want to let you know, um, our invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, including uh, those of you who are watching us, that uh, we are sharing this conversation on social media. Uh, we are using the hashtag invest in Chigezi, but you're also allowed to use invest in Uganda 
as the other hashtag that uh, Uganda Investment Authority is using. Now that said, I, t I take the pleasure of inviting the Director General um, of uh, Uganda Investment Authority to come and make his remarks. And after that, you can invite the Chairman, and the Chairman knows who they will invite next. So it is easier for me to move the snake. Uh, so I want to start with you, DG. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for the Director General. Thank you, uh, Masters of Ceremonies, uh, Kasumba, Morris, thank you very much. Uh, the Chief Guest, Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Honorable Matia Kasaija, uh, Minister of State for Investment and Privatization, Honorable Evelyn Anite, Minister of State for Youth and Children, Honorable Sarah Mateche, and also a local MP, Honorable Minister of State for Finance, General Duties, Honorable Musa Sizi, also an MP from Chigezi, members of parliament uh, from the Chigezi region, our brothers and sisters. Absolutely, he's one of us. <laughs> our brothers and sisters from DRC and uh, Rwanda, Chairman of the Board, Uganda Investment Authority, Mr. Morrison Wakakamba, our board members here present, Honorable Beatrice Impere, you should stand up and really get recognized, Honorable Beatrice Impere, board member UIA, Honorable Joshua, Mr. Joshua Mutambi, also a board member, Uganda Investment Authority, our MDS heads represented here, I can see our UBOS chairman here and UBOS Deputy Chair, Deputy ED here, Yuri, Executive Director, Professor Kwesiga here, our LC5 chairpersons here present, RDCs, religious leaders, our local leaders, Speaker, Mayor, Deputy Chairperson in Kisoro, our esteemed investors here present from Kigezi, my UIA colleagues here. I think you should stand up. Wherever UIA is, please stand up. I can see a lot of you there. Please, UIA colleagues, thank you for coming. Give them a hand. Our sponsors, Lagan Management. Wouldn't have done this without you. Uh, you know there's a squeeze, and uh, you came in very handy uh, to support us here. NBS and UBC, Morris was very, uh, uh, very modest. They are doing this for free, live. NBS live, UBC, it's free here. We're only giving Morris uh, some water and the food from Kisoro on our Irish potatoes. But thank you very much, uh, Kalisa and your team and UBC for doing this for us. Good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon, everyone. Fantastic. Uh, our chief guest, let me start by thanking you uh, uh, for honoring our invitation for this first ever Kigezi Investment and Free Zone Summit 2022. We, we don't take it for granted, Honorable. You have many things to do. You have taken time and come here to be with us. So thank you very much, Honorable Kasaija. Thank you. Uh, UIA conceptualized this summit uh, as a platform to promote investment potential in Kigezi uh, and the Kigezi region, districts including Kabale, Rukunjiri, Kanungu, and Kisoro. We hope uh, in particular, uh, that this summit will showcase the investment profiles in this region uh, uh, and showcase them to our domestic and foreign investors, particularly from the ones neighboring us. We also hope to launch uh, this industrial park. Honorable Minister, we hope you will launch this park today. Uh, uh, this is a magnificent location. I don't know when you are traveling, if you are looking through the hills, if you look beyond those, uh, they are not hills, they are mountain ranges. That is Rwanda bordering the park on one side. To your left, to my right, beyond the eucalyptus trees, that is DRC. This industrial park is bordered on both sides by two countries. What a magnificent location, Honorable. I think I'm very sure whoever uh, sets up industries here uh, is a fantastic place to work. Uh, 
the, the kind of scenery, the weather. The every, I, I've seen uh, what Kasumba has been posting. I'm sure he's going to request that NBS puts their headquarters here when we, when we do this. Uh, Honorable Minister, our chief guest, in his book titled A History of Kigezi in Southwest Uganda, Donald Denon says, if Uganda is a part of Africa, then Chigezi is the part of Uganda. Huh? Chigezi is absolutely the part of Uganda. Describes our beautiful mountains, our lakes, our curved rugged slopes. You've been driving, honorable you flew, but I'm sure from up there you saw them. Huh? Our fertile plains, the region is endowed with the expansive blue lakes, uh, isolated peaks in Virunga Mountains, you can see that. Uh, apart from the magnificent scenery uh, in Chigezi, it's also the epicenter of tourism in Uganda, our chief guest. Attractions ranging from the gorilla trekking in Bwindi impenetrable forest, uh, trekking tree climbing lions in Ishasha, across uh, in the sector around Queen Elizabeth, the Ishasha sector, there are tree climbing lions there. Golden monkey trekking in Mugahinga, Gorilla Na uh, National Park, bird watching in a Chua forest, hiking in Virunga volcanoes in uh, Mugahinga Gorilla National Park, and canoeing on Lake Mutanda. Really, there is a lot uh, uh, of the tourism potential here. But Kigezi goes beyond tourism, uh, honorable chief guest. Uh, it does not end in the tourism hotspots. We are endowed with very fertile soils here to support commercial farming. Tea, coffee, I know the best coffee in Mombasa and tea is from Chisoro. They use it to blend all the other coffees all over, but the best, you see the mountains, you see the, the, the acidic soils from here, really gives a, a, a Chisoro tea and coffee a very sp a specific flavor. So it is in high demand. Irish potatoes, we have someone here who is a, a, a huge uh, uh, honorable minister. He was telling us he gets a lot of his potatoes from here. Bananas, peas, sweet potatoes, there is a lot. But also our mineral base. Kigezi has iron ore, wolfram, tin, gold. There is a lot here. So we need to fully exploit these endowments to create wealth, uh, Chief Guest. As His Excellency, the President of Uganda recently mentioned, prosperity does not come from having natural resources, uh, fertile soils alone. We need to create wealth here. Uh, prosperity is a result of wealth creation. Indeed, we believe that viable wealth creation can only be done through attracting investments in the five core areas. One is commercial agriculture. How can we go up that value chain to ensure uh, 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 we add value to our agriculture, tourism, manufacturing, ICT, and services? Indeed, Kigezi has this. Tourism, manufacturing, agriculture, we are very well endowed. Uh, UIA, uh, Chief Guest recognizes that Chigezi cannot thrive on its own. We need a market for our products and services. In this regard, it's best that Chigezi and the industrial park that we put here targets regional markets. Uh, recently, DRC joined the East African community. By a stroke of a pen, 80 million people joined us, quota free, tariff free. By a stroke of a pen, we now have a market of 300 million people uh, in the East African community. Very soon, uh, Chief Guest Somalia is going to join uh, the East African community. So the market is going to grow further. We have the common market of East and Southern Africa. Quarter free, tariff free, 600 million people. You know, uh, Chief Guest, about the Africa continental free trade area, 1.3 billion people, 3.4 trillion GDP. Remember, the markets are there. Uh, the markets for our products that we are going to produce in this industrial park are there. So we want to encourage investors to invest in value addition for agriculture and raw materials. We no longer want to export jobs. Yeah? We don't want to uh, get the raw iron ore, export it to another country. They build this, they do the steel and send it to us. You are giving them jobs. Let's do that here and keep the jobs in Uganda. Let's have the, the finished products done here and exploit these vast markets. I know His Excellency, Honorable Minister, are working to ensure that our market access uh, is unquestioned. So what we shall do, 
uh, with your leadership, uh, uh, Chief Guest, is we build the infrastructure here. Uh, World-class infrastructure. World-class roads, world-class sewage treatment plant. You know now this is a very scenic tourist place. If we bring industries here, we have to ensure that the waste treatment is world-class. We need to, uh, Mr. Chairman, as you said, the environment has to be kept as scenic as it is. So we look for a very smart green industrial park here. Internet cabling, we shall bring that here, uh, Chief Guest. Uh, electricity to add value to our products here. And land will be given free for investors in this industrial park. His Excellency ordered us land for investors should be free. We bring the infrastructure. As long as you, you show us the potential uh, 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 to invest, you'll get the land free and all the services. So UIA, Honorable Minister, we take our mandate of coordinating, encouraging, promoting, and facilitating investment in Uganda very seriously. So we shall deliver for our domestic and foreign investors. I, I would like to call them international investors. They are not foreign. They are part of us, our domestic and international investors, a wide range of fiscal and non-fiscal uh, incentives. We will give, uh, for example, some of them 100% tax exemption on agro-processing. I don't know if our friend who is doing the chips here has accessed the 100% on agro-processing. Please. Our team is here, one stop center is there, go and get a license and let's start talking. Secondly, uh, uh, access to our parks, we said with 50,000 US dollars minimum for a domestic investor, you can access land in our industrial parks. But plant and machinery, I'm very sure one of our investors who made these chips here imported his plant and machinery and paid tax. But if you are registered with the Uganda Investment Authority, have our license, your plant and machinery for value addition is tax-free. So I encourage you, really, to look at uh, this opportunity. All the investors who are coming here ensure that you get our license, the one-stop center. We shall ensure that uh, you get these benefits. And they are, ex they, they, they are more, actually, for domestic investors than they are uh, for, for, for the, the threshold is lower for our domestic partners. So really, think about it. Join us. But UIA will go ahead and prepare feasibility studies and bankable projects that will be accessed free for investors. There is that book Morris showed us around. One of our jobs really is let us go, use our government resources, prepare bankable projects, feasible projects, with a clear return on investments. If you have $100,000, the return on investment is five years in honey processing, we do that for you and give it to you free. Uh, and we go across the board, even if you have 50, 100, $200,000, a million, 10 million. We shouldn't leave anyone uh, uh, behind. So instead of putting up all these very huge uh, uh, malls, come and we give you a bankable project and manufacture and access these markets uh, in the region. Uh, Chief Guest, Honorable Minister, I would like to thank you again, really. Not just for coming here, but for the leadership at Ministry of Finance and uh, Honorable Anite. Honorable Anita, Chief Guest, for the laser focus on industrialization in Uganda. I know I knock on your door every time, but your door is always open uh, for us, and I can see the focus on ensuring jobs for this country and industrialization happen. So thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Can we uh, have a very serious clap? I'm going to start, please. Honorable Minister, Ministers, thank you very much uh, uh, for that. But I'd also like to thank the government, His Excellency, the President, particularly for securing the person and property in Uganda. That is very critical. At the end of the day, investors are people. They will bring their families here. So the security of the person is very important. Uganda is the friendliest country in the region. That's also the safest, in my view. Uh, uh, so the security of person and property is very clear. You investors are people. You can come with your families. Come here, you are safe. So thank you very much. It's excellent. But also, the investments you're going to put here, property, the security of property is guaranteed here. We invest without any, uh, uh, any issue. So for that, I want to thank uh, specifically here, the RDC and your security team for what has gone behind this to ensure everything happens very well. Security team has done very well. RDC, stand up, RDC. Lieutenant Kano Kafureka, you are there, sitting at the back, but I know you are coordinating. The DPC, Mr. Musi, where are you? 
thank you very much, really, for ensuring security of person and property. And I'm sure when we leave, when our industries come here, that is going to continue to be the case. So as investors, don't worry about security. Don't worry about anything. Everything is sorted. Let me also thank the local leadership of Kisoro. Uh, of course, our, our, our elders. Muzei Mateche has gone, and I've seen Muzei Buchanayandi here. Uh, please, Muzei, I know you can't stand. The former Minister of Agriculture, Muzei Buchanayandi, those are our leaders. Uh, when, I, when we came to sell the idea of industrial park development, we went there first to these leaders, and uh, really it was quite easy for them to buy that. Our MPs uh, from Kisoro and the region, thank you very much. LC5 chairman, speaker, local council, local leaders, really for embracing industrialization. You see, when we came the last time led by Honorable Anite to, when Kisoro told us we have 620 acres, I'm also from here, it's like about 620 acres in these hills. When you're driving from uh, Kavale, coming down, going, where are these 620 acres going to be? And we drove into this place and looked at 620 acres in these hills. And the leadership has, has zoned it for industrialization. They can do a lot of things here, plant, uh, agriculture, or whatever. They've said, let's do this for agriculture. In the, I mean for industrialization in this region. For me, that's an absolutely huge buy-in from the, from the community. So I want to thank uh, our, our, our local leaders. Please, can, you have a, can we have a big clap for them? Thank you for local leadership for this. And I know the industrial park will not be uh, uh, will be with you here. You're going to have a very big part to play. Our different investors are going to come globally from the region. Actually, we also encourage our, our partners in DRC, in, in Rwanda, come and put an industry here. Why not? Uh, so that uh, and we, we know you will welcome them in our normal way in Kisoro. So really, let me thank the sponsors again. Lagan Management, thank you very much. Uh, uh, NBS again, uh, UBC, I thank you very much uh, uh, for, your, for your support. And uh, of course, the Minister of Finance, uh, led by Honorable Kasaija, and represented here, uh, Honorable Anite and Honorable Musasizu. Thank you very much uh, for that. Our organizers, UIA, led by our Director of Investment and, uh, Promotion and Business Development, Martin Mohanji, you please stand. Thank you very much for your support. I know I've been, we have been pushing quite a lot, but I thank you. You can see the results. So, Honorable Minister, uh, guests, allow me to wish you all very fruitful deliberations and, and a safe journey back home. But I, I pray that you spend another at least two days here. I'm going to ask the board chair to allow me to go. Honorable Minister, let me go back on Wednesday. I need really to go and see these hills. Eh? So I'll see you on Wednesday, Honorable Minister, in Kampala. And I encourage all of you, don't just go away from here. Visit Kisoro. See what this region has for you. So I thank you very much for God and my country. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Uh, let me take this singular role, really, to invite the chairman of the board of Uganda Investment Authority, Mr. Morrison Rakakamba, to come and address us. Thank you. Soro Hill delivered very tall people. I sometimes get very embarrassed uh, to even take a photograph with this gentleman. <laughs> and you could see, yeah, you can see that uh, he's very much feeling at home, very nostalgic, and he wants to stay. <laughs> uh, our chief guest, the Honorable Minister of Finance and Economic Development, uh, the Honorable Matia Kasaija Akiki, you're very welcome to Chigizi. The Honorable Ministers present on the front row, um, the members of Parliament from the Chigizi region, the Chairman of C5 and your Council, the RDC and your team, security and others. My colleagues, uh, the board members who have been fully introduced. Um, 
the Director General of Uganda Investment Authority and uh, your team of directors and, and other staff members who have made this happen. The business community, who are the most really important people uh, that brought us here, because the actualization of this park is going to be driven by the business people, the people with money. You're very, very welcome to Chibaya and the community. R let me on the, ins on the onset say that I believe that two things, two things since the creation of this republic called Uganda have really happened. The first one is the National Resistance Movement Revolution that delivered peace and security. And I know very well that our chief guest was very much part of coining of that revolution and executing it. The second thing that I also want to state that has happened to this country is the NRM-led industrial revolution. Because it is that revolution that is going to deliver prosperity for the people of Uganda, the people of region, and the people of Africa. So therefore, like many others, I believe that put precisely the two tenets of the National Resistance Movement ideology, it is security and prosperity. So I thank President General Yoel Museveni for the thoughtful leadership consistency that is delivering us to where we are moving. That's why we are in Chavaya. So my brother, Chairman LC5, Nduguzuru Pai, the revolution is here. I also want to thank the elders and the leaders and the community of Chisoro for preserving this land, 620 acres in this land-constrained region. Thank you so much. I want to believe that, and I strongly believe that this, this summit also signifies the commitment of the NRM government to private sector development and it indicates renewed focus to further increase the promotion of Uganda's abundant investment potential. It also enhances the partnership between the Uganda Investment Authority and Ugandan business community to ensure that we invest and export from here and make more money. The Uganda Investment Authority is therefore keen to promote Chigezo region to the regional investors and the business community to invest in our economy, specifically in agriculture and agrovalue addition, education, infrastructure, ICT, tourism-related infrastructure, and other activities. And the region already uh, is a very, very strong uh, production area for coffee, tea, processed fruits, Irish, grains, fish, handcrafts, among others. And, and I know uh, that this function is being broadcast on TV so, and on Zoom. So clearly, uh, the chief guest, the whole world is watching Chisoro, is watching Chivaya. So that's why I wanted to kind of broaden it a bit, speak about Uganda. And say number one, Uganda has pro proven itself to be highly stable over the past 30 years under HE President Museveni, and Uganda continues to experience clear political stability, democratic progress, and economic growth. And this is not, these are not just my words. The sources from the US Department of Commerce which, which also states that Uganda is fully peaceful and secure border to border. So for all the investors all over the world, wherever you are, this is the Uganda where you need to come and invest. Number two, and also according to the World Bank, Uganda has one of the lowest crime rates and most stable inflation in East Africa that averages around 4 to uh, 5%. Three, Uganda is also the most open economy to foreign direct investment 
within the East African community. There are no restrictions to ownership of investments, movement of capital, or foreign exchange. Foreign direct investment track record shows net FDI inflows of nearly over 1 billion a year on average. And the source for this is the World Bank. Number four, Uganda also has excellent working and living environment. It is rated as the third most welcoming country in the world and fourth best country in the whole world to visit. Uganda has excellent housing and international schools and lowest cost of living in the region. And this is the benchmark from Financial Times Limited. So if you are an investor, you can bring here your family, meaning that your kids will go to the best schools, will have good hospitals, so it is the place to be. Uganda also has the fastest growing workforce in the region and flexible labor regulations, a key advantage for companies investing in labor-intensive operations. The average annual growth is at 3.9, and the average labor cost for unskilled and skilled population, uh, excluding social security costs, is 440, which is the lowest uh, in the East African community region. And, and, and you see, for, for also for Uganda, why investors like it so much is that Uganda's young people are not just skilled, they are, they are also trainable. Even if they don't know about science, about machine work, because they speak English, they studied mathematics, our curriculum is very good and transformed. Once they are, you know, they are trained quickly and they get the job done. And the property costs in Uganda are competitive with industrial shared monthly rents ranging 46 USD per square meter. And we have a large and growing domestic market of 40 million people. We are strategically located in the heart of Africa with a combined market population of over 700 million in East African community and commercial region. And recently, as you are aware, the East African community will come DRC into its growing family, giving investors in Uganda access to new markets, opportunities for growth, and the EAC now offers a combined market-driven economy of 226 million people and a GDP of 243 billion United States dollars. And Uganda has also ratified the African continental free trade area, removing barriers inter- and intra-Africa trade. The large continental market access is supported by access to external markets under special agreements with over 6,000 products eligible for U.S. markets under the rubric of the African Growth and Opportunities Act, commonly known as AGOA, and quota-free and tax-free access to all products into the, European, uh, into the European Union under what we call the EBA, everything else but arms. If you are not exporting, you know, Galashinovs or guns to Europe, it means everything else quota-free as long as you meet the quality. I have seen uh, my friend, uh, the Honorable Msekura here, who is the chairman of Uganda National Bureau of Standards. As long as you meet uh, Msekura's standards, Ms where are you? Stand up for recognition. That's the chairman of the board of uh, Uganda National Bureau of Standards. So good to see you here. So to our valued investors, uh, they begin their journey an investment license. And through this license, investors gain access to incentives to assist them commence operations in the country. They include provision of land uh, in the industrial parks, like the Director General mentioned, generous and competitive tax incentives, and coordinated institutional support from over 13 government agencies at Uganda Investment Authority's one-stop center, and most of them have been introduced. The Director General already talked about the tax rebates that we have that are very generous compared to, compared to the region. So therefore, I want to say that while investment, while investing in Uganda, we are guided by what we call a triple bottom line. And that triple bottom line, it is the people, we are focused on people, we are focused on profit, and we are focused on the planet. So whatever we do is environmentally, we, we pursue environmental integrity into our investments. So this is why all the investments you see around the, around the country, that's why NEMA, they all have environmental impact assessments. Whether it is in the oil sector, whether it is in the mineral sector, everything we do has environmental integrity because we have got uh, credible, uh, we believe in the protection of the planet for today and the future. Therefore, on behalf of the Investment Authority, 
Allow me to once again thank all of you for honoring our invita invita invitation uh, and be part of Chigezi Industrial Park and Free Zone Summit. Thank you so much. Morris, am I supposed to invite somebody? Oh, it is my profound pleasure, therefore, to invite the, the new Christian Mama Chivaya, the Minister of Investment and Privatization, the Honorable Every Nanite. Thank you, the Chairman, Uganda Investment Authority, the Minister of Finance, Planning, and Economic Development, my Senior Minister, Honorable Matia Kasaija, my father, and the Chief Guest of the Chigezi Investment and Free Zones Summit, my colleague, Minister, of state for finance in charge general duties and also the area representative minister because of all the ministers in Chigezi he is the only one who has been here who is present I want to ask my brother and friend Honorable Henry Musasizi to take that podium Honorable Musasizi Let's clap for him. Thank you very, very much for honoring our invitation. My sister, the Minister of State for Gender, Labor, and Social Development, but particularly for Youth and Children, Honorable Sarah Mateke, thank you very, very much for honoring our invitation. And please just go near your brother there because you're going to speak before I speak, actually. The members of Parliament, from Chigezi. Honorable Sarah, I would like you to take this chair near me here. Uh, the area host member of parliament of Chibaya, Honorable Anitamana Kamaramana. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Come and take your seats. I want all the area members of parliament, please just come up. All area members of parliament, if you know that you're called honorable MP, please come up. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Honorable Minister of Ethics and Integrity and former Minister of Ethics and Integrity. I called you honorable Minister of Ethics and Integrity because through you I was able to realize and know what ethics and integrity is with your very wonderful English, soft-spoken voice, very articulate man. Please come and take your, your seat, Honorable, and thank the people of Kisoro for returning him to Parliament. The former Minister of Agriculture, please come up. Thank you very, very much. You have microphones next to you. I just want to recognize you and ask you to stand. Thank you very, very much. Um, the mayor of Kisoro, please stand up. I want to thank you in a very, very special way. Actually, he calls himself the governor. What is the governor again? The chairman, LC5, the governor. Thank you very, very much for hosting us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I also want in a very special way recognize the chairman of Uganda Investment Authority. They the, the Director General of Uganda Investment Authority, the board members of Uganda Investment Authority. If you're a board member of Uganda Investment Authority, please stand up. Thank you very, very much for supporting Uganda Investment Authority and industrializing Uganda. I, I want to recognize the, all the staff of Uganda Investment Authority. You are the reason that I shine. Please stand up. With your Director General, the DG, all the staff of Uganda Investment Authority, I recognize you in your capacity. Our esteemed investors, just for the chief guest, because it is an accountability program for me, because he is my immediate supervisor, Andrew Matia Kasaja, I want to tell him that the investors are in the room. Please just stand up for recognition. And the world sees that you're here. All our investors, please do stand up. 
Very, very good. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Matia, I do know that you have to leave before we will have all the other presentations. So allow me to recognize uh, all the MDAs because we have Yuri here. Yuri, please, would you like to stand up just for recognition? We have UI, UNBS. UNBS, please stand up. We have URA. URA is there, Honorable Minister. They will make presentation. Here we mean business. Uh, we have uh, Uganda Electricity Transform, UETCL. UETCL, please stand up. Very good. We do have um, IRA, the regulator. Honorable Minister, the reason they're there. Very good. Thank you very much. Engineer Ziria has sent a representative. Honorable Minister, why I want you to see these agencies and MDAs is because you are not going to attend the presentation. However, we will have a detailed government strategy of how we intend to develop this industrial park. And I will be speaking shortly to that, uh, but as I make Honorable Minister to speak before I make my speech and eventually invite you, I want to ask Lagan Dot, Lagan Management, actually, Lagan Management, please do stand up for recognition because I want Honorable Matia to see you. Senior, why I want to introduce them is that Lagan Management is going to come and immediately from tomorrow on Monday, start the feasibility study of this industrial park. And Lagan Management will not only do feasibility study of the industrial park, but also the road that stretches from the main up to this park. They will do that and develop that infrastructure, thanks to His Excellency General Yori Kabuta Museveni. Please do sit again through uh, UK Finance, and we will come to you because you're the one in charge of the budget and the loan, and borrowing will come to, to Ministry of Finance. I sit in finance with you, but this time asking you that you should approve the loan from UK Ex Export Finance to be able to finance the infrastructure development of this industrial park. So everything is in the pipeline. Before I deliver my speech, allow me to ask my colleague minister uh, to say something, and then I'll ask the honorables that I've asked in front here to say one or two words before I invite Honorable Matia. Thank you, my sister, Honorable Anite, our senior minister, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Just a few words. Number one is to welcome my boss to the region where I come from. I am happy to see him here. I'm sure this is my first time to host him ever since I started working with him at the ministry. Honorable Matia Kasaija, you are most welcome to Chigezi region. I come from just near here, the next district. Rubanda district. And uh, I work as a state minister for general duties since, since June 2011. No, since June 2021. 2011 is when I became an MP. That's why it stuck into my mind. One point to make. I am responsible together with the team under his leadership. We are responsible for building a strong economic base. And a strong economic base is that economy which is able to respond to the key challenges affecting our, our population, particularly job creation. To achieve this, we must create an enabling business environment. We must create an operating environment which is favorable for our investors. And this is the reason why we are here. Anita will tell you more. We, are, we took a decision to establish industrial parks in the 18 sub-regions we have in the country with the view of taking services nearer to the people and also nearer to the markets. I am glad that today we are here to commission the Chigezi Chisoro Industrial Park. 
what will this industrial park bring? That is what you should grab for. The industrial park here will bring investors. Once the investors come here, they will eat our food, they will employ our children, we shall put the necessary infrastructure in terms of roads, in terms of electricity, in terms of water, and the security of the area will also be enhanced. I'm sure once all this comes, our people will be able to produce goods, to sell here, and also in other markets like Congo and others. You have heard we have uh, a component of free zones. The free zones component focuses largely on production for export. Whereas the industrial park will produce for our domestic market and foreign, but the component of free zones will enable production of our goods for export to other countries. The people who will be producing here will have incentives. I am a specialist in taxation. I always focus on tax incentives. The people who will be producing in this industrial park will have enormous tax incentives as we as clearly stipulated in our tax laws and as we continue to, 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 to improve them from time to time. Lastly, three points I'd like to make. Last week when I addressed the MPs on uh, finance, finance budget and national economy committee in Entebbe Free Zones Park, which we're establishing, I told them three things. Number one is that if we are to achieve the investment environment we want, we must work towards reducing the cost of money. The cost of money for investment should have a favorable interest rate. And we want to believe we have UDB in this room. Yes. By the time we end this engagement to you, the opportunities they offer, we offer through UDB. We should have an environment where we have the free, not free, but cheap cost of electricity. The president has already directed us, we are working with him, to see that this place has a 132 kV power line, which will come, which will bring the, the cheapest electricity that these investors will want. Not only strong, but also we shall, as much as possible, make it cheap to be affordable for the investors. Number three is the cost of transport. The transport cost, as much as possible, must be cheap. We are looking at various options. Yes, we have already done a lot for this area, but we think the cheapest transport should be railway and water transport. Once we produce goods here, these goods will be able to move. We are already in advanced stages of establishing the iron ore factory in Moko. All these will need transport facilitation, which is cheaper to enable, to enable the investors to do business and be able to leverage on the, on the cost I have talked about. With this few, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you once again for coming in big numbers. I want to thank my senior minister for sacrificing time out of his busy schedule. And I want to thank my sister, Honorable Vanite, 
for passionately, passionately working on the portfolio of investment. Thank you. Actually, it is her brand at the ministry. Mm. We know when we talk about the portfolio of investment, <laughs> Anita is our brand. <laughs> and you. I really want to thank her for passionately building this brand and also bringing these investors. When I look at the kind of people who are here, you can't imagine they can come to this bush, Honorable Minister. <laughs> it is really amazing. Thank you, Honorable Vanity. Thank you. There is a group this side. When you are introducing categories, this group does not stand. Mm. <laughs> I feel we should know uh, which group is this. But when I look into them, as a leader in this place, there are many familiar faces. We want to recognize the business community from this region, uh, Honorable Minister, can they stand for recognition? The business community from, from Chigeze sub-region. And in the Honorable, group- Honorable Minister, you may want to do a translation. The only time they stand up is when we speak in that wonderful language. So that young lady there usually does that so that we can see them. Please, can you translate what the minister has said so that we see all of them stand? <laughs> but, uh, they know money more than, they know money. Not all of them stood on the minister. Mm. That's why I want all of them to stand. They know money language more than the English. And in a special <laughs> way before she, Atakaga, Otaka Gambiro Chiga, Rufumbira, Harimu Siriri Mujenye is our, is our chairman for the Entrepreneurs League, NRM Entrepreneurs League for, Chiso, for Rwanda District. So Chogambamu. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Wakoze Minister, thank you very much. Yalari Kufugango, Abashora Mari, Abachuruzi, Mbomuri Chijezi, Nachana Bahano Muriki Soro, Kukoni Tukwebga Tujie Gutanjira Na Kubaka Hano, no kwa tezi mbele mjubu churuzi, ya laba bjie ngo mohaguru ke mngese, baba lewe, yuko tulike pebo, na angasi yuko dushobo, yeko tujie kuza na hani terambe. Aba churuzi ba kisoro, na kigezi yose. Babi rese. Aba churuzi mngese. Aba churuzi, prime minister wa kingdomo, na ababonye mngese, mtukwale mozesi. Aba na aba churuzi ba hano muri kisoro, kandi... Nadeva Naba, Honorable Odo, Nabo Naba Naba Neva 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 Korea of Jobusho was the Kuri, Kabare, Naruchiga, Narubanda, Nimemeva Equisha, Marik Sor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I then just, Honorable Minister, would I like to ask you to sit next to your sister there, but as I asked the Honorable Minister to Honorable Minister Sarah, the Minister of State for Youth and Children, to take the podium and say something. Uh, I know my senior minister. You only gave me one hour before you can take off. I'm going to make the rest of our colleagues to say one, one, not just one minute, one minute, and then I'll invite you to speak. Is that okay, sir? Thank you. Honorable Sarah. Uh, thank you, my colleague, uh, Honorable Anite Evelyn. Uh, our chief guest, Honorable Matia Kasaija, the Minister of Finance, Planning, and Economic Development. Welcome to Kisoro. My colleagues, honorable ministers, honorable members of parliament, uh, heads of different MDAs, uh, the leaders from Kigezi, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The name is Nirabashiti Sara Mateke. Most of them fear pronouncing that long name. Uh, and normally shortened to the two names. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Kisoro District, the most beautiful district in the world that God created with all the time and he designed it. Uh, my chairman said that he dumped, he did not dump. God decided to design it so that you can see the art in Kisoro. And I want to welcome you to breathe the fresh air, the fresh air in Kisoro. I want to thank my colleague, Honorable Anite, 
When she came here, the last time we were here, I couldn't imagine that what she was speaking could really come to be true. I want to thank you. Thank you. Uh, for really now uh, making the dream come true in Kisoro district. And I would request Mashi. I was telling her that uh, Kisoro, we are proud uh, of being NRM and supporters of NRM. When we are here in Kisoro, we sleep while our colleagues are running. So for us, we really know the meaning of security. Imagine you are just here, others are running. For us, we are sleeping. Eh? So if we don't really appreciate NRM, we shall be very wrong. What are we looking at as Kisoro district and what we think we are going to benefit from the industrial park? One, we believe that our raw materials are going to be used. Secondly, the jobs and when it comes to the Ministry of Youth, Honorable Anite was in that ministry before I went to that ministry. She knows what it means when every youth is coming to your door and they want jobs. I believe that this is going to create enough jobs both for the skilled and unskilled. And of course we shall improve the standard of living for our people in Kisoro. Uh, we shall not all be in the industrial park. I believe that others are going to benefit Indirectly, abachuru zibari hano. You forgive me and I short wave. The question has got to push up because of factory. Na bonya na abachuru zibabu na Ghana. Na bonya na abachuru zibu mutauni. The question has got to push up because of factory. Na bonya na abachuru zibabu na Ghana. Na bonya na abachuru zibu mutauni. The question has got to push up because of factory. Na bonya na abachuru zibabu na Ghana. Na bonya na abachuru zibu mutauni. The question has got to push up because of factory. Na bonya na abachuru zibabu na Ghana. Na bonya na abachuru zibu mutauni. The question has got to push up because of factory. We want to thank you for loving Kisoro. Of course, that road coming to Kisoro was another gateway for us to reach where we have reached. And we want to appreciate and thank the government of Uganda and especially our president, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. I want to tell the investors that investing in Kisoro, you will not be wrong and you will not go wrong. I was telling the neighbors I was seated with, starting from the word salt, you need to just do a feasibility study and you go to the border of DRC, just here, a few meters. Just sit and watch and see the, the trade that is taking everything, starting from salt to other things. Everything is coming from Uganda going to DRC. I believe when you invest here, you will not go wrong. And I believe. Uh, when the industries are created here, the proximity of one industry benefits the next. The unfinished product of a specific sector can be a raw material for the other. And hence these industries will help us to reduce on transportation that my colleague has been talking about, and of course, implementation costs. I want to appreciate the gentleman who was here chief guest before you came, when he said that Kisoro produces the best Irish potatoes. That is the whole truth. If you have not tested, Honorable Minister, just tell me and I carry a sack for you in the morning, <laughs> and then you test. We have the best Irish potatoes. Maybe the biggest challenge that we are having, I don't know whether the narrow people are here. Is there anybody from narrow? We are requesting for seed foundation seed so that we can produce better. Uh, the Chiniji he was talking about, my former minister of agriculture knows very well that uh, of late the Chiniji we are producing is not the best. We need the foundation seed so that we can produce the best. Of late there is another one I even saw which is even sweeter than Chiniji called Point. I don't know where they get those names from. Uh, but I believe if we work with NARO, uh, we'll be able to get the best seed. Honorable Chief Guest and the investors, I want to inform you that people in Kisoro are very hard working. There is enough labor. We'll not need to go and look for labor elsewhere. My, my colleague was telling me that you people, you work, even work in the stones. I said here, we were gifted by God 
you plant a bean in the stone mm -hmm. and tomorrow you will eat. Mm -hmm. Am I lying? Those who come from Kisoro know. And uh, before I wind up, I would want to take this opportunity to recognize the civil servants. Mm -hmm. The civil servants from different districts. I saw the cow of the cow of Rwanda, Alex Quizera. I don't know whether others are also here. We also have civil servants from Kisoro district. If they are here, please you stand up. The technical people, I saw the cow of Kisoro who presented. I saw the district engineer, uh, uh, the commercial officer, the town clerk. We appreciate you for coming here. I cannot live here without also introducing the politicians from Kisoro. I saw the district councillors here, councillors from Bunagana Town Council. Please stand up for recognition. I saw here the district councillors. Mm, uh -huh, the speaker of the district is there. There is one who has refused to stand up, Agaba and Machari. I think they are not district councillors. But councillors, Bajisoro, Muhaguru, Kenawano, Bajero, Muba, Agaba, Nesendavazi. So don't hide. I know you all. Thank you for coming. Uh, stop being shy. When you're a councillor, you're a councillor. You will move to another level with time. Uh, I'll just leave this for you. By the way, so here even the commissioner from prisons, Mutukwari Hida Bisanga, you're welcome. And I know that you're a very serious investor. You're going to invest here. Thank you so much for coming. I can only leave this word for you. Uh, I think the power to do something of value, whether the result is good, is a good thing or a bad thing, depends on how it is used. But the power is to value it. Thank you so much, and may God bless you. For investors, I want to assure you that Kisoro is the most safe, the most beautiful. We have the labor. Please come and invest. You will not get it wrong. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Honorable Sarah Mateke, the Minister of State for Children and Youth. Please clap for her. Give her a bigger <laughs> hand clap. So, Honorable Minister, the Chief Guest, I'm going to give our senior leaders in this region, just one minute to say hello and tell us how prepared they are, and I give my speech and invite you. Uh, we we'll start with the most senior, and that is the Minister Emeritus, Emeritus for Agriculture. who retired, then joined uh, Parastatos, retired, and we came to cabinet minister, retired. <laughs> so I'm um, double retired. Now, I want to share with you the, the little experience I have, that I'm a small investor in Ixoro here. I have 60 acres of tea, but I'm not making money out of that in a real sense, because I would have wished to add value to that tea. And there are numerous crops grown here, starting from coffee, ice potatoes, beans, onions, you name it. All of them have commercial value if only, if only you know what to do. And at the moment, they're not paying the owners. The only people benefit by that are the middlemen buying and selling those commodities. So when I heard about the investment in agriculture, I was extremely delighted because this is the way to go to develop this area and the country at large. I was able to get to our embassy here 
And I think some of them are in two. It's a good process. But we need more of those plants. Uh, milk is being processed here. Irish potato factory exists, but it's not functioning properly. But that's a simple matter, it's an administrative matter which can be sorted out. All and all, since I'm expected not to take much time, I thank all of you who have organized this meeting, and I encourage all people here to invest in whatever they can, particularly agriculture and other industries. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. The Minister of Agriculture Emeritus, thank you for looking very stunning even in retirement. That means that my retirement people will look as well. I'm hopeful. Uh, we want to now ask the former Minister of uh, Ethics and Integrity, and now the Member of Parliament, to say something. Thank you very much, uh, MC, Honourable Minister, the Chief Guest, and all of you in your respective uh, uh, titles and uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I really want to say two things. The first one is to say God has remembered this part of this country. And uh, the potential to revolutionary see a new district is incredible. And so we want to thank God for that. But also, let my Madam Chair, uh, MC, let me say this, that Africa, is the only region in the world with the kind of resources no other part of the world has. But Africa is the poorest. Those who don't have what we have, we depend on them. They take our resources, use them, and give us a little bit of what they have made out of our resources. I am hoping that this development will begin to change that shameful situation where we who are in this part of the world are dependent on others. That must stop and I want to appeal to you to do all we can to make sure we get out of this state of dependency that we continue to see. I want to thank the Uganda Investment Authority for this amazing gift, the President indeed ministers and all of you who are going to invest in this uh, part of the world to ensure that our people do live more decent than they have Thank you. We would ask the member of parliament from Tigezi to also uh, say hello. Honorable, I am ashamed that I have not Nicholas. Uh, I, Honorable, I am ashamed that I have not crammed your name because I am busy in the industrializing the country. Oh, thank you so much, Honorable Minister. I meet and the, the chief guest from the Passage in Sensia. I know it's coming back. Honorable Ministers, the MPs, the IOF, the Committee of Political Leaders, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very excited to be here today. people how much it would make a difference here and wh how uh, a good investment would be. Secondly, I want to say that as the members of parliament from Kigezi, definitely we shall support this venture in any make sure that we get uh, as much as possible genuine investors, not investors who will come here uh, promising heaven on earth, and finally they are asking government now to give them money. That one we should now be very careful and fight it. 
The second thing as parliamentarians and Ugandans that we should fight is uh, that we should have a brand of our genuine crops. Because I have, uh, I've not traveled so much like the Minister of Investment, but uh, I've traveled somehow, and I've not found anywhere where you have tasty pineapples, tasty Irish potatoes, tasty sweet potatoes like those of Uganda. We must fight genetically modified crops and we maintain our crops. I have also seen a very good potential here in stones. There is a lot of stone, there is a lot, there are a lot of stones here, and I think we can actually use them for so, so many things. One of them we can crush them, secondly we can use them for houses, third I think somehow the cement can come out. And lastly, I have seen the, the bankable projects that, are, that have been forwarded by, by the Uganda Investment Authority. I hope you can also remember the cottage industries. I don't want to say much. I want to say Uganda is the best country for those who don't know. But Kigezi is the best area and the best region. Please come and invest in Kigezi for God and my country. I want to thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Nicholas. I've known your name. And one thing we have in common is that you are in the gateway of Chigezi sub-region, I'm at the gate of West Nile. Thank you. <laughs> uh, now I want to give the opportunity for, Hon for Honorable Kamara, who is also a local investor. He's also Kamara. Right? Yes, <laughs> please, Honorable. I, like, I know that you only like to speak while standing because you'll dance a little bit. So we are allowed to make you to speak. Um, our chief guest. Honorable Muzei Matia Kasaja, Honorable Ministers, my colleagues, members of Parliament, uh, my brothers and sisters who are here, everybody in his, respect, his or her respective dignity. I want to thank you, our guest of honor, to come here in Ixoro, and I'm glad to tell you that I am the happiest person today to host you here and hosting all of these investors and all of you. Let me request everybody we clap for our people and really we thank them for coming. <laughs> Honorable Minister, I want to thank in a special way my sister Anita Mana. When she came here, we gave her a very nice name and she went very happy with the name Anitemana. Today she has received another name. And now she has promised that she's also going to be, most of her time, to remain here, industrializing Kisoro and industrializing Kigezi. I want to thank everybody, my brother Mukiza and the others. But important to say here today, I'm not speaking here too much as a politician and as an MP of this constituency, but also as a local investor here. One, I want to uh, give the apologies of my colleague, Honorable uh, Seruganda. He's in Arusha on government duty. Then secondly, Honorable Minister, you clearly know that you have been paying us people of Kisoro money for tea. I'm glad to tell you that now we have myself and other farmers, over 3,000 acres of tea that would need to be processed. And I'm starting the process as I was discussing it with you, Honorable Minister. And I invite any partner who may come in because already raw materials are there. And I have started, we are, we are in the process of putting a very big factory for tea. If any person interested, he can come and partner with us. I'm an investor registered with the Uganda Investments Authority, the license to begin the Mugahinga Rural Agricultural Industrial Park that happened where I'm the director. Honorable Minister and our guest, at one time, I saw some factories here in Iksoro between Bindi and Mugahinga. I said, where are these factories? Immediately, I bought some uh, equipment, lorries, bus, and they would put to their Bindi Mugahinga Rural Agricultural Industrial Park. People said I was not serious. 
I was trying to say, is it in Bindi, is it in Mugahinga, until I registered even in the company. But fortunately enough, I want to thank uh, this younger daughter of uh, yours, Honorable Minister, plus my brother Mukiza and the others, when they came here and were handing over this land, we said, now this is going to be a serious matter. Special thanks goes to Kisoro District Leadership, our district chairman, and other leaders here. This is a project that we should do not. We should carry on our back like a baby. And I want to warn anybody, and this is a serious warning. These people in, from Kisoro, in any case, someone brings a controversial matter on industrialization of Kigezi and industrial park here in Kisoro. We shall all gang against you. We can find you even in your home to answer such a questions. Yes, this is not a joke. There is no joke. Then, Honorable Minister, I want to thank the Speaker of Kisoro District and his council. Speaker, stand up, and your councillors will clap for you. Is my witness, my brother Mukiza. During one night, Honorable Minister, I was taking my Kasoda called Braka Rebo. <laughs> there is a man, my brother from here in Ixoro, that annoyed me. He's called you Quizera. Yes, you've rem reminded me. He and no, Quizera is an investor. That is a small boy, not big. He entered at the fair where everybody was clapping. Investor, investor, investor. I said, I said, I will not take any more drink. And I'm driving to Kisoro. I was with my brother speaker. We organized immediately the people of Kisoro, the leadership. They moved the motion, seconded by the chairman, LC5. We gave out to this land. And we are the first ones in Uganda to give this biggest land. And this is why I'm very happy that we are considering Kisoro as the number one industrial park in Uganda. I'm very much happy, I mean happy my sister Niteman. Before COVID, you remember those ones who were there in Bunagana. I remember telling my brother, General Katumba Wamara, about this road of ours, and I want to thank the government going to Congo. This of Bunagana. I told him also of another alternative road. Because anything, when anything happens with this road, we don't have any alternative. Before COVID, I called my colleagues, my brothers and sisters in Congo. We had a meeting at Busanza. We agreed to work on a road between Busanza border in Kisoro district to, to meet this one of Congo. Only 17 kilometers on the level means. 17 kilometers in Congo and 17 kilometers in, here in Uganda. As we are about to start, I called my brother, Raphael Magezi. He agreed to give us tractors to work on that road. I was providing fuel with my brothers in Congo. As we are about to start, COVID came in. I want to request you, this road must also be incorporated within these contracts of dot services. So that now here, Bunagana is closed. At least we are now using Usanza. This should be taken as a serious matter. In short, as I conclude, investors in the whole world, investors who are here, Kisoro is a potential. Kigezi is a potential. We have serious iron ore here in Kisoro and in, in Rwanda. We have and Kanungu. We have here, here near, near us, Wolf Road. Here we have lava ash. These stones, something called the Pozorana, and we add in some rhyme which is behind here in Busanza, we start producing cement here instead of getting it somewhere very far. We have here a lot of mineral deposits in Rubuguri. Now I'm talking about tea factory because now I can manage to feed at least two lines. With the others, we can feed three, three, three lines. We are talking about coffee here, and we are talking about tourism. Honorable Minister, we have here a lot of potential. We request that the funders, the banks, and also other investors should come here immediately 
and I want to thank you that you've introduced these ones who are going, these investors who are going to modernize here. We are going to get these good roads and also all sorts of I mean facilities. I want to thank my colleagues, members of parliament. When we are at the floor of, of parliament, this should be really pushed and we make sure we achieve it as early as possible. I want to thank you very much. I want, actually, let me thank the leadership of Nyarubuye and the leadership of Muramba that managed to safeguard this land. Nyarubuye sub-county and Muramba sub-county. I want to thank the cow, the custodian of all land in Iksoro and district leadership. Those ones who have been leading Iksoro and the, the ones that are there today. I want to thank you. I want to thank Munagana Town Council and Rukundo Town Council. Let us cooperate. Awa Nyarubuye, awa Nyabunagana. Tayandi majambere, tuzijera tubo na angana guti. Tanu musinagu nge hali hazafu haja imodo kazi ngana gutia. Ngo muzibo ne hano na wabatuare wose ahanga. Ubu ni bugobu chile dufite. So let us take this one and handle it like a glass so that we don't break it. I thank you very much. Thank you. Let us put our hands together for all our leaders as they take their seats. Uh, thank you. Thank you, honorable ministers and uh, honorable members of parliament, serving and former. Honorable Senior Minister Matia Kasaija. I call him senior all times. Okay. Uh, thank you, Honorable Ministers. Senior Minister, I just wanted, because I started introduction, and before I go deep into my speech, allow me to introduce to you UTB. Please, every, anyone from UTB, please do stand up. UTB is represented here. Honorable Minister, we have all the councillors and LC3 chairpersons from Kigezi sub-region, I want to ask them to stand up so that you can see them. Honorable Minister, we have State House being represented here. His Excellency the President is represented by his personal assistant, private secretary, my sister Irene, please stand up. Your husband has been doing an excellent job. That very handsome man there is already taken. Please don't look at him, that's the lady responsible. Irene, thank you. Please clap because she's an in-law in this territory. Is this how you treat your in-laws? Clap properly, that's your in-law. And she works in State House. Thank you for coming and representing State House. Uh, we have Yuri. I already introduced Yuri. UNBS, I did introduce. UCAA. Can we see them stand up? Thank you, thank you very much for coming. Uh, Honorable Minister, that was mark it for the introduction. But if you look behind, I know when you just stepped up briefly, you saw the magnitude of people seated out there. All those people you see there are very eager for industrialization of this Kisoro Industrial Park. And that's why they've come in big numbers. The chairman has not told me how they said thank you in the language, but I'll just say webale, webale munonga. Murakoze, murakoze. Abantu bafe murakoze. Thank you. Honorable Minister, I will take a very short time to just give my speech. First, special thanks to His Excellency Orika Gutam Seveni for, first of all, pacifying Uganda. It is for the peace and stability that we're enjoying in our country that we can talk about industrialization, that we can talk about job creation, that we can talk about investment, that we can talk about construction of roads, infrastructure development. Uganda was very unstable and saw several leaders, up to eight leaders before President Yoram 7 took over in 1986. And indeed, our economy collapsed. And among the past leaders was one of my own blood, General Idi Amin. With all the other good things that he did, but one turn, which was a wrong turn, was to expel the Asians, which was a phobia against foreigners. And that led to the collapse of our country. Our economy collapsed. 
the foreigners left us, we inherited assets. Actually, we didn't inherit. We seized the assets. We did not know how they started building those assets. And because we did not know the technical know-how, we ran them down. I want to thank His Excellency Yori Kaguta Museveni that in 1986, when he took over power, the first thing he put in the 10-point program, point number five, that we should build an integrated and self-sustaining national economy. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for President Museveni. It is indeed miraculous that he appoints the grandchild of Idi Amin to be the one to attract investment and promote and ask foreigners to come back and invest and ask domestic investors to invest. I'm telling you it's an uphill task for me to speak to the Asians, like Morgan Rao, the chairman of the Asian Association. By the way, Honorable Minister, we're celebrating 100 years of the Asian existence and association here. Chairman, thank you very, very much that he still listens to me and does not segregate against me and say, no, your grandfather chased us and therefore I cannot listen to you and invest in Uganda. Morgan invests in Chigezi subregion, and he is one of our investors who has decided to invest in Kisoro Industrial Park. Thank you very much. Mohan, Honorable Minister, on this journey of developing and industrializing our economy, our president, directed us, and of course the directive came to you first, being my senior minister, that we must establish 25 industrial parks. And my colleague, Honorable Musasizi, did echo that point, that we should put them in the 18 zones of our country. I want to thank the people of Chigezi. Just like the people of West Nile, they were among the first people to give 680 acres of land. Please let us clap for the people of Chigezi, and the people particularly of Kisoro. Honorable Minister, they came in big numbers. I am in doubt if they only listened to the voice of their son. But I also believe that because their son was the, the Director General of Uganda Investment Authority, it was very easy. That very tall man came here and told me, Honorable Anite, we have 680 acres, and I'm like, you're lying. It put me on panic. I said, how can the Director General have and I don't have? And I went to West Nile and got 500 acres. That's why you came and graced the occasion and we did the groundbreaking in Nebi Industrial Park. That sent panic to the chairman of Uganda Investment Authority, Morrison Rakakamba. He said, no, I have land. I said, where is it? He said, 108. I said, you don't know what you're saying. That is no land. He went back and got for us 600 acres. 630 acres, let us clap. And the pioneer investor is right here, Honorable Minister. Why I'm giving all this history is because we are industrializing Uganda. It is not just Kisoro. Honorable Minister, when I did present, and thank you, you gave me the permission to make that presentation in cabinet. When I made the presentation that we got land in different parts of Uganda, His Excellency Yori Kabuta Museven says, how can the people of Ankole only give 50 acres. What is that? And he went ahead and allocated more land in the Ankole subregion. He went ahead and allocated land in Busoga subregion. He went ahead and said, let's get all government and public land in all those areas. Gave us land in Teso subregion. Went ahead and said, go to, to uh, Karamoja. He gave us the government land. As I speak, I just as a report to the country that we have already gazetted all the 25 industrial parks and we're just waiting for industrialization to happen. You can clap for us very little. <laughs> Honorable Minister, what am I trying to say? We're on point. On delivering what we used as our campaign team, the tool. I was at the, as one of those whom the president appointed to write his manifesto. And I want to tell you the NRM manifesto we wrote very, very clearly, and His Excellency Yori Kaguta Museven gave one word, that this Kisanja is to secure your future. And it, need, it is to secure your future. And how are we going to secure your future if we don't create jobs? 
That's why we are talking about industrialization, because my senior minister will give these statistics, that if we get all the jobs and we fire all the public servants that we have today and employ all the new graduates, we will still not have enough jobs. Because the public service only employs just about 700. But we have 7,000 young people graduating from the universities every year. And that means that the, the public service jobs, and when I say public service, I'm talking about police, army, Ministry of Finance, Uganda Investment Authority. Mention any MDA. I'm counting all the jobs in government. We will not absorb our capacity. Our unemployed youth. We're talking about 43 million Ugandans who need these jobs. The Minister of Youth will tell you that the young people do not have jobs. That's why the President came with this strategy that let us industrialize Uganda and build the industrial park so as to absorb the unemployed young people. I know, Honorable Minister, the biggest challenge and the question that I face in social media is that, but the problem is, Honorable Anite, that the industries are there, but the quality of, of the salary that you pay to the young people is not sufficient. Honorable Minister, I get so many young people coming to my office. Their first worry is not how much I should be paid. Their first worry is I need a job. So as we address the issue of the jobs, we will go a step further to address the issue of how much should our people be paid. You hear everyone talking about the wage bill, wage bill. How do you talk about wage when you don't have the jobs? You don't have them. So what comes first? The amount of money to be paid or the jobs? The jobs come first. Create the jobs. Then when you're there, you're performing very well, they increase your salary. Indeed, the industrials industries and the factories that are doing very well have started creating and increasing the, the pay. And we're talking to them. But we're in the period of wooing. We need to woo. And Honorable Minister, I want to just inform the country through you and of course my president, our president, that something very excellent is happening in our country. Ugandans have gone into industrialization. From Chikubo, we are getting an exodus of people who are importing Chinese products, Indian products, now going into manufacturing. Please let us clap for our country. <laughs> Honorable Minister, before you came, we had aligned investors here, and I want to just ask them to stand up because you're going to be watching them when you're, when you're airborne, because we are broadcasted live. I just want to ask these investors, you will see Ugandans. If you see the crisps just next to you, it's made by Ugandan. Please start by leading. Stand up. Let us, the minister, see you. All the investors who stood here. Honorable Minister, on your side there, when we had meeting of investors, the proprietor of Acadia, the most beautiful hotel in Kisoro, I will not say Uganda because I'm also an, a, an entrepreneur, I'll say confidential beats you, but I think because I'm in your area, I want to say that the most beautiful hotel in Uganda and in this beautiful part of Uganda, the owner and proprietor of Acadia is right there. Please stand up. Let us clap. Is he, is he Chinese? When you look at that gentleman, does he look Chinese? He is Ugandan. So Ugandans have listened. All our incentives we give them regardless of race. We are deliberately promoting domestic investment in our country. And we're promoting for FDI. Honorable Minister, I want to use this opportunity as I wind up to let Ugandans understand why we invite foreign direct investment in our country. There are only two major reasons. One reason is capital. As our president is working hard to recapitalize and capitalize UDB and post bank, housing finance, we, are, we don't have enough capital to ensure that our investors, you, you Ugandans, are able to go into manufacturing. That's why we want the people like Mohan, we want the people like Lagan, 
to bring for us the money. It's not like we love them so much. Yes, indeed, there's a little bit of love, but the real issue is the cash. Because they have the cheap money. Their governments are more revolved or evolved than ours because I told you before the president took over power, we, our country was not stable. We've just been stable for about 30 years or so. But even in that stability, 20 years of the 30 years that President Seven was in power was ravaged by the Kony War in Northern Uganda, where I come from. As we try to pacify Uganda, you'll hear that we need to pacify our neighbors, the RRC. You'll hear that we have to go to Somalia. So we are struggling while using our small resources to make sure that we have the markets around us peaceful. Honorable Minister, that is why we go for foreign direct investment. Another reason is that we want the advanced technology. We have very few people like uh, Professor Mwesigwa. Professor, you can stand up, of Yuri. Professor, thank you very much that you went abroad and got the knowledge and you've come back and you have built for us a set of art institute that you're training the young people in Namanve. Please let us clap for him. But the young people that we get with the technology of working in the industries, they're not enough. The one he has are not enough. The technology that he has is not enough. As our president is telling us to chatter the way of the pathogenic economy, that's why we're looking for the pharmaceuticals, that we're looking for science, but we still have to depend on FDI for that advanced technology. But I'm very happy that Ugandans have woken up to the occasion and we're embracing industrialization and we're now in manufacturing as opposed to importing dead people's hair. Not a good example because my hair, they will say it is also for a dead person. Mine is half dead. <laughs> Honorable Minister, I just wanted to give you the good news that this is not completely a green field because we are a step ahead. Today we are sitting here and it has been possible by Lagan management. Lagan management has decided on the minister to take the stress from our coffers of making sure that the feasibility study of this industrial park is done on pro bono. Please Lagan management, stand up. And Andrew is not here again, I want to ask you to stand up, that they are going to only take two months to do the feasibility studies, two months. After that, we are transiting, after they've told us the feasibility study, we are now going into knowing how much money do we need for the road, how much money do we need for water. Actually, National Water should be here. Anyone from National Water? Thank you very, very much for coming because our president directed on our minister that National Water should make industrial water available at an affordable price as I do recall, it is 2,500, 4,500 or 2,500? Please, National Water, 2,500. I got my statistics right, thank you. It is 2,500 for domestic industrial water. And we want National Water. Why we invited them here, and Honorable Minister, why well, you'll be traveling, we shall continue with this conference or this summit, for them to tell us how soon they'll be working with lag and management to ensure that we do that. Honorable Minister, we want to bring ICT. We want smart technology to happen here. We have gone ahead, and I want to thank Uganda Investment Authority under the leadership of my chairman, Morrison, my DG, uh, Robert Mukiza. They put out the bankable projects. Before you came, there were lists of a firm here. We have bankable projects. For all the projects, so the feasibility study that Laga and why we shortened the time for them is because it has already been done. And so we know what we want to do in this place. Honorable Minister, just yesterday, and I saw you in State House when you're having the first meeting, and I went into the second meeting, when President Museveni gathered all the steel manufacturers and was asking them to come and invest in Chigezi. You people of Chigezi, you're so lucky. 
Why on earth do you get a president seated in state house? And he calls all manufacturers and says, please, I know you're doing value addition on iron ore. I know you're using scrap, but I want you to come to Shigezi and go to Moko and do value addition on the iron ore in Moko. I thought you'd clap for the president more. And he's willing to invest more money because we know that when we do iron ore production in our country, we will be able to build decent houses for our citizens, given that the, the, the population is growing and we need more young people. Honorable Minister, cognizant of the fact that the plane, a helicopter crashed, and I know that you're going back with the, that another helicopter, I don't want to risk your life. I am going to stop here and ask you to come and speak and only pray that God takes you safely because you've been an excellent boss. Thank you. Let us clap for Honorable Matia Kasaija as he comes to address the country and you, the people who are here. Please, you can stand up and do a hand clap for my senior minister. And I thank His Excellency General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni for appointing both Honorable Matia Kasaija and myself, and we will continue industrializing our country for job creation. Thank you. Colleagues, the ministers here, colleagues, members of parliament, the leadership of Kisoro district, the business community, ladies and gentlemen, Muramuseyo, Murahoneza, Mahoro Chane Chane. Very good. I will begin by telling you two secrets. One, you the Bafumbira, you miss me by a third, I would be your son in law. You know, I've been coming to Kusoro since 1969. So there is nothing I don't know here. And I told you I had uh, something happened then I missed. But uh, I want uh, Vichanayandi, we call it Vichanayandi, he gave me a daughter in my village there. So where is Vichanayandi? Where are you? But more seriously, the other secret is when the president appointed me as a minister of finance, I went to him and I said, you know we are colleagues. Mr. President, what do you want me to do in this? Because at least earlier on we had discussed about agriculture. He said, no. He said, aren't you an economist? I said, yes. He said, I want you to concentrate on industrialization. So when my coming here, I'm trying to fulfill the mission my president gave me. So I want to thank, first of all, the leadership of this district for having given us this piece of land. Since the people are listening to us, let me say this. Kisoro has got not much land. You know, I, I am having a lot of your citizens, my fellow citizens from this area, in Kibale, Mubende, and all that. But for someone in that circumstance to give you six. 600 acres? Oh, that is a full commitment. And we shall honor that commitment. We shall not disappoint you as a government.
They have given me a text here. Let me see whether I will summarize it. They are talking about Chigezi being a region abundantly resourced area with good climate. I have known that very much. Food and wealth of human resource. I have told you that already. At this point, I would like to thank and recognize the presence of fellow ministers, members of parliament, this leadership. And I'm not forgetting the academicians who contribute in terms of research, development, and the training of the people of Chigezi and the country at large. I will leave this written text. Let me speak for my Going uh, by the mission uh, the president gave me. And uh, looking at uh, the trend, I think either Honorable Onite or someone else said it. Creation of jobs is now one of the most matter that we all must address if we have to have a stable country. You know, a hungry man is an angry man. Is that what, what they say? Therefore, I salute our investors, both here and elsewhere. And the more that will come when this industrial park has been beautified. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Abu I will tell you the way I think you did not know that statistics. In the government, where there are only 400,000 jobs, including the army, the police, the whatnot, only 4,000, I mean 400,000. So therefore, industry plus agriculture is where the extra jobs that our youth that are, we are churning out of universities and the school and, and the school and the other schools, they will have to go to work. Therefore, my appeal that to my industries. Yes, I know new technologies are coming, but bear in mind that we have having a, an army of youth, both girls and boys, who need to get a job to work. And a meaningful job. As a government, we will do the necessary training, the skilling, but also it does not prevent you to do the same. Because we may not be, I was reading yesterday in some paper, newspaper that uh, we are training, but we are training off, 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 off target. So, I will be expecting you, the investors, to train, to have a training program for these youth. If you think when they come to your enterprise, they are not fully trained to assist you to do the job. To the youth, and employees. You know, in Uganda, we have a little disease. I don't think I shouldn't call it little. It's a big disease of wanting three things for free. You have had the government to yambe, government to yambe, government to yambe. 
what are you doing yourself? In my language in Bunyoro there we say, akoya ko munyi ndo ke hayo wenka. That the hair which is in, a, in your nose, you are the one to pull it, not, you, not even your children, not even your wife. So, those uh, people who are looking for a job, and when you get a job, please be a faithful servant of that job. Not doing a manyanga manyanga. You come late for work. You create excuses. And you'll excuse me, my girls. At the time the girls will terrorize, oh, ba -ba -ba -ba. He, has been go he has gone with a, a boyfriend. And he has, she has sent him herself. Stick to the routine, stick to the timetable, stick to the targets your employer has given you. There is also a problem these days with the youth. People wanting to become rich quickly, 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 quickly. I'm warning you, that's a dangerous trend. You work. They will recognize you. They will promote you. And slowly you will begin to acquire wealth. These days, I attend, I normally don't attend, I attend weddings. You know the reason why? <laughs> Somebody has just come from university, he has worked for two years. He throws a party where he needs half a billion shillings. What are we doing? That's what makes some people be tempted to touch money which is not, not which is not theirs. I've seen it even in the government itself. Move slowly. Now maybe let me finish that point of marriage. Marriage is not the, it does not come of, I'm now talking to the youth, please, who are here. Marriage does not come from how big your party is it there is something different and i would, i don't, don't I, I don't think i should say that one here work diligently i've been working since 1969. kwesiga there can tell you he's much younger than me we were together at entire but i think why you were in senior one when i was senior six I left in 1966. What class were you in? 66? Eh? You were in junior, my senior what? Three. Stand with the ECU, my OB at Intari Secondary School. Up to today, I am working. I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet. Even today, this morning, I woke up at 4 o'clock to work. I own a farm. Literally every weekend I dash there. We start work at five o'clock, at 4 o'clock in the night. And we sleep maybe at midnight. Worker does not kill. In fact, if anything, it helps your body. I can tell you my age. I'm hitting 79 years. But uh, if we decide to run together here, I can tell you I may leave you behind. I saw it when we were trekking with the President Museveni. I saw many younger people, they were oh, oh, oh. For us, what you, 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 you. So working does not make you sick. It only helps you.
to sharpen your brain and even your body. To my investors, feel free. Anytime there is a challenge, come to us. Me and the Honorable Nita there. We shall try to address the problems. If you think there is a law that is squeezing you and we should change it, we shall look at that and study the case. And if you have a good case, we shall change the law. We want you to make money. There's nobody who invests without wanting to make money. We want you to prosper. We want you to expand. We want you to make a to, include, to, 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 to employ more Ugandans. But of course also, I want my taxes. <laughs> I need the taxes. So we are there for you. At any time, at any moment. The people of Kisoro. First of all, let me thank you because I had the, was it the LC5 chairman? Thank you for having NRM. We shall not disappoint you, I can tell you that. The roads you are talking about, we are going to work on them. You just continue, and you, for me, I know you are very hardworking people, Work hard. Things will improve. I know COVID did us a bit of damage to the economy. We were moving. You remember when I did make a thing like this? Yeah. But in life, there is always a progression and regression. Me, I'm not worried. No. As long as we remain peaceful, the economy is now beginning to pick up. With all these challenges, now we are getting a border. The floods are bothering us. The drought, the recent drought has really hit particularly the, farm, the farming sector. But we are moving forward. Lastly, we want every Ugandan to be rich. Mwampulira. Abakso, mumpuliri, umurufumbi ratu kuhuli ramu kieta muto. How do you say? Eh? Urumva, urumva is have you understood? Urumva have you understood? But have you heard? Tuchigama tuto mu mulimu wa ituhan. Eh? Ndavishi, oravishi, niku, oravishi, niku. We want everybody to be rich. I'm glad one of the speakers here has mentioned something that I've been singing all around. You can ask Anita there and uh, one of the Musasis. I have traveled around the world. I have not seen a country as endowed as Uganda. Mm -mm. I have not seen a country which is as beautiful from north to south, east to west. So God gave us a favor. This favor we must translate it into happiness, living a good life, 
being a good citizen and being good to God. Religious people tell us that when we die, we go there. God will ask you, I gave you talents and you did not use them well. When he will be judging us Ugandans. And I don't want to be part of being judged that he gave us good, good climate, good soils, rainfall. Uh -uh. I don't want to be part of that to answer that question. Let me tell you one point, just to emphasize what I'm saying. I went to South Africa in Impaka Pasta as a small farm, as you know, I'm a small farmer somewhere. I found a guy harvesting maize. Then I said, this maize, how long has it been in the field? He said, eight months. I said, what? Eight months. Huh? I said, eight months? He said, yes. I said, for us in Uganda, it is, we, we have two seasons. Three months, four months, the maize is out. He looked at me. He said, Mr. Kasaidi, are there poor people now in Uganda? Have you heard this? That Muzungu man I went to visit in South Africa, are there still poor people in Uganda? I shrank, I could not. I said, yes, they are still there. But he was trying to speak with my tongue in the in the cheek. Let's start take opportunities. Let us take this peace that we have got. And by the one peace, please. And I'm warning the young ones. Don't joke. I have seen some younger people not bother to Tunaria Dembe. Eh? The old men for you, you know, and the women. What we went through during our ministry time, you have heard. What when we passed through, even at the beginning of our revolution. So everybody I'm appealing, since we are being heard from different angles, peace. If there is an issue of contention, there is your parliament. Parliament can go and sort it out. Or the courts. Or call a village meeting if the matter is local. Then picking up spears, arms to fight. Let me use this opportunity to tell the people who are in Congo here. There is no need why you should be fighting. I'm talking about the Ugandans. If you can surrender, UPDF will stop hunting you. And anybody who has a relative over there send him that message and say, you come back home. We have an amnesty law. We will not prosecute you. It is peace that will make us great country that will make us live longer because once we have got peace we are earning money from the various sectors. Here we are talking now of industry. But there are other sectors. Minerals. I heard the owner of Aneto, so I think owner of Mosas is talking about it. This country has got many minerals all over the country. 
what we have just found out is a very small percentage. Finally, you the people of Kisoro, particularly this area, when this place is getting industrialized, first of all, I appeal to you, feed these people, the workers here, because some workers may not necessarily be from here, not all of them for sure, but I want the majority to be our children from this area. Look after them, regard the factories as your factories. If you saw somebody doing something wrong, report him or her. Because if that factory collapses, it will be your children who will lose jobs. Am I clear? Have you understood me? My Runya Rwanda times is 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 broken. I would have wanted to say it in our language. Let me see if you will understand my Kinyoro. Ebintu ebi kujia kule wahanu bianyu. Abaraba babire sire teba kujia kugenda navio. It is going to be here forever and ever. So it is in your great interest and all of us interest. You never know my grandchild we may come to, to work here. That will benefit and as I've said, we want you to live a healthy life. We want to live you longer. Aim to dying at the 100 years. Have I made a sense? Have you understood me? Now with those words, first of all, you will excuse me. I would have loved to be here until the end, but I have come with the means of transport, which has said ah, by three o'clock we must be going back. Otherwise, we we don't want you to hear accidents happening. So I wish you a very prosperous meeting and I will be ready to receive the report of any issues that you think government should be able to help and address. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister, before you leave, you have to do the grand honor of officially launching the, the, this industrial and business park. So you must formally announce that you have launched it and then we'll have a group photo here with all the stakeholders. Okay. I take pleasure to announce that this area is now declared an industrial park. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. You will now come to the center, and I request the Honorable Ministers to join you, the Chairman, uh, the Director General, and the, uh, the Board and the members of parliament uh, to officially mark uh, the uh, commissioning and launching of this industrial uh, business and free zone uh, pack uh, but also mention as the ministers are coming that this uh, park and all the, the, the industrial parks uh, are actually not in wetlands and it's it's been uh, the directive of uh, the uh, ministers and under the guidance of the Minister of State for Investment that all the parks are not in wetlands and this uh, this park the, the, the West Nile Park uh, all are not in a wetland and that is the emphasis of the government of Uganda and the directive of the president that the parks are not in a wetland and this industry and business park is actually not in the wetland and we want to thank the honorable ministers for stating this fact so i want in a very special way to request that we put our hands together for the honorable minister for officially commissioning and launching this chigezi 
Industrial and Business Park. Some of the, the other representatives can come and stand. Cameraman, let us know where the boundary is so that we ensure everybody is in the picture. Um, please all smile. Honorable Minister, there's mask for just one second. Uh, you can remove the mask for just uh, two seconds. Because it will be on a calendar for the whole year and you're the only one in a mask. Yes, I know. I know, Honorable Minister. All right, so no breathing. And no talking in this picture. Uh -huh, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for the official launch and commissioning of this Kigezi Industrial and Business Park. We want to thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, the team is also going to organize uh, another form of officially uh, commissioning where we have some hoes. I think the Honorable Minister will lead the team uh, and the UIA team uh, to make their way for that. And as they do that, allow me to request our team to come back. Mr. Biengoma, uh, Mr. Kanya, uh, Mr. Dennis Gabirano, and of course, um, the representative of the uh, Indian Business Forum to please come. Uh, we Please come. No, we are, we, are, we are here. We are not going anywhere. It's only the ministers who are moving. So, Mr. Biengoma, please come. Uh, Kanya, uh, Dennis, and uh, the team. And please note that uh, we are still broadcasting live uh, for the larger audience, not the people in the room. And also stay with us because we will have lunch at the end of the summit. Um, and I wanted to request that you stay with us. So our panelists, if you can come, so we can actually uh, conclude our conversation very quickly and, and then move to the financial institutions. The financial institutions will be speaking to accessing capital and they will be coming just immediately after this panel. So, Dennis, uh, Mr. Kanya, and uh, Mr. Biengoma, if you could come. I want, in a very special way, to recognize all the other stakeholders who are here in this room. Uh, we did receive representation from the National Council of Sports, and the chairperson, Mr. Ambrose Tashobia, is here. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us uh, for this conversation. In the past, Kisoro, uh, Ambrose used to produce uh, marathoners. And I think we are working on, uh, you know, building that again because a lot of the uh, uh, great marathon teams were coming from here uh, in the past, a very long time ago, and so some of the history. Uh, whoever is with Mr. Kanya, and also uh, my colleague from the India Business Forum. And uh, may I also... Um, request that uh, the other panelists, I think we had, I don't know if now Mr. Sabimana has come. It would be nice to have you here with us. Uh, Mr. Batuma had already made his contribution. That's okay. Mr. Biengoma, let's begin from where we were uh, the last time. And, and you were sharing your experience in doing business uh, in the region. And uh, we have a lot of people watching online and, and watching TV that were very interested in your story, especially the fact that the Chigezi Cooperative Group in 1960 was very strong and laid the foundation for what is happening in the region. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, where I, I was telling you my, our, my story, my journey, but my journey, uh, I would have loved if uh, Honorable Kasaida would be here to listen to me. And more especially, he sent a message to me last week that I had not been able to reach him up for many, many months. And uh, I, I forgave him because I know he's always busy. But uh, to bring up, uh, I don't know. We, we can hear you. Don't you worry. You can hear me? We can hear you. T 
to bring up the audience to the speed, uh, my journey in business has been quite challenging, but also I have found, uh, you know, ch when challenges come, sometimes you get how to go over them. Uh, all the speakers here who were talking about the industrialization in Iksoro or in the whole country are not talking about uh, the household incomes. That's why I was talking about financial literacy. Because if this had been captured in our curricula in education, it would have helped. Because most people, they get money, but they don't know how to use it. They get opportunities, but they don't know how to expand and see what they can do with the money they have got or the, the knowledge that they have. For example, uh, in 1969, uh, we started, a, uh, become, we became an agent of Kigez Vegetable Cooperative Union. And we were very big competitors to a friend of ours in a business called Jawara Singh in Kampala and uh, uh, Kagwa, who was a senior lawyer, but young. And when my directors and shareholders asked me to see how I can improve our, our business, I bought Uganda Agas and applied to supply the whole of Makerere University, General, military general headquarters, Chambogo, Nakawa, prisons, uh, lower and upper, and, and women of the uh, prisons department, and Uganda hotels. And you will not believe this, that I knocked off a few cents and I defeated my colleague called Jawara Singh and Kawalya Kagwa. And we had now to buy 12 lorries to carry vegetables from Kigezi, Kabare subregion, to the market in Kampara. Young as I was, we reached a stage in 1971 where we, I was assigned to go and buy a plane to carry vegetables from Kabale to Entebbe. But uh, immediately there was a coup in 1971. And one of my best, my good friend whom I was at college together called Hussein Marjani, he, was a military, he had joined the army and he told me that, uh, Nicholas, you are going to buy a plane, but I'm told it's a military plane. If you buy it, you are, you are hiding to sell vegetables, but you want to fight the government. So please abandon this idea and don't buy this plane. So why am I bringing this story? And since that time, the vegetable scheme in Kigezi and Kisoro died. Was completely smashed off because we couldn't now carry uh, vegetables in trucks because the Amini government thought that if we carry the vegetables we would be carrying guns under the truck. And uh, we abandoned that idea of uh, continuing with that. But I have heard the chairman or some speaker here talk about uh, production by our peasants here or the, the farmers. But we are not talking about post-harvest. So if we don't post-harvest for vegetables to keep them alive for uh, to be edible in another one month, they will still not have money. Yes. So in my view, the Honorable Minister, it's a pity has gone. He's represented. But, Don't but, worry. Uh, Our uh, minister is here. Yes, but uh, I, Kamara is engaging him so much. Kamara, the minister needs to listen, Honorable Kamara. <laughs> I want, I'm sending a message through her. My cry and my humble prayer 
is that Kigezi subregion must have post harvest projects where we can keep our food for market later. But if we continue saying you produce and produce, then we cannot keep for market for a longer time. So my humble prayer is that please do all it takes in your budget, tell your senior minister that Kigezi subregion with the endowment it has, especially in food production, we have silos and we have uh, cooling stores for vegetables so that right. they can be sent to a bigger market outside either right. in Goma or in the Kampala. All right. Then finally, yes. I want the conversation to start today, Mr. Chairman of Kisoro. I don't know why, Kamara, you are engaging everybody when we are talking serious issues. He's picking ideas. Yes. No, that's not good manners. <laughs> uh, I want the conversation to start from today, Honorable Anite, that these here places, Kigezi, Bugisu, Kasese, we must have a program to help what we missed in the colonial times for the infrastructure. The conversation must start now so that we have now roads up the hills, the silos I'm talking about, and even to make it better for here people, there wouldn't be anything wrong to have a helicopter in Xoro to pick mothers from up the hills to bring them to the hospitals here. It wouldn't be wrong to have a helicopter in Kasese or in Mbale because we missed out on the roads that are in your sub-region where you can look at about 50 kilometers where a road can be bent easily. So the conversation must start. Honorable Saba, please go to parliament Say there is an old man who would want to leave this earth, but having left a conversation started that what we missed in the colonial times for the infrastructure should be now put in our budgets for these disadvantaged areas where we are born. Thank I you. want to rest my case. Thank you, Mr. Bingham. And uh, I, uh, I'm happy to be part of this today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Biengo. It was indeed an honor to have you with us today. And uh, a lot of us will be probably engaging you over lunch or um, future conversations. I, I, I needed to say that half of the people on the plane when we came yesterday were above 70 years old. So it has become an alternative means of transport to go home for those who are elderly. And I think Mr. Biengo is one of the clients of this airport, I'm sure, when he's coming home. Um, I'll come to you, uh, uh, Mr. Kanya. You, you represent the Kisoro Land Board, the District Land Board, and speaking to issues of investment, land is a very critical component of that. Um, what are the incentives you're providing as a district to the investors who are coming here? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Morris. And, and thank you for surprising me today because I, I didn't think I was going to speak today. My submission will be twofold. <clears throat> Before I speak as chairperson of the district land board, I just want to make an observation. I saw the entire leadership of the Ministry of Finance in Kisoro today. I think that is unprecedented. And, and therefore, that speaks to how serious the Ministry of Finance, together with uh, the Investment Authority, uh, how serious they take this project. And so I want to appreciate them. Let me also say this, uh, Honorable Minister, if you're listening. We have a very competitive political space down here in Kisoro. And usually that divides us uh, along the different shades. But when it comes to business, the entire leadership rallies around the business person and how we can make it better for people to do business in Kisoro. 
regardless of our political uh, differences. And so that also shows how serious we are about doing business in, uh, in Kisoro. Honorable Minister, the Kisoro airstrip is the busiest airstrip in Uganda. We have a minimum of three planes landing here every day. Minimum of three. Today, together with him, we were, I saw about four planes, two of Bar Aviation and two of uh, Aerolink. That goes to show uh, the traffic that comes uh, down to Kisoro, perhaps largely because of tourism, but it also goes to show that if we tap into the tourists that are coming here, we can also exploit that to do uh, serious business down here. Honorable Minister, the biggest challenge for this generation, the Swahili say uh, changamoto kubwa, the biggest challenge is jobs. This facility speaks to answering that challenge. I would like to thank the uh, Ministry of Finance and uh, Uganda Investment Authority for thinking about that because the biggest problem of the youth is uh, jobs, jobs, jobs. And by attracting these investors here, you are answering the biggest challenge. Let me give a personal story, if you'll allow me, Maurice. Three years ago, we tried to lobby investors to take on Kilembe Mines. And when I went to Minister Kasaija's office, I was extremely surprised because I was an ordinary guy, no appointment, but he embraced me, took me into his office, gave me a ride in his car all the way to Entebbe where he was going as he was taking notes. He was very curious about attracting investment here. A month ago, I went to Honorable Anita's office. She didn't know me. No appointment. Took me into her office, listened to the investment opportunities that we're trying to uh, bring to Uganda. I think the president couldn't have picked a better team of ministers for minister, Ministry of Finance than Anite and her, and her team. And so I'd like to thank you. As Kisoro District Land Board, we are on board. We are taking matching orders. Anything regarding investment, we will do, whether it requires us to give uh, uh, any sort of service. We are on board, Honorable Minister, and we will play ball to ensure that investors come here and give job opportunities uh, to our young people. Honorable Minister, my final remarks are these. Kisoro is open for business, and by extension, Kigezi is open for business. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kanya. And I'll quickly turn to our brother from India. Um, there's a couple of areas I want you to speak to, um, and I'm sure you're aware the Indian community and the Ministry of Investment are working on the, you're calling it the Indo-Africa meeting that will be happening next month. But I want you to speak to the partnerships that are critical for investment in this region. The joint venture partners with our locals, the deepening the markets, access to these markets, especially the DRC um, and, and Rwanda, but also tapping into the Asian market where we are able to produce goods that can go into the Asian market and your experience as you share with us. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mohan Reddy. I have a business uh, called Thirmala Enterprises. I'm a managing director there. But today I'm representing uh, Indian Business Forum as a secretary general of Indian Business Forum. Uh, very brief about Indian Business Forum is uh, it's a part of Indian Association looking after the business interests of uh, Indian community uh, and uh, the Indian origin people. We are around 450 members in the Indian Business Forum. I know Indian community in Uganda is about uh, 27,000 Indians are re now residing in Uganda. Uh, out of 45.7 million of total Ugandan population, they are like 0.6%, uh, the total uh, population. Uh, whereas uh, the contribution from the Indian-owned businesses to the URA collections, it is about 60 to 65%. Uh, this is the contribution of Indians to the economy. I just want to say a few words about the Indian Association. 
the first Indians entered into Uganda in uh, early 1950s for the construction of the railway line from Tanzania, from uh, Kenya to Uganda. After the construction of the uh, line, railway line, majority of them went back. But few of them seen the greener opportunities in Uganda. They stayed back, very few of them. The first business was started in Uganda by an Indian is 1904. That is the first business was started in Uganda. You know, um, we are all colonial, under colonial rule. And um, even India, even East Africa, it was one together at that time. East Africa was one. That time, the people were expecting the representation in the House of Commons for the particular communities. So that is how the concept and the idea of Indian Association have come up. Uh, 1922, Indian Association was established. 3rd December 1922, officially Indian Association was registered in Uganda. Uh, this is 2022. We are celebrating 100 years of our coexistence with the community here in Uganda. So we are celebrating it. Uh, with the help of Honorable Minister, who is very proactive, very helpful, always behind us, supporting UIA team, Chairman, DZ. We are so thankful, sir, for supporting. So we are uh, having this Afro-Indian Investment Summit, uh, which is going to happen on uh, 17th and 18th of November in Munyonyo Speak Resort. We are expecting around uh, 1,000 delegates all over the world. Uh, we are particularly you know, inviting all 55 African countries. We know, uh, Director General was saying, we have a bigger market now. We don't need to depend on Asia, we don't need to depend on America, Europe, or anywhere. We have a bigger market. We are 470 people, 470 million East Africans after joining Congo. And uh, we take uh, whole Africa, we are 1.3 billion. We have a very big market. If we produce here, we can market our products within Africa. We don't need to depend on them. This is the market which is quite virgin, still not yet been completely occupied. And we need to do ourselves. We need to promote ourselves. Then only, you know, we can promote our resources. We have a lot of mining facilities. We have a lot of agriculture, very fertile land. We need to utilize our uh, facilities. Uganda is a very favorable country to invest, and particularly we are talking about uh, Chigoji National Park, uh, Chigoji Industrial Park, very near vicinity to uh, Congo, Rwanda. There's a lot of products were imported through Uganda going to uh, Congo and uh, Rwanda. We can have manufacturing facilities here itself, and very near, and being a Mumasa port is direct connection to Kisoro. It is very easy to bring the raw materials and put a manufacturing plant here and service the markets of Congo and uh, uh, Rwanda. So, uh, you know, we are expecting uh, this out of 1,000 delegates who are coming from all over the uh, world, a majority of them the serious investors. Why we are inviting so many of them? What is the uh, importance of Uganda? Why do we invite them to Uganda? Uganda, we have 45.7 million people. If you see the statistics of 45.7 million, 22.5 million are the young people, less than 30 years. So you have a lot of people available, and uh, our uh, minister, Madam Sarah, was saying there's a lot of potential in our younger generation. Yes, we do have a lot of potential in younger generation. Our people are well-educated, hardworking, and we are very enthusiastic, willing to learn, willing to learn whatever the investor wants them to do. So it is, uh, there's no other country, there's no other people like this. So I've been, I started my career as an accountant in Tanzania, 22 years now. I here came here around 15 years back to Uganda. As I've been in Kenya, I tell you, I, I take, I promise you, this is the country which is the best country among the East Africans. I love I decided to stay here. My kids are born here. My kids are studying in Uganda, and we are completely settled in Uganda. So such a lovely country. And someone was saying about the peace. 
we have no issue of security. I really tell the, all the international investors, whoever is watching this, I am assuring you, absolutely security is 100% there. There is no one to worry about the security. Um, you know, whatever is shown in other TV channels, you know, international TV channels, uh, they are not true, not 100% true. There is no security problem. People are very humble, willing to work with us. And, you know, moreover, there is no language barrier. All you right. go any corner of Uganda, they understand English. All right. So this is the best uh, available uh, labor force for us. And uh, Mark, we have, uh, there is one important thing which international investors should understand. Yes. We are inviting investors to come here and invest. Many of them are worried uh, how our investment, we bring it here if it gets blocked. There are countries where there is a permission required to draw even a hundred dollars out of the country. But this country, you bring your investment, invest here, do the business, get the profits, pay all your taxes genuinely, and there is no hurdle on repatriation of profits. This is a, such a beautiful opportunity we have here. So uh, during this summit, we have, uh, UIA has uh, identified the 10 sectors as a priority sectors. Uh, we are uh, taking, it's a two-day seminar, 17 and uh, 18 of November. Uh, we are uh, I identified uh, eight sectors among the 10 to be discussed. We'll have a breakaway rooms where uh, we are uh, expecting, you know, ministers and PS and everyone and UIA and private sector, everyone will be part of it, of the breakaway rooms. They will be giving us the full details of the particular projects and each and every sector. We'll have a presentation, we'll have a question and answer session. The few uh, uh, sectors I identify is agriculture, ICT, power, oil and gas, mining, tourism, uh, real estate, etc. So I request our local population as well as uh, international investors, please come to the Uganda. Okay, you have not made up your mind to invest here, no worries. Please visit Uganda. See the hospitality of Uganda. See the total Uganda of the opportunities are available here. I challenge, you will not go back without investing here. Thank you. Thank you for God and my country. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mohan. And, and honestly, I think what we are going to do as TV stations, and especially myself, is we'll just cut out that last bit and we'll send it to UTV and we will charge them for you saying all the nice things about Uganda in just one minute. Uh, and it's excellent. So we want to thank, thank you, you for being an ambassador of Uganda thank and you, investing sir. and choosing to invest in Uganda. A little later, I hope Mr. Rao, before our minister closes, will say something and then uh, we will wrap this up. But that's later. Don't worry. Um, so may I, ladies and gentlemen, request that we put our hands together for the team. I have run out of time and request they take their seats. Please thank you so much, Mr. Biangoma, Mr. Mohan, Mr. Dennis, uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Kanya. Thank you so much for your conversation. We want to quickly move into accessing finance because it's a very critical conversation on how you, the locals here, and also investors who are watching us online and anyone who wants to do business here in the industry and business park uh, here in Chibaya, Kisoro, uh, will access the capital, the necessary capital to invest in this country. So I want to invite my colleague Samson uh, to come and invite the banks uh, who have exactly 15 minutes to pitch to us. Thank you very much. We would like to, to bring in the banks. That is Post Bank, DFCU Bank, Centenary Bank, Stamic Bank, and the Bank of Uganda. But as that, uh, are the banks, is it the banks or the banks? <laughs> are the banks here? Yes. Centenary is here, certainly. Absolutely. I literally, Morris, I got goosebumps when he said, for God and my country, implying Uganda. And then there are Ugandans being negative. That's what I don't get. Somebody is very, very positive about us. And all we can do is being negative. So the banks are here. I'm told banks are very nice when you're coming in. 
It's another matter when, when they are picking it. <laughs> so we'll get the banks speaking. And this is going to be the order. You'll speak beginning with those that have the headquarter that is the shortest, finishing with those that have the headquarters that is the highest. So which bank is that at the end? Uh, thank you. Uh, this which is bank DFC are you representing? DFCU Bank. DFCU, uh-huh. Yes. Then next? I'm representing Post Bank. Post Bank. Post Bank is short, so you'll be, you speak fast. Then DFCU, then Centenary, the tallest, will speak last. Um, you have two minutes of pitching each, and we're talking about accessing or financing. So, uh, sir, your name, and then uh, now we know that it's Postbank. Thank you, moderator Samson. My name is Muez Mathias. I'm the regional SME manager for Western Region with Postbank Uganda Limited. So by SME, I want to take it, you mean small and medium enterprises. Small and medium enterprises, right? Yes, please. Fantastic. Thank you, Samson. I, th I think uh, this is the right uh, area. As Post Bank, our mission is to provide affordable and sustainable services that drive economic development and uh, financial inclusion. Uh, to bring it to your point, Post Bank, we have recently partnered with uh, the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises. We have a partnership that uh, we are looking at empowering over 500 SMEs in the whole country. And uh, in this, we are doing training. We are doing training for entrepreneur and uh, value addition skills. We are doing uh, financial literacy. We are also having them ready for investment. We also do training to support them in access to appropriate technology. Then we are also going ahead and uh, we are providing knowledge, especially on product certification, uh, branding, and market linkages. We have gone ahead as uh, Post Bank. We partner AMAP, uh, our mother ministries here, the Minister of Finance. And uh, uh, through our communication, Honorable uh, Aniti, she expressed well as Post Bank, we are getting more financing in terms of uh, capital investment, which we hope uh, is very critical for such investments. On top of that, we also partner with Bank of Uganda in uh, giving out uh, commercial loans, especially in the agricultural sector, which is uh, it's called the Agricultural Credit Facility, which we offer to the communities. And we also partner with the uh, Uganda Development Bank Having that post bank, we are widely distributed across the country with over 50 branches. Where you don't find UDB, you find post bank. I thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I want to take it that when you said where you don't find UDB, you find post bank, you, you meant it as a compliment. Yes, please. Okay, fantastic. Let's hear the gentleman from uh, my former bankers, DFCU. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Simon. Samson. We will uh, go with Samson for now. Samson. Yes. Yes. Uh, my name is Charles Mugume. I'm the branch manager, DFCU Bank Kisoro branch. And uh, as DFCU, we are very uh, excited uh, for this opportunity to see uh, the industrial park coming up. Uh, DFCU Bank has been at the forefront uh, of transforming businesses in Uganda. And uh, this is no exception. And uh, DFCU is ready to you know, partner with all investors, the local investors, the international investors, to make sure that businesses are, are really growing. So, uh, for example, uh, DFC Bank listens to its customers. And uh, actually, I'm uh, a bit touched that you're saying former bankers, but uh, hopefully we can bring you back. But as DFCU, uh, we listen to our customers and for example, we've uh, brought something new for the businesses uh, called the DFCU Sukuma account, which will enable uh, individuals and uh, small medium enterprises to you know, have cheap and flexible accounts to operate. So in terms of financing, DFCU definitely has been you know, financing uh, businesses 
we do agriculture finance, we do asset financing, we do project financing, and uh, with this opportunity coming to Kisoro, we pledge that we will be able to help all the investors come through, do their transactions and do their businesses uh, in a flexible way and in a cheap way. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Samson, you know, uh, in, DF in Kisoro right now, uh, we are the only bank that has, you know, an instant ATM depositing machine. For example, if you come and uh, uh, banks have closed maybe at five or six or seven, you have an opportunity to keep on transacting and deposit your money overnight, instantly. So, as DFC, we are ready and we are ready to support this uh, uh, this project, and we are very excited about it. Okay. Thank you, Samson. Okay. Can I know if you have a very good reason why you wouldn't have a branch in this in this park? and why you didn't mention that you're going to talk to the decision makers in, in that direction? Samson, as we've done uh, all over the country, uh, already in Namave, you know DFC has the presence there. There's no reason why we shouldn't come here. Okay. But still, uh, we've had some in initiatives uh, to do with agency banking. As I speak right now, we have agents in Kisoro, over 15 agents. We have um, our mobile banking platforms, which can... Uh, easily support business, but definitely if the park comes and uh, it starts working here, there's no reason why we shouldn't have uh, some facilities here to help in uh, supporting uh, the businesses around. What you've just said is that it's a good idea, but because of reasons within DFCU, we won't do it. That's what I heard you say. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not really, Samson. Thank you. But definitely, as I've said, we have to make sure that there is presence uh, in the park or near the park to help facilitate uh, the businesses around. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, let's hear from Centenary Bank. Now, Centenary Bank, you have uh, this habit of building things in Kampala where you are competing with nothing. Do you want to build a tower to compete with the mountains here? <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Charles Kavanda. Get, get a little closer to that mic. Just pull it close. Uh, my name is Charles Kavanda, and uh, I represent my managing director, uh, Fabian Kasi. I come from Kampala. I head retail and microfinance. So uh, we are glad to be here, represented at this level. I have uh, my colleague, the branch manager of this branch in Kisoro is here. Even the regional manager for Southwest, uh, Mr. Bambal, is here as well. Uh, so we, we took this very seriously at that level. I actually stayed here overnight for this. It was on the invitation of Honorable Minister, actually, and we were excited about it. First, uh, we have to mention here that we, all of us know the roots of Centenary Bank, but I'm glad to mention it here that it was an initiative of the lay apostolate in 1983, and it has its roots here in Kisoro. Maybe many of you didn't know that. Centenary Bank had its roots here in Chisoro, and in 1985 started operating, having had the initiative in 1983. And uh, the rest is history. All of us know where we are. Central Bank has been growing to the level that right now we have 80 branches all over the country, uh, 300 agents within here. We have six branches within Kisoro, rather Kigezi area. So we are ready to work with you. We have already worked with you to the level that we've given out at the moment, I was turning to around 125 billion um, in agriculture and trade, not counting the rest. And uh, we do believe that this is an, an indication that we are with you, financing agriculture value chains, right from production through to uh, marketing and beyond. And we do believe that this is uh, an area that is uh, ripe for industrialization, so we can also finance, and we financed uh, trade, we finance exporters, we are financing through the leasing and asset financing, uh, uh, machinery, both movable and immovable, that can be placed in our factories or industries, trucks, uh, in terms of leasing and marketing our, and transporting our, our, our products. So as Centenary Bank, we do believe that this is an opportunity that we shall use to also take our people to the level that they really want to be because we've grown with them and I'm glad that this is an opportunity. Agriculture, many people don't go into it, but Central Bank is there 
and it is the one that can take you to where you want to be because it stays with the common man. So that is Centenary Bank for you. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Now, a little while ago, I prayed to God so that the rains will come. Keep us here until we finish. And uh, God answered that prayer. So um, those of you who want to leave, you may. <laughs> So thank you. I want to bring in my last panel, or should I give that responsibility to, to myself, which I have done, but I also want to mention that we have a team from Kasese Tourism Investors Forum, and they are here, there's a big team, uh, where are they? Kasese Tourism, yes. Uh, thank you, thank you very much uh, for being around. So I'd like to speak to, you may take your seats, I'd like to speak to um, investment opportunities in tourism. Minister there wanted to say something. Sorry? Uh, the minister is, is very proactive. <laughs> yes, the, the minister is asking that whereas it is, you, you see when we're talking banks, we are talking interest rates. Now, the minister is asking on behalf of her people that what is so sinful, so sacrilegious, and so difficult to make a certain interest rate for the manufacturers, not of every place, but at least for those of West Nile and Kisoro. Uh, <laughs> Can't you be creative? In terms of uh, interest rates, I would say that in Centenary Bank, I'll talk for Centenary Bank, we have uh, tailored solutions that look at your business, and we wouldn't come here and say, this is the interest rate. We have structured financing that is structured to the level of how you are going to start production, to the level of how you are going to market. And we negotiate, we talk with you, it is structured to your conditions. So we don't have any clear, uh, say like, uh, this is the interest rate for this. Because it may scare you away. We want to be with you, we sit down as partners, and we see the kind of interest rate that will go into the facility that you want, and we come out both as winners. Okay. Both in manufacturing, in tourism. We finance tourism here in terms of hotel accommodation. Many of us are here. We are financing cottage industry. We are financing trucks. We the red. Our prime right now is 18 to 19. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is, uh, the, the payment schedule depends on the, the on the. Uh, profile of your, of your business. Now you it can go even up to 10 years. Now you can yes. tell the minister is in investment, uh, given the sort of questions she's asking. Yes, I know <laughs> I've stayed in your hotel, minister, yeah. in Koboko. Yeah. I know it quite did, well. Did I know the interest you have in that. Did, did you say you stayed in her, hostel, in her hotel or her beautiful hotel? Those two are not the same. Her most beautiful hotel. For now, me to stay in it must have been the best in that uh, area. Given how you dress, I understand, I understand standards mean, mean a bunch to you. So, uh, uh, Matthias, from uh, Postbank, commit your bosses here if you want to keep a job. Thank Centenary you, has spoken, now commit your bosses. Yes. Interest rate. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Minister, thank you for that question. As Postbank, you know we, we are also government, you and we do a lot of uh, partnership with you government You projects. said you know, some don't know. Okay, yeah. Post Bank is a government bank, fully owned by the bank, with the supervision of the Minister of Finance. So Post Bank does a lot of partnership with government, and we have like an agricultural credit facility, where when you're doing production and value addition, the interest rate is at 12%. Okay. And uh, then when you're in uh, agriculture, in grain trade, the interest is at 15%. But also, we have also other bank pro products where we structure your finance according to the need, and uh, the interest range from 18% to 20%. Okay, thank you very much. DFCU, are you in competition? Uh, yes, Samson. Uh, like my colleagues have, have mentioned, DFC is also flexible when it comes to rates. Oh, well, it started to be. It is, and um, we have also been partnering with government. Actually, one thing that has really, uh, you know, I, I feel bad about, I can't say I feel bad, is that this region, most especially like Kisoro,
has not benefited from the SEF uh, product at 12 percent. Where SEF so, is? So you realize there's potential that there's a chance for people here to access financing in case they organize themselves in, you know, uh, circles, all investment clubs, they can easily access cheaper, uh, you know, interest rates. Okay. For example, the ACF right now in Kisoro, they are not really benefiting. And there's opportunity that people can be, uh, the people, the local people around can be mobilized, they form groups, and they'll be able to access some of this cheap financing. Mm. So the interest rates, definitely as a bank, uh, um, according to what you're doing, also DFC is flexible, we can revise the rates down. Murabi mm. Umfa? Diego? Oya? Okay. <laughs> so, um, you may say, gentlemen, I'd like to invite uh, pass, um, someone from Uganda Tourism Board, uh, the Uganda National Bureau of Standards, the Uganda National Road Authority, Uganda National Bureau of Statistics, Uganda Electricity Transmission Company, National Water and Storage Corporation, Uganda Industrial Research Institute, the Revenue Authority, Civil Aviation, um, to take um, seats up here. Uh, so that we conclude our fantastic afternoon. I can tell there's somebody from uh, URA. They're excited to come and do the Zacchaeus bit. <laughs> somebody from URA is already coming in. Oh. They are the most excited, URA. Yes. Houston? Uh huh. URA. I saw Professor Kwesiga around. <laughs> Do we go? Yeah. No, there's a bit of space. You can stay. Yes. If for no other reason, you look very smart seated up there. <laughs> Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited. And we'll also invite somebody from UBC. <laughs> That's from uh, UEGCL. You are the MD? <laughs> I thought you were the MD. I said, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> so the reason we have this panel is to speak about opportunities within the, the tourism sector. There is, it is nonsensical to debate whether Kisoro is ripe for investment in tourism. It, that's a nonsensical debate. It's a given. This, the, the potential of tourism in Kigezi, and specifically in Kisoro, is so ripe a blind man can see it. So we want the persons here, the gentlemen here, and, and the lady, we will begin with you. Um, we'll give you two minutes. Is that enough? More than enough to speak to how we can enhance the tourism sector within this particular region. <laughs> so what do, you want, what do you want to tell us, those of you who give power and are in the business of generating it? Because investors want to hear, is their power generated enough? Because back then they used to talk about load shedding and those things uh, investors fear. So is there power? And will there be power here? Thank you very much. I've been able to generate your power, generate your power as well. Thank you very much, um, Samson. All protocol observed. My name is Pissingavire. 
and I'm very happy to, uh, first of all, um, mention that I'm a child of this land. So I'm very happy to be um, here on this day, and, and, um, which I believe is a really important milestone for this, for this district. Um, I hear um, today I represent Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited. And to um, be precise and uh, spend the two minutes that have been given uh, very carefully, I'll begin by mentioning that um, as a country, we have over 1,400 megawatts uh, of electricity installed on the grid, which is way above the peak demand. And that's to say that the country is not short of, uh, of electricity from a generation perspective. Um, as Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited, we produce over 50% of, uh, of that electricity. And more specifically, in this region, we have a one megawatt um, hydropower station, Maziba, located in Kabale. It's been out of service for a while, but uh, I would like to assure the investors and potential investors that this project is on the radar for UEGCL and rehabilitating it is a, is a priority. We're at the stage where we are mobilizing resources and we believe that it should be able to enhance the reliability and availability of electricity um, as, of course, um, a lifeline uh, and very important input into industrialization. Thank you. Um, you had an opportunity around Isimba. How is the, are you managing that opportunity? I, I don't like to speak negatively. Do you pick what I'm saying? A, a few week, m weeks ago, you had an opportunity around uh, Isimba. Has that opportunity been dealt with? Um, thank you, <laughs> Samson. I would like to assure you that today, all the four units in Isimba are available. Um, and uh, my sister company, our off checker transmission, should be able to affirm that. Okay. Isimba is fully available and the country is not running on a load shedding regime. Okay. Thank you. I, I never talk in terms of challenges. I talk in terms of opportunities. So um, the transmitter, w is there power going to be transmitted here? And is it the right kilowatts um, in terms of uh, getting to the investors who are coming here? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Engineer Daniel Kisra. I work as the acting manager, projects implementation, and uh, I would like to thank the Minister of Finance under the good stewardship of Honorable Anita. Uh, we are your partners. We have worked with her across the country, ensuring that all her promises come to pass. I would like to assure the people of Chigezi that we are going to work closely with the government to ensure that the electricity you need to start and continue and achieve success on this industrial park is achieved. Okay. And, and, and um, how do you feel when you are speaking on a microphone powered by a generator? <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, a generator is uh, also are you saying this is the last time that that is happening? Uh, correct. <laughs> it's a, a form of energy, an alternative form of energy, but the sustainable form is grid electricity. Yes. While I was we moving, are on the generator because you have not yet brought. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, while I was moving, I saw that there's uh, a medium voltage line, just three kilometers nearby. So we shall mobilize it to help to kickstart the construction works as we continue to work to extend the transmission grid. Okay. Yes. And um, what you just said, are we talking weeks, are we talking months, or just before the next election? I know we are going to work with uh, UIA to look at their schedule. At no time should they be ready or in need of the electricity, and they don't have it. Okay, so, so are you saying that it's a bad thing for you to bring the line and it stays here until they start? That, that you don't work that way? No, it's a, a, a proactive move. You can bring the, your line? We are going to start. And put it here? Yes. Then they decide when to use it? Yes. Is yes. that what we agreed? That's what you're going to Those do. Those in favor say? Aye. Eh? <laughs> what? If you're in favor, what, what we agreed say aye. 
<laughs> say, I am committing that the line will come and sit here until UIA starts to use it. Do you uh, agree to that? Yes, I agree. Fantastic. You're a good man. That uh, the people of Chigezi, please be firm. We are going to bring the power here. Okay, fantastic. Give, me, give him a big hand clap. I like brave men. Uh, a question has come here from a concerned citizen saying, why are you not developing a dam in Busanza, in Chisoro, as it was planned? There was a plan. Mm. Yes. Do you have an answer that will keep you on your job? <laughs> uh, thank you for the question. Um, I would like to, first of all, make a mention that uh, the generation sector has been opened up. There is participation from both the public sector and the private sector. UAGCL, where I work, we are a, a public player, and that particular dam that uh, you're questioning, the Nyamabuye Dam, is with a private developer, so, um, yeah. Okay. Um, is it true that yourself and uh, your boss come from here? That's correct. That's correct. That's why you're working on these things fast. Huh? We are serving <laughs> the nation. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I do know that civil aviation is here. And they said, um, one of the gentlemen spoke about the fact that there are at least three or four flights here. And um, there's an interest in having more. Yeah? It's world class, at least in, in terms of where we think. From what you've seen and what you've heard today, what can you tell us about what not has been planning, but is now going to do? Uh, <coughs> thank you very much, uh, Samson. Uh, first of all, um, um, I'm called Samuel Oneha. I'm here representing the Director General of the Uganda Civil Aviation Authority, uh, Mr. Fred Bamwesije, uh, who traveled to Canada for an ICAO meeting. Um, I'm a general manager for regional airports. Mm -hmm. and so the airports we are talking about are under my uh, jurisdiction. Yes. Um, we have had the, uh, the comments from uh, uh, the brothers from this area, the, the, the chairman LC5, the district land board, uh, and others um, about um, the infrastructure. Aksoro um, Airport is one of our key airport that actually is supposed to be upgraded. It is among uh, the airports that the president, His Excellency the President has directed uh, to be upgraded. There are four? Um, there are four. <laughs> I wanted to confirm uh, to uh, the people of Kisoro and the country at large that uh, we are moving uh, uh, closely towards that. Uh, the project is now uh, under feasibility study. Okay. We have packaged this and the Minister of Finance, uh, the Development Committee has already approved and mm -hmm. now we are undertaking the feasibility study for, for financing. But in the interim, uh, we note that uh, the runway now requires resurfacing mm -hmm. uh, for, for those of you who, who used it. Uh, we are working uh, towards that we are actually calling any bids for resurfacing the runway. How much? Um, and uh, like it has already been alluded to, Kisoro is among the busiest uh, airports we have in the country. Uh, actually, it's not number two to uh, Entebbe, but it's number three. Uh, Arua is ahead of it in terms of traffic. Mm -hmm. And. Um, uh, it is one of the airports that has already been clustered among uh, the, uh, the uh, airports within the East African community as those we have uh, branded as airports within the tourism circuit. Mm -hmm. As I speak now, uh, we have an arrangement that tourists from within the partner states within the East African community fly directly to Kisoro. They don't need to go via Entebbe. We only do the clearance. Once they apply for us uh, to come, the airlines that are flying them, we give them the clearance and we coordinate with the immigration as well as URIA to have position their people at the airport 
and clear them. So we handle everything at, uh, at Ixoro. We have been having a number of tourists that fly from uh, Tanzania directly deep into their um, uh, Masai Mara and the Serengeti areas and Arusha. They fly directly uh, to Ixoro. Um, I only wanted to make a few requests uh, that uh, we need to work closely with the district leadership. Who are very here and yes, very eager. Um, to secure the areas around the aerodrome. When you are flying in right now, we have our farmers who have put up uh, forests, trees. Now those trees are now penetrating the transitional surfaces. So when the aircrafts are coming, uh, there is some safety considerations. So we, we need to work to, uh, closely together to ensure that the farmers harvest the trees that are now penetrating the transitional surfaces so that flying in and out of Kisoro is safe. So does that suggest that you will work with the district leaders to show them where that transitional something something is so that trees around there can be harvested? We, we already engaged and we are, we are still working towards that. Okay. And uh, we, we are working so closely well. The second one is as we uh, plan to upgrade the, the airport, we now need uh, uh, a longer runway than it is now. Uh, one of the, uh, the panelists here spoke earlier uh, that they flew to uh, Kasese, I mean in Barara, Nyakusharara, offloaded some people and then flew to, to Kisoro. Uh, it would have been true that uh, there were people who were to be, uh, you know, deplaned from there, but also sometimes it is uh, not so safe to fly into Kisoro on full board. And uh, uh, so because of the, the runway being a little shorter, it is uh, 1.2 kilometers, and we need to have a minimum of 2.3 uh, length so that we can have our bombardiers be able to fly directly into, into Xoro. So you are asking for land? So um, I need to work again with the district. <laughs> what I know about the people here, they pass their things overnight once they know there is a need. So I'm asking the people in the district here, is that such a big problem? Is that such a big problem? If they found 600 and 20 acres overnight. They, you are presenting a problem of three, three kilometers in each sort. I'm behandled, and um, we are glad to be. Is that partners. a problem, sir? You want to come on the mic and speak about that? Come, come, come. We solve problems here. Uh, thank you. The, the dream of having a very active aerodrome or air port for both day and night for local and international uh, flights has been my dream as a district chairperson. And therefore, yeah, therefore, we would like to work in the modalities established by the law to have the extension of the airfield to the maximum. Uh, the challenge we have is that the available land to, for extension is in, on private land. Why this one became so easy is because it was public. But again, government has uh, acquisition law. The way you acquired that land, it was not available as such. Indeed, it was private. So I don't want CAA to have excuses. There are modalities that are available for acquiring land in Uganda from private owners upon uh, uh, compensation or otherwise. But if you want to start the, the, the dialogue, start now, and we are ready to support you. Thank you. Thank you very much. They I think I should they, be winding. They say in Japanese, ciao. <laughs> Thank you very much. We will pick, pick it from there and, and, and try to, uh, to, to, to work closely. In 30 now seconds? Now that... Uh, this development of the the, the, the the Xoro business and industrial park is on. 
that means that our efforts in developing aviation within this region is a now issue. It means that uh, we need to provide this infrastructure for our investors to be able to fly directly into Kisoro without going either through Kigali or Entebbe. And uh, this means that we have to work so closely to have this, uh, this happen as, as quickly uh, as possible. So uh, the message um, I, I am bringing uh, to us here is that we have to closely work together on, on issues of, 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 of control, particularly to, to, to the physical planners, that uh, now we, we apparently we will need a longer runway, and that means that uh, we have to regulate. We have to regulate the type of uh, buildings that comes or are approved around, around the airport. Okay. And I wanted now to request, therefore, that the physical planning department should not approve any building within close proximity to that airport without civil aviation authority sending its... Close proximity, uh, you're talking a radius of how big? Um, a, a, a radius of, of, of about five, five kilometers. Don't approve the until they give you... Yes. yes. So you need to, uh, to get to us those plans and we give a no objection or we tell you to limit the heights okay. of the kind of developments that you need to put Thank you, sir. in place. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, the Uganda Bureau of Statistics is here, and we want to hear some numbers. It is coming to 5 p.m., and Africa, in Africa, without lunch at 5 p.m., numbers can be an issue. So okay. don't send us to sleep, please. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, moderator. I am Steve Nibariahilwa from the Bureau of Statistics. I am representing my executive director, Dr. Mukiza. Uh, Uganda Bureau of Statistics, you know, collects information on different indicators, both social, economic, and whatever. So the information I'm going to share, I'm not going to give numbers. Don't, don't, I have numbers, but because of what I have said, I'm not going to give those numbers. I will just summarize what the numbers mean. The information I'm going to give is very important to the investors who are coming here to know what has been happening to the borders that are within Kegezi sub-region. Uh, what the statistics show that the volume of trade within Kegezi sub-region has been going up over the years from 2017 up to 2020 when there was COVID. But when the economy was reopened, it has gone up again. Now, when we look at the different border posts that we are within Kegezi sub-region, Currently, in 2021, it was Monagana border post, which had the biggest volume of exports that were leaving Uganda going out, which was almost double of what was sent out through the, all the border posts in the Kigeza sub-region. And this was followed by Katuna and the Mirama Hills. Now, the other issue is that Export figures, yes. I can say that overall, in the Kigeza sub-region, we were able to export goods worth 232 million US dollars, and of those goods that we exported through the Kigeza sub-region borders, Bunagana contributed 123 million US dollars. So if we have industries here and what, you know, there is a market for exporting goods through this border more than the other posts as of the year 2021. Now, indeed, the other border posts also are getting exporting goods, but even when you go to imports, it is still Bonagana that it received, much as the imports were very few because we imported goods worth 12.9 million US dollars through the border posts of Kigeza sub-region, and of those, five million US dollars was through Bonagana, whereas another five million was through Katuna Customs. Well, there are several other figures on the different types of commodities that pass through different borders, but I thought because we have little time, I would share 
on the importance of this Bonagana border in as far as this park is concerned, if it is if it is started and then we do a lot of production, really, much as people have been talking about markets, we can do that with concrete evidence, not of just guessing that, you know, we have a market in Congo because we have many other figures in terms of the products that pass here, whether it is iron and steel, whether the major products was, the main one was iron and steel. I think I even saw cereals. I have, I have the summary I have here is for the for those ones, but I have the other summary which I can share with 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 the people. Yeah. Yeah. Even cement is there. Yeah. I have all the commodities that passed through every border post. So you can be approached to provide that information. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Because yeah. I want Honorable Anita to be. I have it even now in the soft, the soft copy. Whoever is, you know, I can share. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my burden is to get the Honorable Anita here by 5 p.m. And I want that to be done. National Water and Sewerage Corporation. Um, I had a rumor that you plan to bring water here in 2029. <laughs> is you. that Thank true? You. No, that isn't true. Thank you, Samson. My name is Peter Ariho, uh, the Area Manager, National Water and Sewerage Corporation, Chisoro. Uh, National Water and Sewerage Corporation is a uh, public utility that is 100% owned by the government of Uganda and is mandated to provide water and sewage services in a commercial and financial viable manner. We are operating now in uh, 262 towns in Uganda and one thing that stands out is that our operations are being directed or guided by a strategic uh, direction, the corporate plan 2021-2024, whose uh, strategic priority area number one is industrialization. It's, it's been set up that way because the plan was set up and well aligned to the NDP3, Vision 2040, the NRM Manifesto, and the uh, performance contract that National Health has with the government of Uganda. And so, with this, we move as fast as we can. And we actually move ahead of time. Samson. So uh, your assumption that uh, we'll have water here in 2029 is, is not right. The, the because as we speak, water is just about 200 meters away from here. Okay. Uh, that's a small line serving the, the, um, the UPDF barracks. But we have a DN100 main that is about two kilometers from this location. We have already implemented a DN150 main up to Bunagana border. So the industrial park here can access water both from this direction that we entered to this place and also the direction at the border. Okay. Now, when you start speaking DN1, DN2, DN5, DN15, my mind is like, Akubuza, <laughs> Akubuza. How, which one of those is for water for industry here and how long would it take to come? Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Pipeline that we have in currently is dedicated for domestic and commercial, commercial and institutional uh, consumption. But we are already uh, implementing an upgrade of our plant. We have a water treatment plant uh, a few kilometers from here, Nkanka, that was uh, commissioned by His Excellency the President of Uganda. And we are already upgrading it. Uh, by end of next month, we shall upgrade it from the current uh, 2.1 million liters per day to 5.1 million liters. Okay. And the storage capacity that we have currently is 260,000 liters at Ruko Hill, mm -hmm. but we anticipate that in the next six months we shall upgrade this to 700,000 liters. Okay. And that is the immediate. But in the in in the in the in the in the short term, we already have plans to extend water to this location. Okay. But with your National Water and Sewerage Corporation, you've spoken about the water side. I didn't hear the other version. Yeah. Or you don't like to talk about that version no. because we are going to eat. <laughs> it's national the more reason for you to talk about Indeed, it. you said it rightly. It's yes. National Water and Sewerage Corporation. Yes. Uh -huh. um, sewer lines? No, we do not have the sewer line here. Mm. Will we have? Will we have? Definitely we shall have. Okay. We shall have in the future. Mm. Okay, fantastic. 
Um, you look very nice when you're on the spot, back on the wall. <laughs> uh, we do have um, uh, two gentlemen enjoying their converse with Chigozi Chisitu, um, who is here to find out from whom he will collect taxes. And then uh, the other gentleman is uh, from uh, the Standards Bureau, and uh, he will be speaking first. So speak to us about standards and how excited you are to make sure that the standards are standards, not Ugandan standards, but world class. And then after that, we'll close with uh, Zakayo. Omuoza. <laughs> yeah, for our international guests, Zakayo Omuoza means Zakias, the tax collector. <laughs> uh, thank you, Simon. Due to public demand, yes. it will be Samson. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Peter Mayanja. I work with the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. I am here uh, to represent uh, my executive director, who is not in the country, but also my council chair, I've seen him around, but uh, when Simon, you invited National Bureau of Standards to come in front, I actually waited for some time because I thought he's around, and I only realized he has also left. So I had to come in. Yes, uh, the Bureau of Standards uh, is in direct uh, partnership with the investors in the country. We have developed uh, both services and product standards that I'm very sure will be required in this industrial park. We have over 1,000 product standards uh, where I believe that uh, any investment that might come up into this park, we should be able to provide uh, as standards to guide them in, in the manufacturing. As the Bureau of Standards, uh, we work directly with the investors, and I want to bring it to the attention that uh, we have a product that uh, a requirement that requires the investors to bring in their machineries into the country and they are exempted from uh, paying what is required by UNBS. There is a fee that is required by UNBS for the investors to pay in order to test for their products before they come into the country. But if you present to the National Bureau of Standards a certificate of investment, we need a certificate that you are partner with the, the Uganda Manufacturers Association, then we give you an exemption to bring into the country your machineries that are intended for production in your industry or in your factory, not for sale. If you are bringing in machinery for sale, that is different. We only exempt machines that are intended for production by the company that has that is fully registered for production that is now uh, on that UEFA. because i want this to be clear is that true if the investor is tom green and the investor is kasumba samson does that work in for both or it is for only tom green and not samson kasumba when you mean investors you mean any kind of investor when you talk about investors it could be you samson for as long as you pro pro you present to us a certificate of investment okay in the country but also we need uh, a certificate that you are a part of the uganda manufacturers association thank you Yes. Um, uh, do, do you want me to give you another 40 seconds? I just want to talk about our presence in the region because yes. this is a new park. I'm happy to inform investors that I intend to set up their businesses here that we have a closer office 
of Uganda National Bureau of Standards in the region. Mm -hmm. We are located in Imbarara. We have a team that is stationed in Imbarara. Mm -hmm. But we also work online. And uh, myself, my responsibility is to work directly with the investors. I receive issues from investors regarding quality of their products or any other services that is related to what we render to investors. Okay. So we are happy, we are on ground, and we shall be waiting to receive you for any issues that regard quality of products. Did, did, did I caught you right when you said you receive issues from investors? True. One of them, them is saying that in Mbarara, thank you so much for being in Mbarara, but you are too far. That's the first issue, so you can receive it. Yes. Uh, How many kilometers uh, is it from Barra here? I think it's a short uh, distance. I agree mm. it could be a little far from here, Yes. but not as comparable to the times we have only been located in Kampala. Okay, so there's so a plan to come We are working here. to getting closer and closer to our clients. Very good man, very Thank good you. man. Finally, but by no means least, uh, Mr. Asadu Chigozi Chisitu, um, you have uh, a minute and 20 seconds. Thank you very much, Samson. We want to hear holidays. What are the tax holidays and those kinds of things? That's the language you want to hear. Mm. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy you are saying that I'm here to, to look out for those to tax. Yes. But I'm happy to say that in this investment forum, just like any other in the country, we are mainly facilitating them to invest. So that the, you tax the, later. The, we tax mm. later. Okay. And I'm happy to tell the investors that uh, Uganda has a tax incentive for all investors, both foreign and local in Uganda, where you are exempted from the different taxes, income tax, VAT, value added tax, stamp, tu stamp duty, excise duty, depending on where your focus is. And this kind of exemption is to both the local and foreign. And it has some few requirements so that you are able to benefit. And uh, the requirements fall within the amount of investments you are making. Because if you are a foreigner and you are bringing in direct investment, you are exempt from income tax if you invest 50 million US dollars and above. And for the uh, local, and here local means East African community. If you are from Sudan, South Sudan, DRC, you are, like, you are treated like a Ugandan. You only need 10 million US dollars investment for you to benefit from the income tax uh, exemption for a period of 10 years when you are investing in Uganda. Secondly, when you are an exporter and you are trying, you have brought in investment to to produce for export, you are also exempt from the taxes, income tax, and for the foreigner, you are at uh, 10 million US dollars, whereas a local is as little as 300,000 US dollars if you are producing for export, and your income for 10 years will not be taxed. But also, we have been talking about to uh, Financing, which is a, a, a challenge for, uh, for manufacturing and processing in agriculture. We have what we call collective investment schemes, where different people come together and they invest. And when these people invest, that money is exempt from income tax indefinitely. Until government comes up otherwise, as for now, as for the current law, if you come together collectively to invest for manufacturing, for this kind of venture why we are here, that money, you, the earnings from that is not taxed, income tax indefinitely. And also we are talking about the airfield transport is being a challenge. If you invest in the, in the aviation industry, all the supplies to that industry in terms of aircrafts, leasing, the technical people who will come and, all, and service these industries, the income from there 
is not taxed. Wanji. Because we want to make transportation transportation cheaper so that our people can be able to invest and get the employment. So the aviation industry is heavily exempt from income tax, VAT, even import taxes, even the spares, everything. So the people in the aviation industry will have no reason why the Chisoro airfield cannot be upgraded to a fully-fledged international airport with that kind of incentive from government. And likewise, this uh, investment cannot go without hospitality. Hospitality industries also have exemptions where the, the VAT is exempt from the people who are registered to develop the hospitality industry that can service the industrial, the industrial park, the business and industrial park. So even in the VAT Act, the exemptions do exist depending on the amounts that you are investing and how, ma how long you intend to be developing. So during the period of developing the industrial park, the machinery, everything you bring in here, we don't tax it VAT. Value, value, addition, value added tax, which is 18%. The stamp duty, you know government has a tax which we call stamp, to du stamp duty, but for industrial zones, free zones, industrial free zones, industrial parks, when you are, the services that are for the development of industrial parks, we don't charge the services stamp duty. So for our investors, URA is a partner to facilitate the import substitution and export promotion. That is a strategy we focus on and we partner with all government agencies to make sure that we provide an environment that can lead to industrialization and then eventually the money will come in. Sometimes when I'm talking with people, I'm, I say that just a person making sure that you have few food on the plate, even if government didn't get money, indirectly government would be feeding that person. Already you are providing a lot to government by employing our people and all these incentives are meant to make sure that uh, you are able to produce and the government gets money. On the side of excise duty, we have excise duty on some of the goods that are produced in the country, but for the goods that are produced in the industrial parks, in the free zones, there is no excise duty on them. So basically, when you are producing for export, there is no tax. So we call upon all our investors to come in and also be able to benefit. On the side, briefly on the international market, given the time I have, there is what we call duty remission. When you are bringing in your goods to manufacture, some of these goods have already attracted tax because you are picking them from the, from the market when they are already taxed. But when you bring them to produce, to develop an industrial park, to, to develop a free zone, and that commodity already had imported duty on it, once we have evidence that you have used it on the industrial park, we give you back the imported duty that was paid earlier. So that is the duty remission that we talk about in international trade. But also, I want to add that broadly, machinery, capital goods that come into an industrial park, or even elsewhere, government has already put an incentive. There is no imported duty on machinery, which means that you can bring in at a, a friendly rate so that you can be able to reduce the cost of doing business. And uh, so I can assure all investors, all Ugandans, that the government is well intentioned on making sure that the import substitution and export promotion through the development of, of new industrial parks and especially processing our raw materials here. Because when you use our raw materials, one of the conditions is that the raw material you use are 70% local. You are employing our people 70%, and not only 70% of our people being employed, but also 70% of the wage bill 
goes to Ugandans. You can have 100 Ugandans, but when a wage bill of 12 of your employees takes 70%. So we, the government has made it sure that we want to focus on creating employment for our people and we all benefit. And uh, I can't uh, say more because all the borders where these goods pass when they come in, the machinery, and going out, URA is facilitating by giving the service which we are mandated to do. Briefly, that's how I can summarize. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Um, URA is uh, very, very proactive for those of you who want to um, invest here. And I think you've done a fantastic job. When you started speaking holidays on machinery, on everything, I saw people nodding, saying, that's our tax body. Uh, so you've done yourself a very good job. I'm seeing figures here. Morris, I, I think, um, any three questions? Um, we want to open the floor to three questions. And, and, um, and I'll be told these are the questions. It, it could go to the banks even? Yeah, so yes. the banks are yeah, still yes. here? Okay. Yes. That one, the question must not feel like a salmon or a salmonette and not have the ability to feel like a salmonette. So right. keep it brief and on to the point. Just before we do the questions, I know I see Honorable Kamara wants to be the first. We had also, and I knew, noticed the space wasn't enough, the electricity, electricity, you know the R's and L's in our place are difficult. Mm -hmm. So the electricity regulatory authority, mm -hmm. there are too many L's and R's in mm -hmm. there. And anyone from Western Uganda will struggle. Yes. Um, Even era. those from the central. Era. Mm -hmm. Is there someone from Era? I just need to make sure. Mm. Engineer, please come uh, uh, closer. I the was hoping are, they wouldn't make an the error. Cameras are here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, error is very smart. They sit mm. on the edge because mm. they are difficult. They are the ones who determine the rate of the power. Mm. Our challenge with that is that how then do we incentivize investment, even in this park, at uh, six six cents uh, per kilowatt? Five? Can we go lower? We are requesting. Is it possible to hit three? What are we doing about that? Commit your bosses. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Samson. The, the aspiration is to go towards uh, five cents. And as a demonstration, there's already two industrial parks that have gone to five cents. And we hope that the opportunities that we're having right now for number one, growing the demand for the electricity will go a long way in reducing the price of electricity across first the manufacturers, who are the drivers of the economy, and then second, uh, all of us who are consuming electricity across the board. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Morris, do you have another question for He's him? He's very smart. He's, He's very, very smart. smart. He answered yeah. all my questions in his reply. People in uh, red are usually smart. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> I will not comment on that. Uh, I, I wanted Export Promotions Board. Uh, Mr. Ketchum is here. Um, and what I, s I shared with you, the numbers, I know I shared with you the products that I exported yes. through Bunagana, mm -hmm. Chanika, Mirama Hills, and Katuna. That, that is the list. Mm -hmm. and, and I noticed iron ore is number one. But the chairman here would say, for example. But, <laughs> uh, yes. but I, I, noticed, I, <laughs> I noticed before you go to that list that our numbers for 2018, uh, which is the peak, was $344 million yes. out of those four borders, export into yes. that, those markets. Yes. And that... Uh, came down to 106 because of COVID in 2020. COVID, yes, yes. And one border that was closed. Mm. I want to go there. Mm. But... W we, we all don't want to go there. We've gone to 232 from the 106. We've gone back to $232 million in 2021. Mm. Now, we've opened that border. Or borders, because remember... I like that you say we, including yourself. Uh, I think I'm speaking for Export Promotions Board. Okay. He needs to speak to or this. Or they have. Yes. <laughs> they have. Yes, All right. they have. Okay. Yes. We'll, uh, Mr. Ketcho, what is the Export Promotions Board doing uh, to, first of all, facilitate the export trade in, in this region? Uh, thank you very much, Boris. Um, and I want to speak through our beloved minister, mm. because he's the mother of this place. Some mothers are mothers, you must uh, be humble, otherwise you don't eat food. Mm. Even if they are old, if you misbehave, they will wait for you at the plate, mm. and they will get you there. Uh, having said that, allow me first of all to thank the organizers of this symposium, and to thank the Kigezi regi region for this very great achievement. And probably if they are not happy, me, I'm extremely happy, I even if there was a drum here, I would have drummed. 
the clerk as well. The, 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 the core activity that His Excellency the President is driving is number one, the issue of employment, number two, the issue of household income improvement and the well-being of our people, and lastly, the aspect of industrial development. Now, all this, including the, the parish development model, is taking us into production, increasing production. Once this establishment kicks off, it straight away it means that the country's production capacity has been increased. Now, as that increases, it means we need the pull through. What is produced here, it, this place is not going to be a, a tourist center where you come and look at what has been produced. What has been what is to be produced here must get out of this place. Now, as Export Promotion Board, what, our, what is our role here? Or what are we going to do for the, 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 the community and the park here? First and foremost, we need to know how ready are the people who are here? How export ready are they? And in doing this, we have if you check on our website, we have an export ready, an, an export ready self checker, where you go there and you tick a few things, then we see how ready you are. Now, from that assessment, we shall see the gaps that you have. Now, once we have seen those gaps, we shall work with the other ministries, departments, and agencies to come and polish you up. Now, once you are polished up, then we know you are ready to go and you can actually export. Now, the essence of that is, as an individual company, what you do as an individual, at that stage when you cross the border, does it, at, at that stage when you cross the border, it, no longer, it is no longer you, the company, it is the country. <coughs> and if you cross the border with the wrong products, they will say Ugandan products are bad. Okay. And that's why we strictly adhere to the aspect of ensuring that we do thorough export readiness assessment and training so that by the time you cross over, people are happy. Because the core thing here is we need you to export on a sustainable basis. Thank you. Secondly, we also create awareness to, to, to draw people. For example, now this uh, facility is going, is, is, has been uh, set up and uh, you are going to be here. We want to motivate people. Why should you come here? What are the opportunities that, what are you, how are you there, how are you going to benefit? How do you position yourself to benefit from this facility? And uh, to do this, we obviously look at the export angle of it, because that's where the extra volume must uh, go. But also what is important for us is to know, once you set up here, what is the capacity you are bringing in here? What of that capacity, what will be utilized, what is being utilized, and what is idle. Now, once we know what is idle, then at that point, that is now when we come in and say, this idle capacity must be used. And to utilize this idle capacity, we take the export angle of it. Okay. A very good example that I need to give here, Honorable Minister. In, in 40 seconds, yes. Through the foreign missions, you know, we, we train also foreign service officers because they are our marketing representatives in the various countries. We did that with the, 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 the foreign service officer. We trained them. And the, the foreign service office in Kenya organized a, a, a trade mission to Kenya. When they took Ugandans to Kenya, they took them to a salt factory, they took them to a food processing factory, they took them to a shoemaking company. And the outcome of that was very interesting. Number one, and uh, I actually one of the things I need, there was a gentleman who talked about the plane and the trucks and the vegetable in the Kigezi region. I need to engage with you. When we were there, the company that we took there actually got business to supply pineapple to the, to the, to the, to the factory, 20 metric tons per week. But as we speak now, it has gone to 50 metric tons per week of pineapples alone. But also there are hotels, three hotels that will be take, that are taking four, four metric tons, that is 12. So the outcome of that is 
62 metric tons of pineapples are getting out of Uganda as a result of that. Now, this region, in terms of the vegetables, fruits and vegetables, that is a very key area that we need to engage on and see how to. Then the other thing was uh, we had a, the, 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 the shoe company, a German company that set up, in, the first set up in, in Africa was in Mombasa, Kuala region. And they have operated for 136 years. So according to their study, they said in Uganda, there's a lot of leather. There is also, we also eat a lot of pigs. And they are interested in the, the skin of the pigs. Mm -hmm. The outcome of that is uh, the fellas came to Uganda. They engaged the, the tanners. And a very good outcome has come up. We took them to Kaumu, Tenere, in Nakasek. And uh, by, I think yesterday, the sample for the leather was taken to Mombasa. And I'm very sure that we are going to strike a very big deal. Okay. Because they're taking the premium leather, which is also quite expensive. Uh, leather tenor in, in ginger has also benefited. They're also taking their sample there. So to sum it up all, we are available. We need to engage both at uh, the industrial park level, but also at uh, the, the farmer level. Okay. And uh, I need uh, the, 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 this gentleman. We need to talk. Thank you very much. Okay. Maurice. That's uh, Mr. Keto. There's a lady there. Yes. I had to look several times to be sure that uh, she's not in any way related to the Prime Minister. She does look like the Prime Minister, the lady and, in, and a green, in, in a green blouse. Oh, yes. uh, she has a question? No, no, no. Oh. I just, just noted. Just to be yeah, sure. the, the, yeah the ch it's not the Prime Minister. The, the, you know, the, the semblance is very strong. You know, mm. in, a in African culture, they yeah. say mm. the only person who knows your father is mm. the mother. Yes. I, so and African I, men do move around I quite a bit. I will not go there. <laughs> 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 Honorable Kamara has the first question. Yeah, Can but there's agree? also a question here. Yes, to, to I'm coming. I'm yeah. coming. Mr. Chigozi. I am definitely coming to, to get your mind. As, as we get. Uh, we'll keep the question short, right? Yeah, Mr. Chigozi, uh, question here. They the URA should make it clear to, to better uh, do um, uh, on issue of taxes on imports of aviation, fire trucks, um, uh, fees lighting schedules, navigation aids. Um, I think this is Rame Lights Control Tower, Spare Parts CTC. Until 1st July 2022, URA was taxing VAT 18% on airport service charges. Is what he is saying for foreign investors or generally for aviation? Right. That well, you will you answer, answer that. You will answer, answer that. Let's pack the questions together. Honorable Kamara has a question. Um, DG, let me know who I can give this question. There was a question online on do I have to go to Kampala to register? And yet you've now set up an investment hub here, an industrial hub. What do I, where do I go to register? Do I really have to go to Kampala? Someone was asking. And so you let me know who will answer that. Honorable Kamara. OK, thank you, my brother. My question, first of all, the first one, is to my sister of generation. Uh, you did not answer my question very well about the Usanza Dam. This is a project that was at its actually a peak. Uh, there is an investor. They came there. Uh, everything was done, and people even were halted to continue using their, their land. What happened? Because we knew by now this electricity would be just in, on, on, on the grid, and this is an electricity near here that could even come here because getting it even from far, you know, trees can fall, what? What happened? Why is it not taking off? Then, to my brother, in 2014, 1314 there, myself happened to go to China. We were mobilizing this money for, uh, uh, for, for Entebbe Airport, and Xoro Airport, Arua, and others. I want to tell you that money, you remember it came some time back, we are losing money as Uganda here in Iksoro. Because first consider the cost of flying from Entebbe up to Iksoro. $450. Now, people just come directly and they fly just to our neighbors here in Rwanda. When they reach there, they are constrained to come here because we are almost selling the same products. What is, I mean, what are you missing? What are you lacking? 
so that as parliament, as the minister is here, so that as government we help you. But this airport must have been done some, I think by 216, 215. Why can't you do it at a very good speed? Because we are losing a lot of money. Many visitors are just being halted behind here. What is missing? Why can't you finish this thing very quick? All right. Uh, I like that you're the one asking the questions because usually we ask the MPs the questions. Um, DG, you let me know, but we had a couple of questions. I, I, I also know there's a question for Naro, but Naro uh, was in the room. I don't know if Naro is still here. Naro, Uganda. Uh, it, it might be related to OWC and, and General might answer, Fonde might answer. Um, I'll come here. Do you want to start before the elders? Oh, oh okay. Okay, thank you, Maurice. Uh, my name is uh, Engineer Andrew Mason Bishagama and uh, Manager National Takawari. Uh, allow me, Minister, to thank the management of National Water for the immense investment, especially in uh, uh, ensuring that uh, industrial parks have sufficient water. Uh, my question is about reliability of power. Uh, power is a very huge factor in the, these industrial parks. And what makes one single factor that makes power reliable is getting the stations. I think for us in Kavali, we depend on the cover on the Mbalala station. Okay? So you find that when you have a fault, someone has to close the entire line. Okay? So I've seen the member of parliament saying, how do I how can we uh, help? So my question is, which stations are we still using as Chisoro and Kavai? Are we still going to use Mbarara? Thank you. All right, thank you very much. I'll come that side. Um, please note, uh, uh, wait, Samson, I have an answer to the lady you are asking. If you can make the, to the podium, I will give you one. Um, so. First of all, the lady you were asking about, who has a good resemblance with the right honorable prime minister. Did you also notice the same? <laughs> Let's not go there. He is the mother of Uganda's finest, professional player for Vipers SC, Mr. Biarohanga Bobosa. See? So you see, we have very powerful people here. I told you, and, and uh, National Sports, uh, Uganda National, National Council of Sports is here. I told him all the athletes those days used to come from here, the long marathon athletes. Yes. I don't know what happened. We will mm. need to develop that. And, and I also show. know o, on good record that good wrestlers internationally have roots here. <laughs> I, I will not go into the question on why you think they come from here. Uh, thank you, Maurice. Protocol preserved, ladies and gentlemen. I am Hashaka Steven, uh, born from Nyarusiza, where we do grow uh, a very, very good Irish potatoes. But the challenges, my question goes to Nalo. Here in Ixoro, we do get uh, the seed that is really rotten, as I can say. When they get at a flowering stage, they get dry. And is it, is it because, because our cultivation or because of the seed? So why can't Nalo uh, you be checking the seed that we are buying with these farmers from the market. Secondly, we don't know the pesticides, how to apply these pesticides when we grow these Irish potatoes. Because there is this color, there is a we grow rapid, there is do what when we don't know you. So how are we you going to help us to get a good harvest so that our our, this thing goes well. I thank you so much. All right. Um, I think the sharpest people are sitting on this side. Samson. Keep it short, eh? just like him. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. I'm going to go to the next one. 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 Thank you. 
ugumbishingani mweza chani chani mwavu za magambo mweza na wa minister mweza hariki bianje ni vita kwa commenting na jangu mweza ichane tuwa rizumi mwufuga industrial park amutushaka industrial park isaguti is it eko tuwa rizumi industrial park eko industrial park one number two haba tulaji watu ya hanga haa bo ichane chumuza wafashi shani chi ichagata haba shora mari bari mwini jisoro haa no kundi kula batari included ya ono body mwini kukua kwa national level kuko tukwe na tukwa prizera hawa fumi na kutu kizera wa MPZ wa shura kutu kwa nakabu watu kwa zekuri hehe kubivu ovo kwa project ya rapu wa jezeri ya batari kakubesha msebe hane mwini yumusi mwini kubesha msebe nene na mwini kila nga wa pijiri wichiri kari ichini imi soru la hanga habi misoru na mwini chende lezo hawa fumi kani ichini ichini shaka kukimfasaizi ama shanya zima kutubesha Tuza ya chinze, virunga daya ya chinze, hapo kwa mashara za garabuzi. Mutu yambi, mutukiri wichirikare, na atu kutura wajayu ganda, kandi tura vote ingaga, kandi tura kutushaki ama jambi. Ichini mchimenye tuwa rezo. Tiki soro is the heart of the Africa. Tiki soro is the mother of Uganda. We need special attention. Mnu kufuga kumirimu, ezo wini baraka kizetinga national law park, mga hinga na mgini, but of the government was at the minimum. UT board tufito wa angai, minister of board tufito wa angai ya tuwa rezo. Hawa fumbira tukubo na wali. Na tuwa rizimu ofisa wa ambiri mwuri Uganda wa ajisoro atambu za givirengi. So, mwifasaizi nge mutu yandi na atuke tukwe kupfiruwa, mutuke kutukoreshi. Kani ni mahari huri yunyuma, ashaka kutujani na nkitaka. Hawa fumbira. Imana yuru kwa andira hari tozahanwe. Mwaku za chaka. I think you see the passion. Yes. Especially when he spoke about the closing of the dairy farm because of electricity. And transmission is here. They should tell us. Because they're saying the dairy closed because the power was low, the voltage was low yes. uh, for production of milk here. And, and it could only, not, be, not that they don't have the power, the power is there, but they don't have the voltage that is able to power the dairy, mm. right? I'm getting that. There where was the where, on where I come from, yes. anything to do with Inga is yes. a big issue. Now you know, yeah, it yeah. touches the heart. <laughs> yes. um, so there was the question on uh, 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 the investment park. Uh, the vice chairman, NRM, is about to ask a question. Mm. There was the question on the investment park, DG. Um, his question, uh, not, not, not the other one, there's another question from him on the investment park where he says, how will the locals in this community benefit from the industrial and business park? That, that was a specific question about the locals in uh, Chibaya and, 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 and Rukundo. There was a question on, um, I'm trying to remember the third question, yes, on the, the, the incentives, I think, no, representation on the tourism because they're saying if Kisoro is the heart of tourism in Uganda where is that representation on the UTB board and, and, and management I think that was the question yes. we don't have UTB unfortunately here mm -hmm. I'm hoping Evelyn can take it to cabinet mm. or if we know anyone close to the appointing authority yeah, Honorable Evelyn Anita you mm. know why I think she's the most close person in this meeting I also agree with you she's the there's closest. no other question on that side I need to close one question there okay I'll come sir yes Thank you, thank you. Amazina ni Ramazani Dikuyeze, Vice Chairperson in Amokisoro District. Industry Park at Rukuyachira, Kani Turayeshimbi. Ariko Industry Park, Ibibirimo, Bifitekwabi Ku TV, Tukejira Nyana Congo na Rwanda. So, Nditu Fite UBC, Nditu Fite NBC, NBC, Ibyo Tuzawa Turukukwara, Ibyo Sibiza Amenye Kanabite, na TV ni muri gisoro kuko tucumuga no mukinyarwanda nako mu gifumbira ngo umukobwa wabuze umuranga yaheze mwanyana ibyo turi gukora bizamenyekana bite ku gaciro k'isi yose kandi tudafite TV muri gisoro ikindi iyi misozi yose y'ukura muri gisoro ifitemo ibyiza ivi ni gisoro dufite arani owa Ariko kubwo kubiteja ku TV bavuga kabare bakavuga rukungiri kandi igisoro ariyo namba wa no kuri RNO So iki giye kumanza niki hagiye kumanza TV nangwa hagiye kumanza industrial park Kashumba Eh ha Kashumba he is asked you the question and that was my question but uh, we will we will answer Morrison that. yes Morrison or Morris which one do you want you know Morrison is here I'm fresh Oh, oh okay That's a cool fresh Do you want to answer my other question so i want let's take this question as the last question samson yes. and we answer and have lunch i'm um, lunch is ready um for for purposes of this meeting we will agree that it will be dinner <laughs> uh, 
Thank you. My name is um, Seth Biargaba, and I'm an investor in tourism with uh, two projects in Buind National Park, Gorilla Crozer Project and Buind Backpackers. I would uh, like to thank the people of USDL. You said your name, your name was? Seth Biargaba. Okay. I'd like the ladies here to know that when we speak of lodges, we are speaking of something very nice. Yeah, because they, they sort of think of lodges very differently. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. This is a tourist facility, <laughs> yes. a tourist lodge that accommodates the tourists. Because you might be seen very negatively. That man runs lodges. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for that clarification. These are the tourist facilities that accommodate our tourists when they are coming to track mountain gorillas. They share the boundary with Bwindi Impenetro Forest National Park, the home to more than a half of world's population of mountain gorillas, which contributes 60% of total GDP of Uganda. And uh, Bwindi itself, yes, you gave us power, but it is not sustainable. 95% I run, and the rest of my colleagues run their lodges on generators. Even in Uganda, it is on record that the most expensive lodges, like crowds, Mountain Gorilla Road, $750 per person, uh, Gorilla Heights, $2,000, they are all struggling because of unsustainable power. We hear in the Kisoro, power never goes off. When it goes off, it also comes back shortly. So we are requesting if there are possibilities that we can be put on that grid. Secondly, if there would be another possibility of back, putting a backup on uh, that power dam we are talking about, because 100% we need power. Clients need internet, they need communication. Everything needs power. So I want you to really help us or tell us whether there is a possibility. Or because again, the other problem we have is uh, using generators, you are destroying environment which environment is giving us uh, a lot of income. So we want you to not only probably look at electricity, but other sustainable power sources, like solar and any other thing that we may propose. Thank you. All right, Samson. Um, so the other question I remembered from him was about the setup of the park. Would it be an echo park? Yes. I, think, uh, I remember that. Very then clearly. there was a question on TV. Do I have time? Uh, allow me get the answers. Monyamere yes. katwanze tuve badu suvize, then numbone badu fitisa ha. Abanu bara shonge. Mumbabari, busatura zafuz. Okay, I spoke some very good French. I hope you noticed something. Yes, I did. Okay, uh, Martin, you take the first answer. Martin had a question on uh, registration. Uh, there was a question on uh, do you need to travel to Kampara to get an investment license or other licenses? And the answer is no, you don't have to. UIA is a one-stop center. It is a home for most of the government institutions which provide services to the investors, such as National Bureau of Standards, which is there, Uganda Revenue Authority. We have commercial banks resident there. We have Free Zone. We have UIA, which provides uh, an investment license. Uh, we have NEMA. All these institutions have online services through our www.ebis, which is our portal. So you can incorporate a company online. You can get an investment license online. You can get a tax identification number online. You can be served by National Bureau of Standard online, so you don't need to travel. But as we establish this, uh, the park here, we shall have even an office here, a one-stop center office. Thank you very much. All right, you have the majority of the questions on, uh, on that side. Before I get, I think, DG to delegate or chair to delegate someone on the Echo Park, whether we'll have, it will have a, a feel, a natural feel about it, um, and not uh, Who'll answer that? affect our climate. Uh, but we will get somebody, don't worry. Let's okay. start with. So let's find out here who has um, URA had, you a are a, had, had some transmission has a question. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, you know the time here is just for highlights. But definitely the organizers and where as we work, uh, we go along, so many sessions will be 
made so that we can make clarity to the detail so that everyone can get the full details. We just spoke on the highlights of the exemptions which are available, but when you go deep and when we have enough time, and when the programs run on air, online, we, get, we give more details and even brokers concerning these incentives are available and we make them available every year. And when you go to the one-stop center, as Martin was talking about, you find these booklets there that give you the incentives, tax exemptions that fall in your area. And uh, on the aviation side, on the aviation side specifically, on income tax, income tax exemption for aircraft operators, that is indefinite. If you are operating an aviation, you are in an aviation, in the aviation industry, income tax is exempt indefinitely. Reason being that running an aircraft is a very expensive venture. So if government went ahead and taxed it, then it, the, the players would not break even, yet government is interested in our people accessing that service. If it was cheaper than it is now, you'd find half of the people here. By now, even if we finish at 8, by 9 p.m. we would be in Kampala. But because of the cost, so government has exempted so that we bring the cost of that service down. On V18 in particular, there is a zero rating of supply of leased aircraft, aircraft engines, spares, spare parts, aircraft maintenance, equipment, and repair services. So you find that all those that I've highlighted are exempt. But briefly allow me in, one, in, in 30 seconds, when the person who talked about the, the power in the lodges where our people go for hospitality and bring in money through the tourism, government is not seated because we know we have alternative sources of power Government has put incentives to encourage alternative sources of power apart from hydro. And they have exempt raw materials and inputs for assembling of transformers that work in the industry, inputs for production of solar panels, so that we make alternative sources of power cheap. Because it, will, it takes time to reach every corner of Uganda with the hydro, which is cheaper, but alternative sources of power have been made, people who access at least don't suffer the burden of taxation. So I, I want people who, are, who don't have power, there are so many things in that sector that government has exempted so that you, make, you can bring them in and make sure that we have this very important resource for us to run the investments we are talking about this evening. Thank you very much, Samson. Uh, thank you. There was... Um, uh Something from, yes, translation. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, relating to the issue of uh, reliability of supply, um, we really appreciate that uh, for Uganda to take off, there is need for sufficient quality and reliable power. Um, we are glad that uh, interventions like this which create a purpose for improving the quality of power supply are coming up. So this industrial park gives us what we call an anchor load, a big consumer who we shall use to bring the transmission line closer and thereafter stabilize power in this region. What is the efforts that are ongoing is to bring the source of supply closer from Umbarara to Kavari. Right now, we have the national grid. Transmission grid is up to Mirama in Intungamo. And right now, there is uh, a project that we have commissioned and is ongoing to extend the transmission grid from Mirama to Kavari. And now, with this new revelation, we are going to start accelerated planning to ensure that we move that grid from Kavari to Chisoro quickly, so that it is in time for the growth of this industrial park. So the reason, the issue of uh, poor quality of supply is caused by, first of all, the, the terrain, the terrain. 
and also the vegetation. Whenever it rains, you find that uh, the, the branches tap onto the, on, onto the distribution grid and it goes off. But now we think that when the transmission line comes, it will be much better. I liked the emphasis raised by the Honorable MP. If we can take up the matter of the local generation plant so that we can have direct supply to this place, then the issue of poor reliability of supply will also be reduced as we wait for the transmission grid to come. So, so it is something we are taking up. You've sent it to the generator. Generator? If um, thank you, colleague from transmission and uh, the colleague from from you from URA for the proposals and the information that you brought to light, especially on the fact that there are incentives um, available to investors, uh, both private and public, in um, boosting generation uh, capacity. Um, and uh, Honorable Kamara, uh, I take note of your question, and I would like to once again uh, make mention that uh, the project that you speak about, project, uh, the Nyamabuye uh, hydropower station, was a project with a private developer and as UEGCL, um, I would say we have very limited um, uh, contribution or um, input into that project. But uh, today I'm very uh, happy to have the regulator available in this room. And I would like to request uh, that uh, he comes and gives more uh, clarification on exactly what happened with that project. OK. Thank you. So it's now with the regulator. I hope he doesn't send it to Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving. It's moving. It's moving. <laughs> no, it is stopping here. Okay. Uh, thank you, Samson. Kill it. Thank you, Samson and members. Uh, the, po the project you mentioned, Nyamabuye Hydro Project, is a seven megahertz project. It was licensed and was ready to take off, but it has had challenges with the uh, mobilization of financing, and because it's a private project. As, as a regulator or as players, we cannot, for example, take it away from the project developer until at such a time when it has demonstrated that it has absolutely failed. So for now, we are still counting on, on the developers themselves. Um, we are supposed to have reported to, to the regulator, I think, before the end of this year on the status of their financial uh, mobilization. And if they fail, it will be uh, probably given to another developer to, to complete it. Okay. Civil okay. um, Aviation? The, the Samson, before Civil Aviation, and I don't know if the, the ERA team or UGCL, which can be homework, the recent launch of the power pump, uh, water pump system by the president at Nkanka, is it Nkaka? Uh -huh. uh, that water has a capacity to generate. I don't know if there's any feasibility studies being done around that on the generation of power from that. Uh, anybody? Okay. So, okay. district, please. Can we write? Yes, it's an opportunity for investment. Yes. So, district, I think it would be nice to have. But, but Morris, let the good gentleman know that, yes, uh, that, that for functions like these, there are many colors of shirts to choose. Huh? Especially, <laughs> no, remember, this is the color. If yes. I checked, this is error. You see, okay. I, I, cannot, yeah. I can't fault the, him. Then, oh. error, then error then needs error to be advised how to choose colors. Rebranding. Yes. I like that. I like it that. It's a <laughs> 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 Civil aviation. Uh, thank you very much, Samson. Um, uh, Honorable Kamala, we, we, we work together uh, on this, uh, and this project and uh, progressed it. It was uh, among uh, those uh, few projects uh, for our regional airports that was captured in the public investment plan. And uh, as you are aware, um, uh, you must we managed to fast track the upgrade and expansion of uh, Entebbe uh, International Airport, which project is uh, still ongoing. And um, of course, as 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 the nature of our planning, this project exited the PIP, 
And as I mentioned earlier, we uh, reinitiated this project again, and uh, we have progressed to the stage of uh, feasibility study. So I hope that uh, this time around we are going to have this uh, project uh, take off. Together with your support in Parliament, uh, when we come around, please support this project uh, so that uh, we can have uh, this uh, sort of upgrade project going on. Right as you've said, the country misses a lot. Uh, if um, we have uh, tourists that have to go through Kigali and uh, they can view what they would view on our side in the other country. So we have to work uh, quickly to, to make sure that uh, the people can fly in directly. Just say a little comment. Uh, when my colleague in the URA was mentioning about, about taxation, and he, he very quickly said that we have no excuse not to do because we have a lot of tax exemptions. Um, but the clarification he offered is actually about aircrafts. For us, we provide the infrastructure from which the aircrafts use. And uh, um, I, I was about to, uh, to go back, uh, uh, when I get back to our headquarters to find out why we pay so huge taxes <laughs> on things like fire trucks, which are actually search and rescue services, on things like uh, spares for the radar, spares for the control tower, and so many others. I think we need to have an engagement on this because um, uh, this, some of these services are actually are public goods and they are supposed to, to help us secure the safety of, first of all, those that are landing within the country, but also those overflying the country. We are under obligation to provide certain services to the global aviation community. But most of these things are, are actually not tax exempt. Uh, when we talk about aviation, an aircraft is just a part of it. It is quite wide. So we need, I think, uh, to be helped by Parliament to have some of these things reviewed. Okay. Because when you tax issues like search and rescue services, really, <laughs> other countries don't do that. So we, right. well, I think we need to, to do something about that. Thank right. you. Samson, the question on the locals. What is the park going to benefit the locals of Rukundo and uh, Chibaya in particular? Why uh, should they embrace it? Martin, the man of the tie. That's as much as I would say. Uh, thank you very much, yeah. Master. <laughs> Ceremonies. Uh, how will the locals benefit? Job creation. And I think for the last two weeks we've been working with the locals, roads, mm -hmm. food supply. That is already a benefit. But from inception at the construction level to the operational level, this park is going to employ the locals. So that's the first benefit. Second benefit will be from the manufacturing entities. We had the opportunities, agriculture and agro value addition. Most of the value addition uh, products will come from the raw materials supplied by the locals. Uh, infrastructure facilities. We talked about the roads, we talked about the power substation, we talked about the water. All these facilities will also be accessed by the locals. Joint venture partnerships. Foreigners, investors will also come, we shall attract them here, to work and pattern with the locals. Those are key benefits. Tax incentives will be accessed. There are tax incentives for locals, there are tax incentives for foreigners. Financing solutions. All the financing institutions have been here providing financial solutions. The locals will be able to access those financing solutions and packages. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. Um, there was a question on television. Yes. My, my uh, answer is, whereas I look like the owner of NBS, <laughs> I'm no, just, I'm, I'm I just actually an have an answer for both because, <laughs> okay. you, as you're aware, UBC, <laughs> uh, as you're aware, UBC is the vehicle for the free-to-air channels, yes. which NBS is a the mark. national broadcast. Yes. So, Mutware, uh, I want to promise, and I know it's been di discussed at cabinet level, uh, the signal, TV signal, 
for especially the, the free-to-air channels like NBS and UBC and, and others, will come to Chisoro after we have launched the narrow question. Yes. Will come to, to um, Chisoro after government has launched what they are calling direct to home. There's, we're going to launch direct to home uh, platform where all you will need, just as you have seen others who have these dishes for uh, uh, the other products, all you need is you buy a dish and you have free TV for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. That is coming. Yes. I think the turnaround time is about 12 months. So next year when I come for Christmas, we will have TV. So you will have TV in Kisoro and you will watch all the Ugandan channels for free. All okay. you do is you buy the dish, a one-off, and a, and a free-to-air decoder. Yes. And I, anywhere, you will be able to watch TV. Additional question he had in mind is having a TV station. But I believe that TV station is a private investment. So to me, it's like saying let an investor mm -hmm. to ha have a TV station in Kisoro where people from Kisoro can easily step in mm -hmm. cheaply without first going to NBS Kampala. Mm -hmm. And uh, that investment can def definitely not be made by, by government. So he is proposing that we get investors who can make uh, TV stations stationed or situated in Kisoro where marketing will be direct, where my chairman will come from home, go in the station, and go back home on foot. That's I an easy one to solve. I yes. will speak to the NRM party. Yes. They had an interest the in a TV because station. Because we already have DRC and... Uh, yeah. and, uh, and the NRM uh, party ca uh, can actually put a TV here. Yes. I'll speak it's to It's an them. opportunity. I, I, I will actually speak pick them. it as an investment opportunity. Yes. I'm very happy about it. Over to you, Mr. Kasumba. Wait. There was a question from Naro. And unfortunately, the Naro gentleman left. I don't know if Afande want, did you had the question. Do you want to speak to it? Afande is on the, OWC. On the implements, the, the seed they are getting. Yes. You want to say something? The implement, for this, uh, the, the, this Nyaru Caesar team is, yes. Uh, Honorary Minister, there was a question from Nyaru, from Nyaru Caesar about uh, Irish, particularly certain breed, which is Chiniji. The most wanted. I'm the order we see coordinator for this uh, district and the exam commander for the sub region. The, the Kiniji uh, seed has been a very big problem because uh, Naro has been trying to have a trial seed. Honorary Minister Sal talked about it. It is a very big demand, and I think uh, Naro has to work around the clock to make sure that that seed is produced to enable the farmers uh, access the seed. Thank you. All right. Uh, Maurice? Before, Samson, I know you're hand, I'm handing over to you. Yes. Uh, I know you recognize the Kasese tourism team. Yes. They are here. They're well represented. Uh, clearly, they, they understand the business of tourism in the market, as the Kisoro tourism team is also well represented here. And I thought I needed to recognize the Kasese tourism uh, investor forum. Okay. Yes. All right. Mr. Rao, um, uh, y you want to say something, my friend? Yeah. My name is Mohan Rao. My name is Mohan Rao. I'm the chairman of Indian Association. I've seen this uh, wonderful program. I thought I'm in a Munyono. <laughs> I never thought I'm in a Kishoro. <laughs> Thank you for UAA for these arrangements. I visited for this reason three times to Kishoro from Kampala. People are thinking about power. You have a very good waterfall, which is from here 30, 35 kilometers, where you can generate enough hydropower, which I visited. Then we can even construct solar here. People are ready to come and invest from our country. Thank you. We are very proud to be of this summit, we are supporting the aim of promoting investment in Kikyozi region for the domestic investors. I understand Kisoro is a gateway of Congo and Rwanda. Hence, I'm sure we establish ourselves more in Kikyozi, will be very good investing region as Congo has also a lot of investors and I believe Kikyozi has a lot of potential. 
Uganda Investment Authority has been a very good supportive to all investors. We are proud to be of your hospitality and Indian community and Indian business forums are contributing 65% economy in the country. We are also almost planning similar event in Munyono, 17th and 18th of November 2022. This summit is showcasing Uganda investment opportunities, celebrates 100 years of Indian Association, Uganda, and building business network linkages. The investment summit is positioned to attract existing investors in the country as well as top 10 business people from 54 African countries. I had uh, in this meet, in this summit, Uganda Investment Authority Director or Chairman Morrison referring as a three P's. But my three P's are different. Peaceful, pleasant and profitable. We have very good security in this country. We never felt bad. All foreign investors enjoying peaceful in this country. And pleasant. No other country doesn't have a two harvest seasons in the country without irrigation. And yet, we, as Uganda, we enjoy two crops in this country. Like neighbor country, if you take it, Kenya, you will have only one crop. Then, profitable. As my colleague has said already, Investment, whatever you make investment, when you earn profit, pay taxes and take to your country. There is no objection in this country. This is why I always say as a country as a three piece. Lastly, but not least, I would like to thank everyone to grace this event, to take their time for this with us in today. For God and my country. Thank you. I'd like to thank Lagan Management for being with us all this time and met some good friends here uh, from today going forward. But also